Since I was born, but now I am getting you. I'm gonna go down, I'm gonna go down. And there it is right there. Uh, good to see you again. Uh, good to have you around. And how are you? <clears throat> how are you? Uh, how has your day been? What have you been up to? Uh, bring me up to speed uh, with what you have been doing uh, between the last time I saw you and this time now. Uh, so what have you been up to? What have you been up to? Uh, catch me up on the gist and all that. Uh, so good to see you. Uh, good to have you around. And how are you? So how are you? Um, Another day, another round of uh, going on within the Nigerian space uh, is, is a gift that just keeps on giving, isn't it? It's an endless churning of uh, 
uh, just dynamic news. I think that's probably the most uh, polite way to put it. It's an endless churning of just dynamic news. So the dynamism again, uh, it continues today. Uh, but before we get to the dynamism of the news of the day, uh, click on the like button just as soon as you're coming in. Subscribe if you haven't done that already. If you want to come and join us on the screen, that hyperlink that says StreamYard, that's your open invitation. And you know we are canvassing for new voices. So you'll be that new voice of the day. You'll be the Valentine of the platform for the day. So be the Valentine of the uh, platform for the day. Be the debutant. So if you've not been on before, we are especially looking to hear from you. So uh, summon up the courage and, and come join us. So, so do that. Um, so click on like, click on subscribe, click on the hyperlink that says StreamYard. And I, I'm not even going to mention the coffee anymore because nobody really bothers with that. But I do those three, the like compulsory, the subscribe, you must have done that already. And if you haven't done it, correct it. And then the uh, hyperlink that says StreamYard is highly recommended just so that you can add your voice to the conversations that goes on here. Uh, so what conversation will be going on here is the question. Uh, this uh, first headline, I, do, I didn't even know what to make of it, uh, but uh, there it is. Uh, Fashola reacts to allegations of writing presidential election tribunal judgment. So there it is, you couldn't make it up. Uh, you could not make it up, but there it is nevertheless. That is what we're having to contend the uh, contend rather with within the Nigerian space. Fashola reacts to allegations of writing presidential election tribunal judgment. So uh, quite who is alleging what uh, to the point that Fashola feels the need to. Uh, actually, let's just take this immediately. Uh, Nigeria's former minister of works and housing, Babatunde Raje Fashola, has denied writing the judgment for the ongoing presidential election petition tribunal. A Twitter user, Jackson Ude, so that already tells you. So I'm not going to say anything, but I'll just highlight the name. So, so you already then know the rest of what is to come. Jackson Ude. A Twitter user, uh, Jackson Ude, had called out the former Lagos State Governor and some lawyers working for the All Progressive Congress APC for allegedly drafting a judgment for the tribunal judges. Former Lagos State Governor and former Minister for Works, Baba Tunde Fashola, and some APC lawyers are allegedly writing the judgment Bola Tinubu and APC intend to hand over to the Presidential Election Tribunal, who they said in a recent tweet. However, in a statement on Sunday, August the 6th, Fashola's special advisor on media, Hakim Bello, insisted that the allegation is baseless and defamatory. So quite why Fashola even, uh, 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 quite why Fashola, because Fashola responding to this, of course, gives it the oxygen that it necessarily does not deserve. Bello further called on security agencies to take action against those spreading fake, uh, such fake news whilst also claiming it was part of a plot to undermine the judiciary. I'm not sure that the judi judiciary space in Nigeria has ever been under this level of pressure. So um, I, I wonder how independent that judgment actually will be, uh, because it will have to take some superhuman strength for them not to be influenced by, by just the waging and gnashing that is coming their way. Bello further called on security agencies to take action against those spreading such fake news, whilst also claiming it, it was part of a plot to undermine the judiciary. In response to the allegation, Fashola clarified that he has been away from Abuja for an extended period of time, rendering the claims uh, entirely unfounded. The statement reads, the former minister believes that these allegations may be part of a wider campaign to undermine the judiciary by those who seek to manipulate the institution for their own gain. So Fashola, uh, uh, um, I, I'm not sure that Fashola should have dignified uh, this with a response. In fact, I'm pretty certain that he should not have. So but by him dignifying it with a response, of course, it gives it oxygen and very quickly picked up. It's hard to believe she Usani reacts to report of Fashola writing judgment for a presidential tribunal. This is, uh, this, this is false on so many levels because, of course, 
a functionary is a lawyer, not a judge. Also, does he even have the language to write a judgment? That is the wider question. A former Cardinal Central lawmaker, Ashe Usani, has reacted to the report of former Minister for Works and Housing, Babatunde Fashola, writing the judgment for the Presidential Election Petition Tribunal. The tribunal is handling the petitions of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, and Labour Party, LP, presidential candidates, Atiku Abubakar and Peter B. I wonder if those are the only two uh, petitions ongoing. Uh, because I'm pretty sure there are more petitions than that. The tribunal is handling the petitions of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, and Labour Party, LP, presidential candidates, Atiku Abubakar and Peter B challenging the victory of President Bola Ahmed Tinobu at the 25th of February uh, election. Uh, it, uh, Sani said it is hard to believe that the justices of the Presidential Election Petition Tribunal will sacrifice their honor for someone to write the tribunal judgment for them. Uh, so, uh, I mean, uh, uh, anyway. He stated this in a post shared on his verified uh, 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 Twitter handle. So they are now wanting us to call Twitter X now. That would take some getting used to. Uh, he posted that on his uh, verified uh, Twitter handle, at Ashe Usani. Though we live in a country of mysteries, magic and magic miracles and myths, it is hard to believe that the respective justices of the presidential election tribunal will stoop to sacrifice their honor for someone to write the tribunal judgment for them to read like newscasters. The story is either speculative or preemptive uh, fiction. So preemptive fiction, I, I mean, it, it goes beyond the grain, doesn't it? It, it goes actually beyond the grain. Uh, it, it goes beyond the realms of acceptability. Uh, it does go beyond the realms of acceptability. Because often instances we laugh off all of the uh, antics of those people in those spaces, but sometimes lines are being crossed. O okay, if the judges are going to give a fake judgment, who is best capacitated to write that judgment? Experienced justices of the bar, and, 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 and by the way, the justices sitting at the uh, presidential petition tribunal, they are appellate level justices. So the hierarchy of justices, you have the magistrate court, then you have the high court, then you have the appeal court, then you have the Supreme Court. So these are people that are steeped and satiated in, in judicial matters, especially administering justices at a judgment level. So why would they then need a lawyer to write them a judgment? Even if they are going to give a fake uh, result, why would they? It, it doesn't cohere with anything that has brain function, does it? But then often instances, what you hear in some of these narratives ne never coheres with anything that has a brain function. So it doesn't cohere with anything that has brain function, but this should mystify you as well. Breaking, El Rufai Danladi missing as Senate confirms 45 nominees. So a lot of hijinks at the, yes, I can bring you this one as well. A lot of hijinks at the Red Chambers are, the name of the immediate past governor of Kaduna State, Nasser Erufai, was on Monday missing from the list of ministerial nominees confirmed by the Senate. Also missing on the list was the name of Senator Abubakar Danladi from Taraba State and former Nexin Bank MD, Stella Okotete from Delta State. The Senate, after screen, uh, the Senate, after the screening exercise, which took place at uh, uh, the this, this Senate after the screening exercise, which took place about, uh, uh, which took, uh, uh, let me take that entirely all over again. The immediate, uh, the name of the immediate past governor of Kaduna State, Nasser Arufai, uh, was on Monday missing from the list of ministerial nominees confirmed by the Senate. Also missing on the list was the name of Senator Abubakar Danladi from Taraba State, and former Nexim Bank MD, Stella Okotete from Delta State. The Senate, after the screening exercise, which took place about, uh, uh, which took, 
them about a week to approve and confirm a total of 45 names out of 48 sent by President Bola Tenobo. Sorry, but that's how it's been written. Uh, correspondents report that a couple of petitions, including those sent by Senator Sunday Karimi, APC Kogi West, was presented against the former governor during the screening. So if we just pause there for a moment, um, there, there is all, all, the, all of the possibility that uh, El Rufai will scale through. Uh, but uh, for them to, to drag his foot through the fire somewhat is something that we necessarily need. So it, for them to embarrass him somewhat is something that we necessarily need. Because elements like El Rufai, they straddle that Nigerian uh, stratosphere as though they, they, they were above and over everything. So if the law can bring him to account, necessarily uh, something that we need. Um, the Senate, after the screening exercise, which took place about, uh, which took them about a week, uh, approved and confirmed a total of 45 out of 48 nominees sent by President Bola Tinobu. Correspondents report that a couple of petitions, including those sent by Senator Sunday Karimi, uh, APC Kogi West, were presented against the former governor during the screening. The lawmaker representing Kogi West during the ministerial screening moved against the former governor of uh, Kaduna State, Karimi. After, Kadu uh, after El Rufai's presentation, stood up and told the chambers that he had a petition written against the former governor over the issue of insecurity in Southern Kaduna. He said, your performance in office, uh, uh, your performance in any, in any office you find yourself in the country has been outstanding. In the Bureau of Public Enterprises, your record is there. In FCT, as a minister, your record is there. And as two-time uh, governor, so that should be two term. So as, as a two term governor of Kaduna State, you did well. Raising a brown envelope, Karimi further stated, but I have a very strong petition against you that borders on security unity and cohesiveness uh, uh, of the Nigerian state. And I think that the petition has to be considered in this screening exercise. Kirimi then proceeded to lay the petition before Jibrin Barao, the Deputy Senate President, who was presiding over the screening exercise at the time. Barao, in response, said, I don't know if you followed the normal process, but this is the opportunity for nominees to explain and showcase themselves. Later, we will come to confirmation and approval. Other senators commended their Rufai, noting that the former governor, is, a, is competent enough to be a minister. Also, the lawmaker representing Kaduna North, uh, Ibrahim Khalib, said he and, and his two colleagues from the state, as well as all the residents, are in support of El, El Rufai's nomination as minister. Meanwhile, after making his presentation, the Senate president at the plenary refused to take the position, leveled against the former governor, and said a number of petitions were submitted against a number of ministerial nominees. Apabio said, this is not the place to consider petitions. We will sit with the petitions later and refer them to the relevant authorities. Please take a bow, my brother. Also, correspondents reported that there was a petition against Dan Ladi about a court judgment restricting him from holding public office uh, for 10 years. So, so um, of all of the petitions, that probably is the most damning. So if there has, if there has not been a, a, a judgment that sets this aside, then I want to see then how the parliament sets it aside. If there is a judgment, a court judgment, restricting Dan Ladi, whoever he is, from holding public, public office for 10 years, I want to see then how that is set aside. Copies of some petitions against Oketete in the public space also confirmed that there were a number of petitions against the former Nexim Bank uh, uh, MD. Okay, Tete, including uh, 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 MD okay, Tete, including non-disclosure of assets to the uh, Code of Conduct Bureau. So, so there it is, high jinx in the parliament, high jinx in, this, in the parliament. 
Our Senate fails to confirm El Rufai Abubakar Danladi, Senator Oketete, waiting security reports. So, so, so that's that headline in a different guise. So now we're back to the going on in the Jay Republic again and how uh, our seniors were embarrassed by this uh, rascally Tarex. Uh, ECOWAS delegation, how Abdul Salami Sultan were humiliated by Niger Junta. Okay, it, it, this is not a long and winding read, so, le so let me bring it to you. The ECOWAS delegation to Niger, uh, the, uh, uh, sip of water first. The ECOWAS delegation to Niger, led by former Nigerian military leader Abdul Salami Abubakar, was humiliated Thursday by the Nigerian junta as the members were prevented from leaving the airport, correspondents report. A Nigerian government source briefed about the visit, told correspondents that the three man team sent to negotiate with the junta leaders was not allowed into the country. Before departing Abuja, the delegation had informed Naemi of its mission, and the latter showed readiness to receive them, the source said. However, this turned out to be a plot to humiliate the sub-regional bloc. ECOWA on Wednesday named Abubakar, Eko, uh, ECOWAS Commission President Omar Toure, and the Sultan of uh, Sokoto, Muhammad Abubakar III, as envoys to Niger. They were expected to engage all stakeholders robustly with a view to doing whatever it takes to ensure a conclusive and amicable resolution to the situation in Niger for the purposes of African peace and development. According to the source, the delegation was received from the airport at 6 p.m. Thursday. When they arrived at Naeme Airport, a five-man team led by General Musa Bamao, head of general staff, the, gen uh, uh, the general, however, told them that they could not be allowed into the city, citing security reasons. The delegation was taken to a room in the airport. Uh, pictures of the delegation and Niger soldiers sitting at a table emerged online last Thursday, with many thinking it was part of the official meeting the ECOWAS delegation uh, was sent to hold. Uh, however, contrary to public perception, the, uh, so that's the picture in question there. Uh, so, um, however, contrary to public perception, the picture was that of the ECOWAS leaders being kept in a room at the airport by soldiers who had received them. As after about five hours of pleading to be allowed into the city, to see the leader of the junta, General Abdul Ramin at uh, uh, China, the team left Niger without uh, any headway. The ECOWAS delegation was told to return to Nigeria whilst the junta reviews their request and revert. They arrived Nigeria at 1 a.m. Uh, on Friday. The, uh, the, uh, the Abdul Salami led delegation is, however, not the first delegation to be sent to the J by ECOWAS. It is, in fact, the third. In the early hours of Wednesday, uh, 26th of July, when President Mohamed Bazoum was still detained and the coup had not been officially announced, a three member team led by Director General of Nigeria's National Intelligence Agency, Ahmed Abubakar was sent to negotiate with the coup plotters. Former governor of Katsina State, Amino Masa Masari, and chief of air staff, Hassan Abubakar, were part of the team. They were quickly dispatched to Niger when the news of President Buzum's det detention came in. However, as soon as the delegation left Naomi, the coup was declared, a clear indication that the mission had failed. Another delegation was sent after the coup was officially announced. The delegation was sent on the day ECOWAS heads of state met in Abuja in an emergency meeting convened by the chair, uh, Bola Tinobu, uh, the, Nigerian, uh, uh, the Nigerian president. The president of Chad, Mahamat Derby, was sent to Niger where he met with the junta leader, Mr. Bazom, and former president, 
Mahamadu is a four. Uh, he offered the junta a soft landing, which was also rejected. The child leader shared picture he took with Bazoom and the co plotters on social networking platform, uh, formerly known as Twitter. So on and on it goes. Okay, let me just give you the last uh, couple of paragraphs. Uh, but the president, Patrice Talon, was also sent to Niger. However, it remains unclear if he made the trip. When asked about the outcome of the visit of the Abdul Salami led delegation, the permanent secretary of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Adamu Lamuwa, last Friday, said negotiations are ongoing. It is too early to preempt the outcome. Uh, of the discussion, so there it is. Uh, so, so, so they just embarrassed, really. Uh, yes, uh, correspondents also reached out to Tinubu spokesman Aduri Ingalade for comments. In response, he shared a post he shared on X, which read, "He president at official ABAT on Sunday evening met with governors." Uh, so, 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 no joy there, really. Is the essence of that. And they they detained. Uh, you, so this image that you are seeing now, this is at the airport. They detained the Sultan of Sokoto at the airport in Miami. This is what we are having to contend with. So that's the latest development in that space. So this one, I'm looking really keenly to see if anybody wants to have a conversation around this. Tinubu versus Buari war started earlier than expected. So uh, yes, I uh, will get into this in the latter half uh, uh, of the session. So we get into that in, in the latter half of the session. Uh, and, and then uh, we'll probably get to this in the latter half of the session as well. See port new cities to emerge in the Southeast soon. So this is Umaya will come off a meeting, uh, I think, with uh, the Senate. Let's just uh, take this out of the way. Um, President General of Ohanese in Digo Worldwide, Chief Emmanuel Nwayawu, has disclosed that efforts were on by the Apex Igbo Social Cultural Organization and the necessary stakeholders to build seaport in the Southeast. Chief Nwayawu, who made the disclosure in a chat with correspondents on Monday evening, said that Southeast deserves to have a functional seaport considering the heavy investment and engagement of the people in trade and commerce. He expressed optimism that efforts to engage the necessary stakeholders concerning the proposal will be successful. Very soon, we will see new cities in Igbo land. We also expect a seaport. We want Igbo land to be attractive and our children to be proud of Igbo land before I die. Chief Umayamu, who expressed concerns over the frustration amongst Igbo youths, said Ohanese was committed to providing the needed environment to rekindle their hope. So I, I, I'm wondering what's next to all this. I, I, I thought I saw him in a meeting with uh, Goswila Pabio. Uh, he strongly appeals to Igbo youths to remain peaceful and sustain their enterprising spirit and ingenuity, which had made them survive over the years, even under harsh conditions. We want to give hope and future to our youths so that even after our death, they'll be proud of us and Igbo land. Time has come for us to change the narrative and leave an enduring legacy for the youths. We want to industrialize our land and stop waiting for anybody. Now is the time, Umayaun said. Chief Umayaun further hinted that the moribund uh, Nkalagu cement industry might be coming back on stream before the end of the year. So uh, I, I'm not sure, uh, 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 it, that sounds more like a wish list than anything else. So that sounds more like a wish list than anything else. Uh, uh, plenty of uh, space uh, uh, in the studio, by the way. So anybody that wants to hop on, uh, please do. Uh, so lean back, kick back, uh, take it easy, relax into it. The usual pro protocol, click on like, click on subscribe, click on that hyperlink that says StreamYard. Let's take a micro break uh, with the care guides and then we come straight into the throes of it. Oh, 
And there it is right there. Ikuko Niru Agweche may death have nothing to do with us. So I've got a Darati and um and uh Solomon with me. So we we'll see how that goes. Uh let, let me let me play you a couple of clips, gentlemen, and then invite your, your commentaries uh, on it. So this was Festus Giamo at Plenary. Thank you, Mr. President. Arise to second the motion. Very ably moved by Senator Darlington Wokocha that in view of Section 88 B of the one uh, B of the Constitution, which mandates the National Assembly to go ahead and look into the conduct of affairs of any person, authority, or ministry. And where such a person refuses and deliberately stays away from letting the National Assembly do its work. And in view of the fact that this nominee rejected the summons of both the House of Representatives and the Senate, that I do support that this nominee should be stepped down pending when he decides that the National Assembly has that right to inquire into the workings of a minister and his ministry. I so second. Uh, distinguished colleagues, the the motion has been moved and seconded. Those who are in support of the motion that the screening of the nominee be stepped down until further inquiries, say aye. aye. Those who are against, say nay. Yeah.
Uh, des image colleagues. Distinguished colleagues, distinguished colleagues, distinguished colleagues, uh, speak from there, please. Distinguished colleagues, I will put the question again. The uh, distinguished colleagues, the distinguished colleagues, point of order. Mr. President, point to order. Mr. President, point to order. Uh, uh, so who's that? M m mute yourself, Moses. Um, uh, so so that was um that was um uh, Festus Kiamo being embarrassed uh, at the at the at the at the parliament. I think he was made to apologize. Uh, uh, Solomon will tell us in a moment if he was approved or not. Uh, but now the goings on in the J Republic has suddenly taken a different coloration. Uh, watch this. Good morning, fellow Biafrans. Good morning, Africa. Good morning, West Africa. This is the seventh day of August 2023, and I have come this morning on the request of the Biafra people. I want to start by encouraging the new Mali president, Colonel Asemini Goita. I want to also encourage the new Burkina Faso president, Ibrahim Traore. And finally, I want to encourage the new Niger Republic President, General Omar Chiani. I want them to understand that the wave of freedom that is now in Africa, especially in West Africa, must continue. We want to let them know this morning that their friends are standing very strong behind them. We are fighting the same freedom, both economic freedom and the complete freedom of our people. And I want you to understand, should in case Nigeria lead a military invasion of Nigeria Republic, they should understand that they have brothers and sisters and alliance in Biafra land. I want you to understand that we are going to stand shoulder to shoulder to fight against Nigeria for our own freedom. So if they are worrying about Nigeria invading and attacking Nigeria Republic, and how they are going to do it, engage them from the north. It is going to be more easier. Why they engage Nigeria in the north, we the Biafra people are going to engage Nigeria from the eastern region. I just want this particular message to get to this powerful and the very rugged revolutionary readers of the Pan-Africa present day. I want them to understand that Biafra people, over 70 million Biafrans, are standing shoulder to shoulder to any nation, to any ethnic group, to any ethnic nationality within Africa who want to free themselves from oppression and modern slavery. The new colonialism that we are fighting today must end. So I want them to understand 
that we are standing very strongly behind them. Countries like Finland have not colonized anybody. They are doing quite fine. We have seen many, many atrocities being committed in our land. In Biafra land, for example, where the Nigeria oil is being exploited from. People die every day. They don't care about us. It is time we put it to an end. And that's what Biafra is fighting for. So, my fellow brothers and sisters from the other part of the West Africa who have risen up to fight for their own freedom and to liberate themselves from these demonic sucking and blood sucking demons. I want you to understand that Biafra, for the Biafra's sake, for the freedom of Biafra's sake, we will stand shoulder to shoulder with you if Nigeria attack your nation. Nigeria Republic, if Nigeria attack you, Biafra people will stand shoulder to shoulder with you to fight against Nigeria. That declaration is being made as demanded by the Biafra people today. Thank you. May God bless you. Oh, 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 all right. So, so that's ever the meathead uh, uh, known as uh, Simon Ipa, uh, who is now aligning himself with the Biafran uh, movement, uh, not with the Biafra movement, though, he's already slipped in that. So he's now making the promise to the coup plotters that he's going to flank off the Nigeria, Nigeria from the east. So he's promising a pincer movement in that ridiculous toy soldier outfit that he's wearing. So let's still stay within our goings on in the J. And let's take now this more darker, more foreboding commentary. So we take this commentary and then we go to our panelists. So he's, he's sounding like he's answerable more to ECOWAS than to the Nigerians. We in Nigeria, 78% of the landmass of Nigeria, seven states and 19 states in this country are saying no to an unprovoked war with Niger. It's not ECOWAS. His primary responsibility is to Nigerians, not to ECOWAS. He's not convinced us why he should send boots to the ground in, 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 in Niger Republic. And for goodness sake, where are you going to get the troops from? The Nigerian military is stretched all across, deployed all across the 36 states of this country. Where is he going to get the troops from? Is he going to pull troops from the northwest or the northeast or the southeast? The only place there is some leeway is the southwest. And that will be a small number of troops. And he should be very, very careful. That is what I wrote there. He is going to do the bidding of the Western world. The fight in Niger is not our fight. It is going to be a proxy war between Russia and NATO. And this is what concerns me the most. We are being surrounded by countries now where you are having this proxy war between these two countries. And we are going to do their bidding. President Bola Ahmed Tinibu has not even settled down. He doesn't even have his team and is declaring war without consulting the people without the consent of the people, okay. no, we say no to war and we're not going to support any war. Okay, I get your point. Uh, you had a number of recommendations, one of which is that diplomacy should be uh, the best option. Where that diplomacy, as ECOWAS chair, uh, President Tinubu had the liaise with President Patrice Talon of, uh, of uh, Republic of Benin. He was the first person to go there. President Idris Deby, of uh, Chad was also sent there. Um, the chief of uh, air staff of Nigeria and the former governor of uh, Kassina State, Amenu Masari, and one other were also sent there. Uh, they didn't make progress. Only this week, uh, General Abdul Salami Abubakar and the Sultan were also uh, sent, you know, as a delegation, as part of a delegation to talk to the coup leaders. In fact, they were not even granted the uh, audience. So that diplomatic option has been, uh, has been pursued. It has failed. Are you suggesting that if the other ECOWAS chiefs, ECOWAS presidents, now that their army, army chiefs have met, if they decide to go ahead, Nigeria should just pull out? How would that make us look? No, I am say no I'm saying if they decide to go, that will be wrong, wrong decision. And if President Bola Ahmed Tinubu takes the decision as the chairman of ECOWAS to go to war, he's doing that on his own. No, but I'm saying that it's not, not a unilateral. Doing it. 
Pour non, les unilateral decisions. Non, non, non. C'est un groupe de Non, non. Nigeria, non. Non. Nigeria est Nigeria. Et il gouverne 200 millions de personnes. We have to give him approval to do that, even if he's the chairman of, 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 uh, of, of ECOWAS. The president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria is more relevant to us than being the chairman of ECOWAS. We, are, we that know are telling him things that his advisors will not tell him, that going to war, sending troops into Nigeria Republic will be a disaster, unprovoked. We have had our own share of military Uh, takeovers in Nigeria. Nobody sent troops to us. What of Mali? What of Guinea? What of Burkina Faso? What of that Chad? That was the place where the fr French president was there babysitting the current president. Nobody sent troops there. We need to be very, very careful. Is there an internal problem? And we should be able to help them. And the reason why we are saying negotiations do not help, at the very beginning, you are putting on the table the threat of violence, the threat of force, and you're asking the other party to listen to you, you have brought your last trump card at the very beginning. There's no way to do it. And it's showing the inexperience of President Bola Ahmed Tinubu on the international scene. He's not been properly advised. He does not have his team to advise him properly. You do not do that. Okay, let's say you roll in your tanks, if you have them, into Nigeria Republic, what do you do? What do you do? You install Bazoom by force and you stay there and keep him by force? We have seen the United States going to Iraq, going to Afghanistan, saying they are going to bring democracy. Where are they now? We need to be very, very, very careful. Military option is not the option. We have to. My recommendations are, first of all, take that threat of violence off the table because that is what is making them more entrenched into their positions. That's why they refuse to see our, our, uh, our, our elders. You are saying you're going to hit them and you're going to talk to them. Why are you here then? Take the threat of violence off the table. Start serious and sincere negotiation. And most importantly is, how are you going to help them solve this problem, which is an internal problem? By solving this problem is that, how are we going to do it? What is going to happen to Bazoom? The safety of Bazoom and his family must be paramount. What is going to happen after that? What do Nigerians want? Do we want this military for how long? How can we pressure, we, the ECOWAS and the international community, pressure the junta to have a timetable to transition to a democratic rule as soon as possible without the threat of violence? And essentially ECOWAS has declared war. They have closed borders. They have closed uh, airspace. They have uh, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu unilaterally, unilaterally broke the treaty between Nigeria and Nigeria that was signed in 1960, that Nigeria would be supplying uh, Niger Republic with uh, electricity. Nigeria currently supplied 70% of electricity to Niger Republic. In exchange, Niger Republic will not dam River Niger up front, up upstream. If they dam River Niger upstream, we'll all be dry. We won't have Kainji Dam. President Bola Ahmed Tinubu unilaterally, without reverting to the Congress, uh, 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 broke that, that, that treaty. Now the capital, the mayor, is in darkness. And you are saying, uh, we, we are going to... This is a country that, that has 40% of its budget is foreign aid. Biden actions, you close their borders, no fly zone, you close, uh, you, you cut electricity. Well, what uh, is at stake is more than just what we see. Well, we don't uh, understand. The president needs to be Prof. properly briefed. Prof. And he isn't. He doesn't look like he is. Prof. Oh, all right. So the criticism against that war all over the place, everybody coming at Stenobo, all his traditional enemies, They are seeing this as a moment of opportunity. But uh, let's kick the conversation on with uh, Solomon. Uh, let's sweep up first the people in Nigeria because of reasons of network. Uh, so Solomon, you're you are up first. Uh, unmute yourself. Um, uh, let's kick it off uh, with uh, what you have been looking at in the news today. So what's caught your attention in the news today, Solomon? Yeah, 
Good morning, everybody. Good morning, one man. I was just um this Festus Kayamo's um news. Um yeah, I was his um, screening was what caught my attention today. Uh, how even the uh, the Senate president has to rush down to Astro Rock because of uh, this guy's uh, issue is very very serious it was very serious today and uh, yeah that was the major uh, have they confirmed him now or are they still holding him uh, holding him in abeyance they've confirmed him they've confirmed him they've confirmed him yeah i saw the headline that he has been confirmed that they just told him to take a bow and go something like that yeah so, well what an embarrassment though it's good for him i think this senate and you see those guys that that pointed that um, pointed out this thing they did well the likes of Abaribe and then um, the other guy Dalit, they really did well because it's very so it's somehow that um this guy who just people who just insult our senate the the congress and just go free scot free so them calling him out now is 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 an example to others people will learn from this I will know that you don't need to treat or talk to these people anyhow. You need to uh, respect them and um, um, not just because you have the backing of the president. You know, this first was Hello, coming. what's happening? Is anybody there? Oh, yeah, no, so, yeah. So, so, uh, no, carry on. I think, Hello. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, sorry, are you talking to us, uh, Bishop? Can anybody hear me? Yeah, yeah we, we can, can hear, hear you. you. We can hear you. Oh, sorry, carry yeah. on, uh, Solomon. Yeah, yeah. So, so uh, it is like a is an example now. He's like he's a scapegoat, and I think what they are still going to do to you know they've not confirmed um, Erufai, Danlade, and Stella. So these people now they they are still yet to to confirm them. So it's another headline that caught my attention. So the, the, the I I like the way they they are even though I'm not hundred percent with all the senators in that place but um, the few ones that will be that are outspoken and um, standing by the truth for justice and all that they they, they are doing they are doing well so far it's not just being they're not just criticizing for so so so, so so the the narrative that this is going to be um um this is going to be a rubber stamp as rubber stamp senate uh, th that narrative is put, proving somewhat um misplaced yeah, they're not. They're not be, looking like a rubber stamp to our senate, are they? Even though they they still have element of uh, they are of that kind of uh, characteristic, but um, we will not really say we will not say um, that it's going to be hundred percent rubber stamp, rubber stamp um, senate. Yeah, so they are, they are, they, 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 will I say the opposition because the people doing this thing are the uh, opposition party that they are calling up calling out all these uh, errors and all these people that are misbehaving. It's not really APC members. So. And, and, and this headline on the screen, uh, Solomon, so it's been, that head, this headline has been hanging around somewhat since yesterday. Uh, Fashola reacts to allegations of writing presidential election tribunal judgment. I, I, I mean, it, it, you know, uh, it, you, you don't even know what to think or say sometimes uh, when you come across it. You, it uh, what, 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 uh, did you come across this and what did you make of it? Because I cannot even find the words to express on this. I just feel I this uh, headline. I don't know if this was what led to the Saturday and um, this uh, news that broke out on Friday that um, the military were in his comp in his um yeah in his um, estate or his compound in in Lagos that they've um, surrendered his um, they like like yeah they are in um, in his estate. I think something like that came up on Saturday. I don't know if it's because I don't know what led to it, but um, this is me. Yeah, I I don't know what to say about this um, headline because I don't think I don't see it, how possible it is. It might just be um, it might just be propaganda that people are just saying. yeah. But but uh, but uh, Fashola having to respond to it. Did you think it's something he should have done or? You know, there are certain things that you don't just give the dignity of, um, you know, of of a response. Do you think he should have responded to that? You know, you know, everybody, the class is very important. This kind of thing, I think he needs because even though I agree that uh, social media gives first hand info, 
but um, sometimes the the not sometimes as they bring first hand infos, that's how they still carry propaganda. So him not coming out to talk about to say anything concerning it, I think is 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 a good one. It should it shows that the news is not really relevant. So he, 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 there is no need of him talking about it. And um, El Rufai and Dan Lade being dragged through the coal as well. I mean, uh, uh, people will be delighted in this because these are the sort of things that we want to see. Uh, th those those days of take a bow and go, I mean, they, they should be in the past. Yeah, 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 yeah. It should be in the past. Like this El Rufai. And you know, because of the kind of um, statement this guy made, all those is uh, bigotry acts and um, um where it speaks those things would be part of the reasons why they they are they, his own screening has not been confirmed has not been completed so they i think they are really doing where the senate they are doing where in the in the and like the other guy that bossu guy they have every right to 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 hold that guy down that they, they did it's not because he's not let's just leave this thing of uh, because he's this is that is well He's educated and he has something to offer. Well, because his bad behavior, you have to caution him. You have to query him for 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 that kind of behavior, treating those rubbish he did. He did not show like somebody who is patriotic, but now he's he's changing his mouth and trying to. Well, they should just pardon him and um, and uh, but I like the way they are setting examples now, trying to make people understand that this is not going to be as usual. So. Is a good one, and yeah, this verify. They should, but they should. I, I would say they should give verify because one man in Abuja, yeah, this guy. When you see what he has done in Abuja, what he did in Abuja, you'll be very happy, you'll be proud to say, yeah, this is my federal um capital territory. Yeah, so they should give him the chance to to get this um this slot of uh, this is a mysterious slot. And, and uh, Simon Nipa, have you spoken on Simon Nipa? Um, Simon, <laughs> you know, <laughs> this guy, he likes to do dress up, doesn't he? He likes to dress up. Okay? <laughs> he reminds what, what me of uh, this, this English movie, The Last Kingdom, the way he talk about flank and uh, eastern flank. And, uh, they want to ambush Nigeria, <laughs> the Nigerian government. <laughs> I know that if, if that war, if Tunubu was um, eventually going to that war, Things like this will erupt, will come up. This kind of um, uh, we try to, they will try to use, take advantage of it and just stabilize this country. But thank God that there's nothing like war that will be happening. So, is, 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 that, is, is, that, is that the sentiment <laughs> in Nigeria now that uh, that the that the war is not going to take place? Is that what people feel? What what what's yeah, the temperature? Like, what's it? it? Yeah. Yeah, is 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 like that Senate um this stand really calmed things down. Like it really changed the conversation about uh, uh, uh the war and all that. So people are not really like people that I, I have spoken with, they've no as in even on social media, the 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 comments I've seen I this war, I don't they know the people already uh, people already know that the war is not going to take place. Yeah, it's not going to happen. So, but this Simon Ekwa is, is a really funny guy. I think I this video made me just know that he's just looking for re relevance. Yeah, he, he's just looking for relevance. He wants to just be heard at any slight opportunity. So, uh, well, what, what what about the headline from yesterday when um when um uh, Enan Dekano uh, said that uh, Monday is now going to be Economic Empowerment Day. Which runs contrary to the state at home. So, uh, as Simon Nipa responded to that, I I did not follow that space. The response, like his reply to or his response to that, um, um, this thing. No, okay, wait. I think I saw a tweet. I saw a tweet he he, he, he tweeted yesterday concerning it. He still believes all those things are just um, um, false narrative that um, some persons are just putting up, like the other fashion of. Uh, IPOB and those other and the the, um, the lawyers are just putting up to just deceive the people and all that. So, well, I'm not really interested in in those people's um, in those people's um, um, whatever they are saying. 
Yeah, but um, this guy, the the video you played, the last video you clip you played, was it Yusuf Usman's um, this? Because I did not see it. My uh, no, no, that that was on a rice TV. That was um um uh, uh, Dati Alibaba's uh, older brother. Um, okay, Ahmed, was, uh, Ahmed. Uh, yeah, yeah, Ahmed uh, Babali. Yeah, he was yeah. saying that um that uh it, it, it was essentially that language of a war against Niger Republic. Uh, is going to be translated to mean a war against the northern parts of Nigeria. So that's the tonality. He was telling us that 53% uh, of the people there are Hausa, and there's a good complement of uh, Kanuris and uh, Fulanese. And then he went on to play, paint a gloomy picture of how uh, poor and, and run down that country is. And then he landed that Sinobu is ill-advised you know, and ill-prepared. And it's so, uh, it went on to suggest that it's the element of na naivety and lack of experience on Tenobo's part to be rattling the sabers of war. So that tone was what he adopted. Yeah, I would I would agree with him, even with uh, Professor Us Yusuf uh, Busman. I would agree with them, even though they are Tenobo's um, um, critics uh, and uh, and um, and um, they don't they don't believe in him they don't share the same ideology and they yeah they are in different parties that they, they, these people they criticize him even before they criticized him even before the election even during the election and but these people they are reasonable people they still address him or like some other people that don't know politics that are very naive they still address him as president Tinubu and even though they don't they don't uh, agree to the it, 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 it went on it's it's a long um it's a long um, um, interaction with the Rice TV, but that was just a snippet from it. It went on to say that Atinubu was still suffering legitimacy uh, problems, both internationally and locally. And I don't understand what that means, uh, because Tinubu is the legitimate uh, president of the country. Uh, he's the one recognized globally and within the country as the president, until the court tells us that he's not then he's the legitimate president. So I'm not quite sure what that language he was using uh, was all about. Yeah, so, so um, yeah, so these these guys, they, they, they really, like, even the professor yesterday in the interview, he spoke well. He, he, one thing about Tinebu, one man, see, I know this guy has done a lot in the past, and but in life, you always need people. You need people that, because Tinebu's, uh, in his, in his, Kabao in his um, group or <laughs> with his supporters. He's just like the father there. Nobody is checking and balancing him that like in the sense that nobody advises him and the people advising him or the people he have around him, he's he's bigger than them. He they, needs, they look he needs, they look up to him too much. I mean. They look up to him too much and he's not what he's not what we need in this country. That is why I like the like. Is, is, is it is it a matter um, of age? Is it a matter of age, do you think? It may be age and experience. He's more experienced than people around him. Uh, you, at times, you need to be around people that are more experienced than you so that you, you they will always uh, help you be in line with their advice. That's why I like the like of uh, Atiku. Even with his age, you still have people that are experienced too that can still put him in line. And Obi, 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 yeah, this is where Obi comes in. He has people, the likes of Obasanjo, uh, even, uh, even though we, I, I don't totally agree with them, but he has people who are, that will always put him through in the game and let him know what's up and the kind of decisions to take. So I think Tinubu needs to, everybody around him are too under him and it's, it's really, really bad for, for him at this point. Like, do, do, this... Do, 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 do you think Tinubu will suffer? Do you think Tinubu will lose political capital if this war does not take place? Do you think he would lose political capital? If this war doesn't take place? Yes. Do you think he would lose faith? No, no, one man. There is nothing like, there is nothing like, uh, um, um, like, um, if he goes to war, he will be a coward. Him not going to war makes him a wise man. And the, the, the strong man doesn't mean he's who lives tomorrow. Well, but he has promised a, a war now, and some of us are excited. Some people are no, excited. No, one man, I don't see his action of not. Uh, um, um, his, I, I don't see his action as a, of not going to war as a cowardice one or as a, I don't see him as a coward. No, they everybody. No, no, it's, it's, it, 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 it's not coward though. Um, when he said the, uh, he gave that country a seven-day ultimatum, 
uh, us being the superpower of that sub-region. So those seven days have elapsed and nothing has happened. So if that war does not take place, he's going to lose, uh, he's going to lose face, isn't he? Like, like some he's sort not. of like a two play uh, and, and that is making rash comments and whatnot. No, one man, he, he's not going to lose any, any, anything. What is going to happen, he will just need to re-strategize his step and start th thinking before he comes out to open his mouth to, to make certain utterances, to just say certain things. He's not going to lose his any, he's not losing any force. He's going to still be powerful president. Trust me, he's going to still be a powerful president. Uh, uh, in, in this I'm not saying he doesn't listen to people. There's somebody saying that uh, he's not, he doesn't listen, but he doesn't have people who are ex experienced who are experienced, especially, yeah, he doesn't have people that who are experienced. People around him are people he has more experience than, yeah? So that's what I'm saying. It's not that he doesn't listen to people. He People around him, he has more experience. They are all calling him Baba. Yeah, even if, if he needs people that, that have more experience than him, he needs to, like, all this, even at a time, he should uh, make sure that people like uh, Obasanjo to come together if, and they, they, they need to still be talking, people like IBB, they need to still be um, reasoning to, 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 to provide solutions to certain things. You should consult them. He's not, he's not, um, he's not too, he's not, even though he's the president, he's not bigger than advice, he's not bigger than, he doesn't know more than these people. And you know, he has never been in this kind of, um, this federal level, this kind of national uh, federal level stuff. So this is just his first time, even though he has been a senator before, but he has not really, that was a long time ago. So now he needs to bring in these old men close to him. They should, they should, um, he should listen to them, even though he will not take 100% of what they say, but he should, he should, um, he should um, bring them close. Uh, 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 all right, brilliant. Thank, thanks for kicking it off, uh, Solomon. Solomon, I want to try and get the conversation around as quickly as I can, especially to the guys in Nigeria. So let me go on from you to Jide, who's also with us. Uh, so Jide, are you ready? Uh, on mute, Jide. Yeah, good morning, woman. Uh, good to see you, Jide. Always a delight. Uh, so so as I, as I started off with uh, Solomon, let me kick it off with you. Uh, what caught your attention in the news cycle today? No, well... What caught my attention today was uh, uh, one, Mr. No, Dr. Toji Boson scaling the ministerial um, screening. Uh, I was I was really delighted with um, with the way the the Senate handled it, and um, it has shown that this Senate, they are, it's it's a balance. Uh, people might call them rubber stamped. But I feel, I feel it's a balance because um, a Senate that is totally um, um, alien to the to the executive will give the executive problem, and a a, a Senate that is in uh, sync with the executive all the time will also be a problem for the states. So it has to be a balanced um, situation. It, it so, looks as though it looks as though we are for the first time having actually a working Senate. They they are there, not really necessary. Maybe even for the people, we'll see in the course of time. But they they seem to be there for the people. Yeah, exactly, one man. Because if you see what they they put um, um, Kiamo through today, what they put um, Erufai through. But they also put um, this uh, Mr. Tunji Bosun through while they were asking him. And those those um, those uh, ministerial nominee that there was one that that did not even uh, remember when he was uh, he was born. It was the the in between 1980 and 1982. A professor from Benue State. And there was one that um, gave a, two credit uh, YEC results. And claim that he had the ability to for, for the Senate to be able to call those things out. I feel the only thing that I don't like about the old ministerial screening was um, asking um, ex senators or um, 
senators to 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 take a bow and leave all in the name of them being a senator and they, i think they it, said it's, 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 their it's house. A, a, a spirit they call isn't it that, i think yes, that's the compliment yes. yeah. they said it's their house rules and i i really don't it really didn't go down well with me but um, if that is the way they've been doing it all the way uh, no problem it just means that probably the next um the next time the presidency is choosing his ministers, he needs to start um, dodging, uh, picking from the Senate if he wants his ministers to be properly uh, drilled, and um, if he wants to see the loopholes in their in their resume. But at the same time, uh, it can also be a loophole for the system because uh, you can just have a, a president that wants to. Uh, do a wishy-washy sort of job and picks every one of his uh, ministerial uh, appointee. They are all uh, ministers. They are all senators. So then we just have a situation whereby they get to the house and they all take a bow and leave. So and that's that's why I don't like that aspect of it. I really, I I frown at it. I feel for the sake of um, people watching because I tried following the whole um, situation you, we should at least have two three questions thrown at these people and they respond then we know that at least this person has the uh, something upstairs even if it's we asked questions for the visuals i think it's still okay than just saying uh, because you're a senator take a bow and leave other than that i feel for every other uh, nominee that has entered into that house of assembly that is not um, a former senator, a serving senator, uh, was really was really drilled. Like uh, Tunde Edun spent like almost one hour plus on his own uh, screening. They kept on throwing questions at him, and it made it uh, very very interesting. So that's the first thing that caught my uh, my attention. Oh, what, what, what about uh, girls being knocked out by the by the pesky English? Did, did, did nobody did that not uh, did nobody care about that? Uh, girls being knocked out. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah, well, you see, a woman, we we also cared about that. You know, it was late this um, evening, but um, we we the sentiment here in Nigeria is that the ladies have done their best. They've tried. At least, they should have won that game. Before, yes, at least yeah. in the match, they 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 actually hit the crossbar four times. And um, imagine if we had beaten them. Imagine how we would have been in this. I, I would have gone to. I would have been going to a pub every day wearing the Nigerian shirts just to wind I'm, people up. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. But um, it's a, it's a good one. It's a good experience for the ladies, and they've proven themselves. At least um, England is number four in the whole of uh, in the world, and the I think they are the European champion. For Nigeria to hold them to that point, in fact, outplayed them, uh, is something to be proud of. They played um, Australia, the host nation. They defeated Australia. They, def they drew the Olympic champions, Canada. And I, I think they've, they've done themselves proud. And uh, if, if I was the president, I would send my presidential jet to still go and pick them down to Nigeria and uh, give them a befitting welcome. Uh, uh, all right, but, but back to the war. What was the sentiment on the on the ground now? Are people sort of uh, in that mindset that uh, Solomon described that nobody is anticipating that any war will take place anymore? And if the war does not take place, um, Solomon disagreed, but I feel Tinubu would lose currency politically. Do you? Uh, woman, woman. Uh, Solomon said something like uh, Tinubu is not... Uh, well um informed he doesn't have people that advises him uh, he doesn't listen to them or probably they are too young for him i don't see that as a situation here we we are seeing uh we are we are seeing a situation pan out or play out in the in the most unfortunate um, um way it can now, it is ECOWAS' decision. And when people said uh, Tinubu gave them four days, uh, seven days ultimatum, it was ECOWAS' 
pronouncement. Putinu Ubu never gave them, never pronounced it with his own mouth that they are giving them seven days. It was the ECOWAS um, spokesperson that announced this. After the leaders, the remaining leaders in ECOWAS went for, um, what's it called? Um, closed door meetings on this matter. And they came out with their own, uh, their own um, submission. And um, while Tinubu was still writing to the House of Assembly, requesting for military men, I say this and I repeat it again. The Senegal had already said they have their men on ground and ready to move in when ECOWAS is ready. But everybody is playing this thing. In fact, Nigerians, we are playing this thing as if it is Nigerian that Nigeria that is taking all the decision, leading all the decision. I want, I want, I want you to understand this: that if Tinubu wants to go to war with Nigeria, and the rest of ECOWAS says we are not going, what would Tinubu have done as a new president, uh, new chair of the ECOWAS, and that needs that needs the buy-in of all these other ECOWAS country for him to get gain his his power? He wouldn't have gone to war. But the other Francophone countries that are in this ECOWAS are remaining in ECOWAS. Togo, Cote d'Ivoire, Benin, they are already, even Senegal, they are already seeing this thing as a threat to their existence. Because the sentiment of all the cool um, juntas is that um, they are fighting against France. And this is a sentiment. Sentiment. This is a sentiment that is shared across across all francophone countries that France is the cause of their problem. Even we Nigerians know to send, to a very large extent that the influence of France on these people's um, 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 economy. You understand? We all know. So if these people see it like this is a threat, only ikuton kujubeni. The next time it will come, it will take his head. Anything that, anything that looks like danger to them, they would also want to defend their territory. So they would, they know they don't have the power to stop this. They might not even have the power to curb it from happening in their own country. They might not have the power to stop it from happening in their own country. So if they have a body they can hide under and say, yes, fight for us, they would always support it. They will push for it. They will canvass for it. And Dinobu is coming into this mist as a newcomer. I think he is the latest induct induced mem uh, inducted member into ECOWAS. So they would have they will have their own um, sort of influence, background influence, that they will have played the politics and even if it was put to a vote, they will still have won because we need to understand Bazoum is a member of ECOWAS and he has just been dethroned. Even that alone, some ECOWAS members that are close to him will feel like, ah, let's go to this place and no, no, this must not happen to Bazoum. That's one sentiment. The other sentiment is some people, some ECOWAS nation, some francophone country will know that this can happen in their country. Because if you look at the, 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 the trend, Mali, Burkina Faso, um, Niger, Chad, Sudan, all taking over. The old Sahel bet is taking over. So these people too will share that sentiment and would push for it. So when ECOWAS was making that statement, it wasn't necessarily Tinubu's statement. And I, I am tired of hearing Nigerians continue to paint our country in the bad light. And you, you know, you know, Tinubu, 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 you know, Tinubu has to take the front lead on that. Um, whether it's an ECOWAS uh, project or not, uh, uh, Tinubu is the chairperson one. Um, Nigeria is the leading country in that subregion too. And if that what takes place is essentially going to be uh, the abundance of Nigerian troops rather than any other, eighty percent of the deployment will be Nigerian. So essentially, oh. it's a it's a Nigerian war. Okay. Yes, one man. 
essentially is a Nigerian war. This is what I'm trying to say. In the House of Assembly, the Senate president has the influence to influence things. And we saw the way he influenced the um, um, Tunji Bosun's and came uh, intervened in Tunji Bosun's case when he was saying, We are all fathers and we have children. And when they are, we correct them. I know he must have learned his lessons. Now, but he does not have the final say. And that is why he would always put it to the crown, to the floor members. Those that are in support say hi. And those that are against say me. See, if the if ECOWAS is to sanction um, um, Niger, the biggest sanctions that will uh, that Niger will feel would come from Nigeria. That is number one. Nigeria supplies the electricity. They use Nigerian border so much. Nigeria shares uh, a thousand mile border with them. You understand what I'm trying to say? Now, if they are to take any decision on Niger, it is Nigeria's voice that would everybody will be waiting to hear. Even Nigerians too will be looking at what is the body language of Nigeria. But this is ECOWAS' decision. And Nigeria is still part of ECOWAS. And Nigeria has to follow what ECOWAS has, has, has uh, um, decided. I want us to understand one thing here. Yeah. I like the way they have gone about it. The House of Assembly has said no to it. But what I don't like is the narrative that it is Tinubu that is doing this, it is Tinubu that is doing that just because we do not like this man or we have something against this man then we wrap it around it. the same thing is what Samuel Epa is doing and and one man please I'm sorry we you see something happened yesterday uh and into the early hours of today on this platform what happened? Only, yes I want to for people that were here uh, only uh uh being your bash being coin near she might be Tia back morally could say on to my morally. A Syrianian joined the chat. Oh, well, yeah, I heard him. Yeah, I heard him. Yes, the, and the, it's, the, he spoke. The, you understand? Now, they are monitoring us, so they are money. All the Africans are monitoring us. Yes. Now, we have a Cameroonian come to the platform as well. And he, he, everything is said about our country. With propagandas that this Samuel and the likes are pushing. And that is the reason why, when we say social media should be controlled, social media should not be relegate, uh, regulated. I'm telling you, even our our newspapers. No, no, no. Hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, because I heard the Syria Lunian guy that came on, sure. So um it, it, it was it, it was it, it was quite a Nigerian. He's telling us how wonderful they view Nigerians and how they looked up to us uh, as people. That were, uh, it, it was quite gushing in his uh, love of the country. It, it wasn't. Uh, it wasn't yeah. part of. Oh, no, yeah. no, 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 no. There was there was a guy that now came in again, Judah from Cameroon. No. Judah is a known quantity. It's, it's just a, it's a rascal. He, yeah, yeah. He, 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 he gave us... Is it the one that was calling him, uh, uh, calling himself Ambazonian and... Uh, yes, uh, yes. And yes. Ajan Lekoko was he, calling him... He Abokili. gave us <laughs> a lot of lies about Nigeria. Oh. A oh, lot right. of propagandas that were pushed around, and these are the kind of propaganda saying that it is uh, Tinubu that wants to go and fight the war. It is Tinubu that is this. It is Tinubu that is that. Nigeria no, is not no, even. No, no. Oh, hold on. Uh, uh, um, it, it, that guy said is an Ambazonian. So that Ambazonian narrative is a satellite. Yeah. Cameru uh, hold on. It's a satellite Cameroonian narrative of, of the uh, of the Bihafra narrative. So essentially, it's an IPOB, that guy. I, I understand you, woman. Oh, 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 all right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, and, and somebody said, that, I think it was Remy that was saying it stylishly, that we, we, our land, our land, our land, our land, our land, our country, 
and we speak so bad of our country. Now we are talking about our Senate, the way they have conducted themselves today, that it is at least commendable. And somebody, is, somebody came here to tell us that uh, a 40-year ruler is, is, is democracy, is democratic. So, so, but that's not the point. My own point is we should try as much as possible to understand that this is not a Tinubu's fight. It is an ECOWAS fight. Yes. So um, ECOWAS I, I think, nation... I, I, so, yeah, all, all right. So um, ECOWAS uh, nation yeah. already have their military on standby. Why Nigeria is still dilly-dallying how to get the military to mobilize. So if it was a Tinubu's war, Tinubu can use veto power and say this is a security issue and moving. But mm, I want to say this final statement. If we fold our arms... Do nothing on both ends, both diplomatically and uh, military-wise. And it degenerates in future. I hope everybody that is saying, okay, it's uh, the wrong move, it's not what to do, it's not this, it's not that, will not come back and blame this man again for the level of insecurity. Well, that well, we hey, you can, since uh, since um, uh, JD is, uh, yeah, go on, uh, rational mind. You said if we do nothing, we fold our hands. Well, what is the threat that uh, that Niger posed to Nigeria? Did you hear what I said? Did you? Did you? Yes, I heard what you said. I, 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 said, said. I said, what is the threat? You say if, we, if you just sit down, fold our hands, do nothing about it, what is going on in Niger? What Very is the good. threat that Niger posed to Nigeria? Very good. Okay. Now, first thing is this. The economic threat, one, um, I don't even want to toe that line for now. I'm looking at it from the other another angle. I don't want to toe the line of the pipeline stuff. I don't want to toe, toe the line of the gas uh, line. I want to toe the line of before Niger was in tumor. We know the extent to which they were uh, contributing to um, the growth of uh, Boko Haram. We know how the, how we how we blamed the past uh, president for banditry, which some of these people are also from. We saw videos of those guys, and we we saw some of them that they were not really Nigerians. We know now there is war in Sudan. There are influx of refugees down to Chad, even down to Niger. Now there is military coup in uh, uh, Niger now, they are finding their way and they will find it uh, south. And when they come into our country again, and we now start having insecurity here and there because those guys will find a way of eating. They will find a way of feeding themselves. And if crime is the fastest way to get money to feed themselves, and they choose to go by crime, and it is now overwhelming. You, 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 you know, Jide, they said that the the biggest uh, arms uh, market uh, in the Sahel is in that country in Nigeria. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. One more, uh, one man. Exactly. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Jide, just, just listen. I mean, I don't even know what all the all things just said now. I don't even understand. The question I ask you is that what is the threat that Niger posed to us? You said economically, you don't want to talk about that. Now you're talking about um, military. I mean, I mean um, terrorism or whatever um, going on in the Sahel. So when Bazoum was there, what is the difference of Bazoum being there and these military guys doing being there? Now give me. Let me give you a case in point. In Mali, the same issue they're facing in Niger is what they face. Under when the I mean, when the um, a civilian was there, it was a mess. Now with the military there now, it, they, they've been able to stem the tide. To be able to put that Tuareg and the rest of them in those part, another part of Mali. Same thing in uh, Burkina. The same problem when they had a, 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 a civilian there, they were just treating the whole thing with just uh, with kid block. And then now look at how they're doing very well. We were able to put those people down, put them in there, I mean, clamp them down. Now look at what is going on in uh, uh, in Niger. I'm not saying totally it's all it all has to do with uh, um, uh, terrorism or whatever the insurgency there, but it's more of an economic for them. So. Now, and, but they use that as an as their excuse too, the issue of uh, insurrection and all of that playing out around their countries too. Now, 
they are there now. Look at this country I just giving you now. How they are doing very well when it comes to security wise in their country. Now, if they are doing the same thing, so what is the difference between Bazoom being there and there was this problem they had economically and all of that, and they being there? What's 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 the difference? And what's 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 the threat to Nigeria? That's the question. Okay. Oh, 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 all right, hold on, did they okay. respond to oh, re respond to that, but succinctly? I want to try and get around to people very, very quickly so that they're not held for too long. But before you respond. Uh, can I can I ask that whoever has not thumb, thumbed up, please thumb up. We've had uh, 150, 160, 170, etc. But all, all we have is, is 50 likes. So if you've not clicked on the like button yet, then please do that, sir. So did they just condense it so I can uh, go to the next person? All right. Um, rational mind. I like your question, but I want to say something. Um, one of the accusations of the Cameroonian guy that came yesterday was that we have 6 million refugees from Nigeria living in Cameroon. Now, as a result no, of... Those, the those, are, those, those are dubious statistics, by the way. I, 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 well, one man, I, I want to just... Um, I want to say something to that. Mm. That's one. Mm. Now... That we have six million uh, Nigerians living in uh, Nigeria, uh, in Cameroon now, as a result of Boko Haram insurgency. Now, he equally accused Nigeria of dispersing Boko Haram into their country. Okay. Now, what I'm trying to say is this: already, as it stands now, some Nigerians from 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 some documentaries I watched. Um, um, uh, recently, Chadians, Sudanese are moving down into Nigeria. That's as it stands today, trying to find a place to hide yourself. Now, if you look in terms of the numbers of people moving out because of this military incursion, which these people were in their states before, they did not move out when they had civilian rule. Okay, now they are moving out. And by the time they move out in their number, let's say, let's say because the whole bet is, is now under military rule, let's say we are looking around 6 million, 12 million or thereabouts moving into Nigeria. One, we already have our own deficit in terms of um, whatever we, oh, economic oh, issues. Oh, oh. Now these people will come with their own issues. Some will carry weapons. Some will start crimes again. And that's why I'm saying that at least if we are not doing anything, we should at least march our military down to our borders to stop any form of incursion, any form of uh, refugee issue, again, that will lead to insurgency and banditry and all these things along the line. And when it happens, we will not blame anybody but the presidency. That is what we know how to do best in this country. Thank you, Woman. Oh, all right, brilliant. Uh, today. So I'm going to open up the space for a more expansive conversation. But, but as I said, I want to get through the voices quickly uh, because I, I'm conscious that people hang around uh, sometimes. Uh, let's hear from Darati and open up as we did. Uh, so Darati, uh, what caught your attention in the news today? Yes, um, thank you, Omar. Uh, just like and share. Um, I got a lot. I, I no, no, we can't. We can't. Hear, we can't hear you, Dorothy. I saw the. I saw the. Um, what is this called? This called this guy called. Uh, San. This our. Uh, what's the name? Festo Kiyamo. Festo <laughs> Festo Kiyamo. I watched the. Uh, the issue that happened in the Senate because I, you know, the Senate has a Facebook account. So I think one day was a particular time like that I, I was following it. I normally follow some many of the Nigerian institutions, you know. I just follow them sometimes when I see them. So just to get some, some feedback sometimes. So I saw how they stepped him down. They stepped him down. And I think um, the uh, senior president... Darati? Yeah, Darati. Oh, I think it dropped. Uh, let, 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 let's hear from uh, let, let's hear from um, let, let's hear from um, uh, uh, enigmatic en enigmatic. So uh, Darate come back and then take the floor back. Uh, 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 en enigmatic un unmute. Uh, same question that I just asked Darate before it dropped. Uh, what caught your attention in the news cycle today? Good to see you, uh, enigmatic. 
Uh, thank you, Oman. Um, I mean, a couple of things. Yeah, a couple of them. First, um, I think some people, if they are real Nigerians, they should just stop talking about uh, Nigeria going to war. I've said it, Nigeria is not going to war. Tinubu is not ECOWAS. ECOWAS is not Tinubu. So ECOWAS is a, is a regional organization that is being headed by, uh, fortunately, a Nigerian president. So for the mere fact that is the ECOWAS uh, boss, so to say, doesn't actually give him the uh, unilateral decision to just pick and choose on what he does. And then, of course, I do understand the the um, the sentiment of uh, the people from the north. You know, they have families there. They are interwoven. They, they have a lot of things going down in Niger. And they, there's always this uh, uh, conversation about, uh, and this is why um, one thing that I'm actually happy about that the next minister of uh, defense is not going to be a military man, somebody who is uh, less in that uh, category, so they can think less. Who, of, who, who are you anticipating? Well, I, for, to, it's, that is very it's quite dicey because when you look at the list. He, he, he made conscious effort not to include any military man, ex-military man, or ex- Oh, right. You, so, so there's no military men on the list, is there? Okay, no, yeah. no. So he's trying to demilitarize Nigeria politics, if you notice what is happening. And that was the reason he insisted on uh, Ribadu. So anybody can handle that. Erufai, um, Wiki, I know he's going to be somebody uh, who is dogged, resilient, uh, a, a, real bruiser, a real bruiser, a real bruiser, a real bruiser. So not just a small boy draw. So Nigeria is not going to war. I know we have some skepticism on the, on one side, uh, and then we have some completely, you know, uh, the losers. Of course, they want war. They do not want war. They want coup. Now they are resorting to blackmail and every other thing. So there are so many things that is that that I have time to talk about today. You want to talk about fascists uh, filing uh, a libel or a, 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 as if, as he filed a libel? Do you think you should have responded, even? Absolutely. They need to make a. They need to make an example of those, uh, you know, lunatics. Those people are becoming. Uh, you know, they are becoming national national risk, national security risk to the country as a whole. So somebody is basically sponsoring They, they picked on the wrong guy. Your fascia is not one to do. So, and your fascia is not going to back down. Once it makes mm -hmm. a decision like that, he has already they filed to uh, Twitter, now X. They are make, they've covered the ground. They've covered the ground. They will, they will unveil whoever is behind the you know, behind us, the scene doing that because it went be They were actually, don't you know, they even actually had, um, what is it? They created Twitter space on because of this matter. There are so many, they have YouTube, uh, stuff and some other people that you know, they have, uh, their field day on that. So they just need to do this and make a, they need to make an example of some people because when you are looking at this one man, this is defamation of character, right? In all definition of it, in all, uh, in all, in anything you can say, because it is, uh, though defamation, you know, law vary from one jurisdiction to another, right? But generally, globally, the aim uh, of defamation basically is to strike a balance, you know, between protecting freedom of speech and safeguarding indi individuals. Uh, reputations, you know, from false and harmful statements like this. Um, Fashola will see that guy in prison. Is that sort of guy. He will see that guy in prison. Yeah, like they always say, they chose the wrong guy. That's what, because it was, it, it went, you know, their, their game now is that we, people who can reason, And they use his name as well, Jackson Ude. <laughs> Jackson. You know, it's <laughs> so you should go and see, you should go and see, you already filed it, and then when you look at what is happening, right, they started from, 
election uh, mandate or whatever, they are in court from the whole period of the time they were in court. They never kept quiet for once. They are trying to de delegitimize the process of election, the government, the institution, and then the, the, the judiciary as, it's, as, it's, as it is now, because they are aware of the fact that the ruling will be coming anytime from now. So it's like they are snatching a playbook, right, from Donald Trump, the same way Donald Trump is doing what they are doing. And this is the problem of their leader. They have a leader who can tell them to keep quiet and to, to, to nip it in the bud. But he feels, he, he, you know, he, he has, he, he feels the legitimacy of these people running crazy. But once again, they've chosen the wrong person because, you know, it, it, defamation as it is, you know, it's, a, it, it, it's, it's an all encompassing. Uh, is, is it is it a jailable offense defamation is it a jailable uh, offense oh man, we know you know there is a cyber 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 crime and uh, something something stalking law in uh, act in nigeria they have all I, the laws i, 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 I thought the penalty was just a fine I, i'm not sure if it's a jailable offense well i uh, i can't really speak uh extensively extensively against that but when it goes to the route of defamation right and then uh, which includes libel Right and slander, that is that there's a there's a, pun, a capital punishment for that, and I think that's what he's he's he's, he's going for, because basically they they've soiled his name, his reputation, right? Because the few factors that you consider in this like in libel is you know libel statement that includes defamatory articles like you just seen now in newspaper, social media posts, blogs, entries, and stuff like that. They were all over the place. And then the, the statement typically, you know, more permanent or can reach broader audience, which actually it ticks all the boxes. It checks all the boxes of what, you know, aggregates to be a, a defamation of character. So which is a wish if, if it goes under that, then there's a, there's a capital punishment for that, you know. But beyond that, that is number one. Number two, I want to speak, I've spoken about the war. The people who want war, they know where they've been calling their war. So they should restrict it to their region and their and their and their obedience space because they don't even know what they want now. They wanted a coup. They wanted a, their mandate restored. They want they, now they want a, a Niger, the same Niger Republic that they viciously attacked because they they, they, they because of Buhari the last time Buhari extending some overshots to them. All of a sudden they are the lovers of that uh, Niger Republic now. So they're always here or there. And then when we call them certain stuff, people will be saying we don't, because you do, you cannot be patriotic and always want everything evil and bad for your country. These are the same set of people that started, you know, maligning reputation of Nigeria to United Nations, to almost every international organization. One of them wrote to Biden. Some of them wrote to a lot of nonsense just because of election. So that is by the way, and then going to the happenings in the Senate. So the Senate, as we speak, are they actually morons, as the person called them? I think they've come out to. I, I, I did not. They, 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 I did not. They've come out to uh, uh, show Nigerians they are actually moronic in 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 their in their tendencies at uh, 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 the way they conduct their businesses, you know. This is not like trying to carry kettle for anyone, but you know, when you when you look at uh, uh, the the Yamo drama today now, people except people who just want to be political, because we know Kayamo has been the target, prime target of the opposition from the election, so they've been looking for him. They've been looking for ways to to of course malign his reputation. One of those people that they just been looking for for a way to get back at him. But beyond that, this uh, situation that happened today at the Senate, there was a, 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 a let me say, milieu, if you call it, or probably some imbroglio that actually ensued between Kayamo and the ministers and the uh, senators, both uh, chambers, last year. So there was a program that uh, uh, was supposed to be handled by, by the executive. But you know, by the, uh, uh, by the, uh, what by the nature of the Senate? Oh, 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 all right. Um, I, I think. Any, oh, yeah, you're back. Okay, carry on. Yes. 
so by by the by the tendencies of the senate right they uh, seamlessly they were supposed to have a seamless negotiation with kiyamo for 50 percent right and then each of the one time uh, the one each local government was supposed to be having one thousand on on the certain days so kiyamo took the list out of the it took kiyamo basically hand uh, did everything they were supposed to do by virtue of the executive power that they had but that was not okay with them you know in every in situations like that the national assembly the senators and the house of rep members they always want to have uh their input that in my local government if you are submitting 1000 names they want to have their own people on the list and stuff like that kayamo never allowed them to do that they basically did that on merit because they were suspecting that if they handed the list to the uh, honorables they will of course you know do their own magic and then inflate the numbers or probably put some party people there so they will they basically try to they basically oh, 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 wait, oh, oh, all right uh, can, can i ask people to push up the like button get us to a hundred and then i'll leave you alone uh carry on enigmatic yeah yeah so that was the cross of the matter that was how they started then later when they saw that he wasn't backing down right they started uh, uh issue uh, uh, to issue threats they uh invited him to house of rep he went to house of rep the videos are there people can you can check the video you will see the conversation you will see the uh the confusion so they wanted him to go into an executive executive session with them right and he told them you cannot go to an executive session where you are alleging corruption corruption to a corruption matter should be hand, should be uh, handled right in the glare of the camera you, you never give them the, the option of going behind the scene and that was the problem and at the end of the day they told him to go so he left because he was supposed to move to the senate so now it was the it was uh the results you are seeing today beyond the politics behind it because from data state already there are politics that is happening in Delta, which I told you earlier, that Kayamo was not on the list. First of all, he was supposed to be a, a, the NDDC chairman, right? Or one of the uh, flagship board uh, chairman. That was the arrangement because he was getting too messy in Delta State. And then that was the arrangement for him. Because Okotete is sup 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 supposedly is going to be dropped or almost going to be dropped. If she is able to be to go through the the approval process then i know i told you it's going to be probably a, a, when the reshuffle cabinet she's probably going to be one of those she has a, a literature of petition and baggage against her so that's why you, have, you see that uh Kaya, uh Okotete, that's uh abdullah and uh Erufai, they've not been cleared yet so now uh it, 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 is that that has to be a good thing because uh, there's such um uh, because sometimes you have the sense that uh, people like El Rufai feel that they are above um, the country or above the law. So for him to be embarrassed somewhat, I think a lot of people delight in it. Okay, the, the people who want El Rufai to be embarrassed, what is their what is um, uh, what? Can you compare those people? Can you compare those people's their state of origin, their governors, the performances of their governors? I, I, I'm, I'm one of them, by the way. Yeah, I, I want okay. to be embarrassed. Maybe. Yeah. Okay, out. Uh, X, uh, uh, I would push you. You, you will be their leader now. You want to be embarrassed, but compare mm -hmm. Rufai's performances so far in public offices, past and present. Compare any of your governors, past and present, to Rufai in terms of. He, he has not done half of the Imakin deal in terms of the resources available to both. Are you? Are you? Are you one of those listening to some echo chamber propaganda or what? No, no, I'm on the floor in Ibadan. That's that's why I am. From where you are in the UK, right? <laughs> I don't don't worry. Uh, Fellele layout. I mean, I'm not in the UK. I mean, Fellele layout. At, yes. at least I'm not. Yes. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not speaking. But I can tell you for a fact. If you if you understand, if you know how Kaduna was before he became governor, you know how Kaduna. You know how he left Kaduna State when he was. Uh, no, 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 no. Nobody's querying that. But um. Uh, the, the killings in Southern Kaduna and how he mismanaged, uh, we know that that situation precedes his administration, but uh, so, a lot of people, and myself somewhat as well, felt that he mismanaged that space. In fact, some people even felt that he encouraged it. Well, that is quite, that is quite uh, debatable, right? If you are putting that on the table for people who think uh, differently, 
uh, as a state governor, what 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 can you really do? The only thing you can do is probably facilitate your closeness or probably whatever con contact you have, you know, from the federal level to the subnational. It does not. It has no power of, uh, to control the security or whatever. Of course, from utterances or from whatever he says, or from body language or from actions, people can say actions or inaction, so to say. People may actually read minutes to that to say, okay, this is or probably the major problem that I've seen that Rufai has had is because of his utterances against a certain section of the of the country, especially the obedient. You know, you know their politics with Rufai. He has come out to chastise and embarrass their little god, you know, and he has he, he, he has done everything openly to let them understand that you know he's he's a very stubborn guy that he will say what he has to say. And you can go to her if you like it or not. And then that, that was the reason. It, it's, it, I don't, it's not, a, at least we cannot consider him to be desperate for a military appointment, unlike the other guy who, who, called, who said Nigeria is a stain on his name and Nigeria passport is a stain and he called everybody out. But now he's begging desperately to be minister. So you cannot really say Rufa is, is desperate. They give him good, they don't give him good. It's okay, right? But like I said again, those people who want to always criticize Erufai for everything, what, are, what has been the achievement of their governors in their own state? Have we not seen governors in this state, right? Because when you say, when we say answer, answers, you always want to point fingers to Lagos State. But do you, are you aware of the fact that answers in, in Anambra State up until now, their God, right, filed an injunction to even keep going to the uh, uh, judicial judicial inquiry to face questions to answer questions because of the activities of SARS in Okuzu SARS 140 people died they are not 140 Hausa people they are not 140 Yoruba people 140 people from Banana State they died why why he was governor on record videos are there right but we, we can actually say this back and forth but we know the politics of Erufai and we know how bombastic and how it can be when he actually wants to be. Even it, the guy that actually submitted the petition against him that very day, he was going to speak you know, to that petition. Why did the Senate not allow him to be, they were supposed to be screening him. And this is what I'm talking about the nascent stages of our democracy. In America, the purpose of screening is ask tough questions, you know, where there are gray areas, clear those gray areas. They had the opportunity of allowing that man to answer to the petition that was introduced or the order of that petition that was introduced by Honorable I mean, Senator uh, Sunday Karimi, right? In what, the, what, in, what, what, what indication did they give that? Uh, because you seem to be leaping to the assumption. I saw no indication that he wanted to answer. He was ready to answer it. If probably you did go and, go back and watch his screening. Erufai, don't Erufai, first of all, when you are dealing with people like Erufai, he will tell you in his mind, what do I stand to lose again? Do you understand that kind of mindset, one man? What else do I have do I stand to lose again in my life that I will not come out and clear my name by whatever petition they've submitted against me? Because I did not see the, uh, the petition, and not, you do you do not see the petition either, it's classified. But I can guess that what is in that petition. It's not going to be beyond all these rhetorics of uh, being, him being a divisive person, him being uh, somebody uh, who is trying to uh, ethnic ethnic chauvinist or something like that, right? Is Peter Obi not on the phone talk, crying about daddy, our daddy or whatever? Was he not uh, playing to the gallery with Christians and stuff like that? How many of them have done that? But when people, when they are, when, they, when, when some, uh, some some people have a tunnel vision, you know, loathsomeness about some people. They will go extra mile without actually looking at the advantage of that person. And I challenge anybody again on this platform: if you are from Edo State, are you proud of the of the of the lunatic that you have in Edo State in Obaseki? That in eight years you cannot significantly point to anything that Obaseki has done. If you are from Delta State, irrespective of the regardless of the humongous mongos allowances fact and everything that you even the royalty from the iocs can you point significantly to anything significant anything of achievement laid on ground by your governor or any governor in the southeast or any governor in southwest or any governor at all 
But when people, when you are saying Aero 5, travel to try to travel to Kano State to Kaduna State and flashback how Kaduna was and how he left Kaduna, flashback how uh, FCT was when he when he was in office and then when he left. And since, since he left FCT, tell me one FCT uh, FCT FCT uh, minister, right? That has worked close, even close to lacing the shoe of this man. These are his performance. Enigmatic, can I interject, please? I want to give me a second, please. But that is, we are talking, that is the part of it. I'm not saying he's, he's a perfect human, every they are everybody's inf infallible, including myself. We human beings, we are all subject. No, no, everybody is fallible, fallible, yeah, yeah. Sorry, everybody is fallible, right? So, hmm. we are all subject of imperfection. But to when you want to speak about Wiki now, go and look at those people. Who will be speaking at the at the at the top of their voices against wiki and this is the wiki at a point one man bear me witness and anybody of this platform this is a wiki at a point that was the doyen right and the sino show and the love board of the obedient when he graciously you know almost laid the red carpet for ob when he came to river state you but, you know you 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 know Wiki actually gave him his campaign bosses uh, you, you know but they, when when you when you have a when like i said when you are so shallow minded and you can't reason beyond some uh, you know primordial political sentiment then it be, it, it, be, it it clouds your judgment your sense of judgment so look at the good in the i'm not like i said right i'm talking about his performance now i'm talking about if if uh, if Erufai, Holds any portfolio in the federal cabinet, is it going to perform? Yes or no? If you think it's not going to perform, go to your own state, put your governor, your incumbent governor side by side, Eru, find now, okay? Or your ex governors side by side, Eru, find and compare and contrast. That is where we should start. Uh, that is how we should be discussing our politics going forward. Not oh, just saying oh, 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 oh. Eru, find is this, we is this. Your government, oh, 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 your oh, state. Oh. What have they done? What what are oh, they oh, doing? Oh, 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 all right, enigmatic. Take a question from GD and then give it a give it a short. Um, uh, uh, there's still a, a a couple of headlines that have come through that I want to speak to you about, but I want okay. to move it around, like I said, to document everybody's voice. But take a question from GD. Give it a a, a, a snapshot answer, and then we go to Prince Daddy. Okay. Okay. Okay, enigmatic. Uh, thank you for your submission. I I want to throw this out as a general question. So, but I know you will take a cue from it. Uh, don't you think it is um, complete hypocrisy from most of the Nigerians criticizing this man, because um, this man, in terms of performance, has almost outperformed any of our governors that we know. And now to the point of his statement or whatever he said, I I want to say something like we have during this um old Buari scenario, Buari regime, we had pastors of the pulpit that said things that were worse than what um Erufai said. But because they they are saying it to people, they, they, to a person that uh, almost every one of them does not like, it is okay. I I also remember that that the uh, Fayoshi advertised uh, Buhari. So, so, sorry, did they have a question? Just just to manage the time. Yes, we yes. advertised Buhari's obituary on the on the newspaper, and then it was okay with everybody. Don't you think that it is just hypocrisy that whenever things don't go our way in Nigeria or does not go in our line of thought, we always try to condemn and try to look for a way to discredit uh, the, 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 that person or, or that thing? Okay, let me just uh, go by this way. Um, the, the hypocrisy of Nigerians, right, especially within the political space, is quite appalling and can be nauseating sometimes because we at a point we all agree that all our, all our politicians are criminals right we all agreed but when you want to define your own criminal being a better criminal then what is the what is your level of integrity in that so like i was saying right do not forget at a point in this country we have some people and opting now 
I think they've reverted back until, I mean, just for the period of the election, they had a, a change of mind, but temporarily, they call them temporary lovers of Nigeria now, emergency lovers of Nigeria. They still believe Nigeria is a zoo, one, right? There are some people in this country that at a point they can, they can exchange their, they can exchange anything good in their life to believe that Buari, you know, that Buari, the, Buari, the same Buari you know, when he was in office was a cloned Buari. They took everything hook, line, and sinker. And then you will come to question the, the, the level of some people that I'll consider the, the theatric, theatric, you know, vagabonds that you cannot call, call them Nigerians. When you want, you know, regardless of your politics in America, right? I want to put any, this thing to test to anyone. Regardless of Republican or Democrat, if you see them outside America, ask them certain questions. They will put you to your place and let you understand. Forget what we our politics back home. You cannot right, speak evil of America. But when you have Nigerians on a daily basis looking for ways right, to, to, to inflame Nigeria, looking for ways to, 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 to put Nigeria down. And then it, it brings you to this question. Do you know the level of some people's apostate set of mindsets? Their level of, uh, you know, uh, you know, the, the, the intellectual perfidy and the mendacious ways they want to define citizenship is quite, uh, you know, silly. Because you cannot say you are a citizen of a country and you are just, uh, you know, uh, ceding that your allegiance to, to an individual. That becomes, that becomes, you know, courtism. That, that becomes hero worshipping to the point that you want Nigeria to be born alive. It's not fair. So the, talking to the hypocrisy of this, tell me any Nigeria politician now that you can beat your chest and say, this is a messiah, this is clean, because the only thing we say is they all go through, if, if they have FBI sash all of them, they, they will probably be in prison, right? And you are not, a, you are on, on, a, on a normal basis, legally, you are not, uh, you are not a criminal until convicted of that. But when you want to define, I mean, defend your own as a gay soldier, like this Erufai now, check the region or check the people that are always criticizing Erufai. Oh. You ask the question, what has been this, what, what has been the sins or the sin of Erufai? They will tell you some, you know, some, some, some unnecessary, irrelevant, you know, stories up and down. And I put oh, it to everybody right. again. Go back to your state and, and check your state governors. What has been their performances? Do they even do they even go do they can they even make the the the, the cabinet of even Erufai in the state by level of their performances? Oh, 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 all right, brilliant. So so that, that uh, brilliant. So so uh, let's go on then from from uh, enigmatic to to um to Prince Daddy. So uh, we want to try and get it quickly uh, around everybody. Uh, so uh, Prince Daddy, you're up next. Are the opening questions still still the same? What caught your attention uh, in the news cycle today, Prince? Prince Daddy. Uh, can, can anyone hear me? Prince, you're muted. Hello? Can anyone hear me? Yeah, what happened to Prince Zadi? Is he not the? Yeah, he, 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 he's unmuted, but uh, we can't hear 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 him. Ah, uh, Prince. Maybe he's, maybe he's not there. Obalola. Maybe he's not there at the moment. Uh, uh, Oriade, uh, no. Oh, 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 all right, all right then. Uh, you you pick it up from there. Um, uh, 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 Prince, are you there? Yes, he's saying in the private chat that he's there, but uh, your voice is not coming through, Prince. We can't hear a word. Tell him to go out and come back in. Yes, uh, if you heard that Jande Koko, uh, de then do that. Um, uh, uh, so, 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 sorry, let, let, um, yeah, yes, do that. Uh, th thank you, Prince. But make sure you come back. 
Uh, let's hear from Darati, who dropped and then came back. So we hear from Darati, uh, and then we, we, we hear from uh, uh, Ajan Le Koko, uh, uh, Rational Mind Bishop. Uh, uh, so Darati, you're back. Okay, uh, one more. Thank you. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I, I was cut off the other time. My, my network fluctuated at that, that time. Well, um, one, let me just speak one, one uh, thing about uh, the issue of the Niger Republic team. I think um, presently the whole country is like, uh, we don't want you to go, to do, go for this war, so on and so forth. And uh, there was a speaker that spoke the earlier on, that's Mr. G. Day. He made us to know, he made it clear to Nigerians to know that it is not about Sinubu. Even though Nigeria has a lion's share in terms of responsibilities within the ECOWAS. Yesterday, for yesterday, I saw the Gambian president came into the, into the Gambia at the airport. He was engaged by the, by the journalist. And he was being asked what will be their next line of action. And he was saying that we have, as we have agreed together. Have we lost you again? Uh, Darati? Darati? Can anyone hear me? <laughs> yeah, the Gambian guy is gone. The Gambian guy. Uh, oh, oh, all right. Uh, Ajan Lekoko uh, will come to you. Uh, sorry, Darati. We, 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 uh, we'll, we'll come back to you again. Uh, uh, yes, Ajan Lekoko. So the same question, your response. Yes. Greetings uh, to our listener around the world. Click on the live button share and subscribe if you haven't done so. Um, I think um, the closure of the airspace by the Niger, um, according to um, aviation and airline, uh, airliner, um, I mean, what do you call it? This, uh, um, uh, yes, I think uh, airline operators, uh, what they are saying now is that, uh, you know, flight ticket uh, might cost more because they have to do uh, the reroute of their flight due to the closure of the uh, uh, Nigerian uh, airspace uh, will take a longer time than uh, what it used to be. So, because now we have Sudan airspace close and um, what do you call it? Um, Nigerian airspace close. So coming to West Africa, to Nigeria and some other parts of West Africa uh, that normally take the routes of uh, uh, Nigerian uh, airspace, they have to rerouse, and that will take a longer time. So the flight ticket uh, might go up. Um, the, the those, those are some of the unforeseen. Those are some of the unforeseen effects of some of these things, isn't it? Yeah. So the the war have not started, but uh, the economic effect uh, has already begun. So that is, uh, is... Is that because of the no-fly zone that everybody has declared? Because the Nigerians have also declared a no-fly zone and Nigerians have also declared a no-fly zone. Uh, yes. So, it, it's, uh, yeah, that is why. Uh, because um, now uh, the, uh, they close their airspace now officially that they don't want any airline to pass through their airplane. And they have done this because of... Uh, Nigerian um, aggression. Air, yes. So if Nigerian Air Force or any um, any airline whatsoever that uh, try to fly through their airspace, they must shoot it down. They must shoot. It's going to constitute a security threat to them because they already make official announcement their airspace is closed. They don't want any airline or any anything whatsoever to fly through their airspace so i think they are they are they are getting their defense um um they are they are fortifying their defense but, but you don't even have the capability i did show that clip of the uh wagner group uh taking formations there and you were describing it as fake news 
uh, yeah, to me, one uh, some few seconds clip is not convincing uh, uh, enough to tell me that Wagner Group are there already. So, um, so now they are fortifying their defense. Um, uh, on the air, on the ground, and uh, they have said they 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 said they are ready for any um, any military attack coming toward them. They are ready to fight back. So that is what they said today. So it tells me that those guys they are ready. They don't. They are not backing down, and they are ready to defend their country. And um, Yo, so, um, but in a nutshell, we might be buying L, I mean, air ticket. Those of you coming for breathing, I mean, you might have to pay more uh, now because uh, Nigeria closed their DC. And uh, the other countries too, the Mali and, uh, and uh, Burkina Faso, they might join them in the same. Uh, um, uh, uh, you know, um, to close their own air, air space as well. You, so you, you know, uh, let, let me show you this headline. Actually, I was saving this for enigmatic, but let me let me let me show you this headline. Um, there, there is no way that that administration can hold that. That's what it's seeming like. Uh, U.S. envoy meet Niger coup leaders, but see no headway. Um, the second highest United States diplomat uh, said on Monday. She had met with Niger's military leaders, uh, but made no immediate headway in reversing a coup. Victoria Nuland, the acting deputy uh, secretary of state, she said she met uh, for more than two hours with Niger's senior military uh, leaders in the capital, Naomi. These conversations were extremely frank and at times quite difficult, Nuland told uh, reporters by telephone as she prepares to fly out of Niger. Uh, this was a first conversation in which the United States was offering its good offices if there is a desire on the part of the people who are responsible for this to return to the constitutional order, she said. I would not say that we are in any way taking up, uh, I would not say that we were in any way taking up on that offer, she said. So, the Americans sending a high delegation. Um, she said she met with uh, Brigadier General Musa Salau uh, Bamau, who has been named as the new military chief of staff and other leaders. She said the junta did not respond to her request to meet a uh, Niger self proclaimed new leader, General uh, Teani, or the detained elected President Mohamed Bazoum, although US officials have been in touch with Bazoum via, via a telephone. Nuland said she gave a number of options on the way to reverse the coup. She said she also uh, made clear the consequences are for relations with the United States if Niger does not restore Bazoum or follow the path of neighboring Mali in calling in Russia or follow the path of neighboring uh, Mali in calling in uh, Russia's Wagner mercenaries. I hope they will keep the door open to diplomacy. We made that proposal, we will see, she said. She said uh, Ba Mao was well acquainted with uh, cooperation with the United States through his past involvement uh, in our special missions. So, so, so yes, the Americans are in. Uh, the, people, the people who have taken this action here understand very well the risks to their sovereignty when Wagner is invited in, Nulan said. So um, I, I'm not quite seeing how that uh, coup can hold uh, Ajane Koko. Uh, look, uh, one man. From that report, she was not able to meet the new head of state. So this guy have adopted since um, I think a day before the um, what do you call it? Maybe two days before the uh, uh, the ultimatum. Uh, two days before the end of the ultimatum given them by the ECOWAS, 
the stop, the the stop to meet with any foreign delegation. The Nigerian high level delegation by um, uh, sent by Buhari, I mean by um, Tinumbu, the name of um, Sadwana and Sokoto and um, Abdul Salami. Abdul Salam. The guy did not meet with them. So the he kept he kept them holding at the airport, the audacity yeah. of it. Yeah. So he didn't meet with them. He didn't allow them to see by Zoom. So the same with this um, um, this uh, government official from US. They didn't let him meet him. So he is showing to them that if you are my enemy, we will let you meet the lower cadre of um, government official in place now. You will not meet the president. So he's positioning himself as a man in control. A man in control or a man on the run? No, a man in control that you have to work hard before you can meet him. It is said that you are a friend. If you are a friend, he will meet you. If you are not a friend, then you will talk to somebody. He, he doesn't want to meet you because you, you, you are an enemy. What, what even the French official tried to meet him the day before yesterday, he didn't meet with them as, as well. So he is... Um, he is trying to create a barrier between him and those that are enemy. And that is where he should go. So meet the head of the um, uh, chief of staff. That is it. But with me, I am the head of state and I want you to, you, 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 you must... Um, uh, uh, uh you, you you must be our friend before you can meet our president so that is what they have really shown you now there, 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 uh, there, there, there that, is a that. paragraph uh there's a paragraph in uh what's the uh, is that name familiar by the way this uh nolan there's a paragraph in uh what she said that is quite instructive she said uh she said that bamao was well acquaint acquainted with cooperation with the united states through his past involvement in special force with special forces, so uh, this Bamao now is the chief of staff to the uh, new now president. And what you can read into that is that this guy is corruptible. This guy can be influenced because he's somewhat Americanized. So is that a portal of window that she's identified? Her? Well, I, I don't, I don't know, uh, but. Uh what is uh, clear to us is that uh, the military uh, as um, uh, the military of that nation have declared their support uh, to, to this um, current military head of state. So military is fully backing him. And uh, uh, anything can change tomorrow, but as of today, all the military structure in that country are backing this guy. And um, they, 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 they are really picturing to enemies that, look, if you don't want us, we don't want you too. And that's why they don't let them meet the president. Is defense the, the defense around him has to be well fortified. And and um, I, I think they are, they are building a very strong uh, defense around him. And to picture to um, a, a enemy of their country now, they have a on them. Yes. 
uh, maybe it's afraid of um, the treatment of uh, anything in the US. You have to be very careful. The treatment of Abiola now. Abiola treatment. You know, I was thinking <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so uh, this this is the, this, this is the guy in charge of that guy is a dead man walking anyway. Is a dead man walking? Is the man in charge? He has four. Even if that cool holds, that guy is gone because they'll take him down. Hello. Uh, I can hear you. A high level of uh, uh, military structure. So it's not trying to take any, uh, it's, it's not trying to take any chance at all. So, uh, but it, it's, I, I think I like uh, what he's doing by not letting them to see him. So he's picturing to them that look, uh, it, it, it's, it's showing that he is more relevant now uh, because uh, if you, they, they, they all came there to meet him, but uh, it's not been them. So what is the talk? You already put impose sanction on us. You already, um, you know, carry out whatever you want to carry out against my nation. What am I? What am I meeting you for? So go and meet the uh, my junior officers, and um, they can tell you what we stand for. So I think I like that strategy. Uh, that look, we don't give a damn about you guys. It's not necessary to meet with you. Our nation is our nation. We stand by what we believe in, and we will stand up for. We will stand to defend our nation at any time. So, um, the, the the U.S. delegation, I think, um, they, they 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 got that message, and I believe they are disappointed that they couldn't meet him. So, that's the way I see it. Uh, one man. Baba, oh, Jal, right. before you drop, Baba, Jal, listen to uh, uh, take, take this. Maybe you can talk about. Do you know the what is called the uh, military strategic pyramid? What do you say? Military strategic tyranny. No pyramid. Uh, I'm not a pyramid. I'm not a military right. person. I'm not a military person. I don't know. Enigmatic. Okay, it is. It works in international relations too. It's called um, uh, like military strategic pyramid. There's a, it's like there's, it's, it's a process, right? It's a process of negotiation, process of trying to open up and see, you know, where interests align or stuff like that. All these things that you see, are, America is command, not command, command by intent, command by plan, command by directive, backing okay. up. God bless you, Baba. You know, immediately when he did, immediately when he showed his hand by refusing to see this lady, I think within two hours, right? They they withdrew a hundred million dollars, um, a hundred million dollars aid. At a point, they will they will leave him within the cocoon of that Niger, and it will be it will be irrelevant, useless. And Niger Niger people themselves on the street, they will be the one calling for the ouster of those people. So they are, they will stifle him because nobody is is going to throw. I've said it here, one man, and I'm going to repeat it. Nobody is going to throw right. Nobody is going to throw. A, a, a just a one one uh, pellet of a bomb in in Niger Republic. They are not Niger is too small for that. They will find a way out of this and they will rescue Bazoum and they will get the democratic uh, government back in power. But these people, like you said, one man skin uh, <laughs> uh, skin it alive or dead. They know they have no chance of surviving this except if they have to come to terms. At a point, that, 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 that government is not going to hold. It is impossible. The pressure is too much. I, 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 I am just laughing the way you guys are talking. Why do we still have? Why do we still have the Burkina Faso? They, they were not under this level why, of pressure. Uh, what, what do you mean they are not? They, they have already imposed sanction on them too. So let me tell you this. Let, look, America was going to do. Uh, we are going to impose sanction anyway. So what they are trying to do is just see how maybe if that lady at that high level meet with him, they can, you know, uh, try pay, to convince pay him. Off. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, look at the money. We we uh, we can give you this money. You think they don't understand the way uh, diplomatic uh, 
um, uh, um, uh, um, uh, 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 all these diplomatic uh, moves. Uh, you think they don't know how it operates? Uh, they talk. I, I can't look. Let me just quickly correct you. You want to say something? Yeah, I just want to correct you. There were no sanctions. They lifted the sanction on Burkina Faso and Mali way back in the year 2022. So there are no official ECOWAS sanction on Burkina Faso and Mali. Just to correct that. Oh, 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 all right. Bring, bring it to Majan Koko and then we get to Prince Daddy. Okay, so huh, they, they were going to impose or they were going to, you know, stop all this aid to them anyway. And they understood that. So, not, I mean, it's, it's a strategy that I believe will work good for them because they don't want to meet with them. They already tell them, they already told them to leave their land. They already told the United States forces, leave our land. They already told the France, leave our land just as Burkina Faso did, and Mali. So, uh, all sanctions, impose all sanctions on them. They're not going to die. They will go through the hardship. They will survive it. It's a matter of time. I don't know why we want to have headache for them that, oh, they will be strangled, and things will happen to them, this is going to happen to them. North Korea today, the whole world imposed sanctions on North Korea. Still, North Korea is developing technologically to so certain extent that they've been able Niger, to Niger is, uh, is the poorest country in the world. Wait, well, yeah, they will go through the hardship and they will find their way to, to, to get out of it. And um, uh, look, I don't know why we are, are, are basking for, for this war or some of us are, are saying, oh, uh, Nigeria have interest Oh, Nigeria need to go and do this, Nigeria go and do that. When Ghana president was the chairman of ECOWAS, during that time, this Mali situation of Burkina Faso happened. The Mali, the, 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 the Ghana um, head of state or the chairman did not call for... Ma Mali, is not, Ma Mali is not on Ghana's border. Burkina Faso, rather. It's Burkina Faso, I'm trying to say. Burkina Faso. So when the Burkina Faso is, is, is it on Ghana's border? Oh, they share border. They share border. So uh, Ghana president did not call for um, a troop to come and uh, I mean, he did not call for troop to to. Uh, he, he did amass, you know, troop at his borderline against Burkina Faso. Why are we doing that? Why are we threatening our? Our, our neighboring state. Why are we doing it? For what? What are we trying to achieve? It's not sensical. Why are we trying to bully our neighbor? We cannot be a police country in, in Africa trying to bully fellow African country. It, it, is, it, it is insane and it doesn't, it can, it can yield any meaningful result. And I'm, and I'm happy that Majority of the police not are kicking against it. And that is what is going to happen. There's not going to be war. It's going to be resolved diplomatically. And that's the way to go. Whether we like it or not, French can impose sanction. Uh, this um, 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 uh, America can impose sanction on them. I believe at a point, Nigeria, we have to relax their sanction with these people, negotiate with them, give them breathing space, and uh, uh, and, and, and allow them, assist them, cooperate with them to return that country to civilian rule. That, that's my take, one man. Oh, all right, brilliant. So, so what, what's our interest? Is a Janle Koko's question. Give them breathing space. Uh, Prince Daddy, should they get a breathing space? Uh, what have you been looking at in the news today? Prince Daddy, Obalola. Hello, one man. Uh, hello, everyone. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah perfectly. Uh, good to have you. Yeah, you too. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Um, yeah, breathing space for the Nigerians. I rather should choke them. I need to be choked. Yes, uh, yes, <laughs> I agree. Yeah, uh, I mean, I look at this. I mean, uh, the guys I saw wearing the uniforms, they look like um, uh, men that like to sleep on water beds and eat hors d'oeuvres. Um, they, they don't. They don't look like look like people don't want to go to hardship. Um, 
they I don't think that they they, they cut up for this. N not at all. Uh, they are opportunists. It's quite clear uh, with their um, rhetorics. Uh, I don't think um, they have much to offer the the Nigerian people. But of course, I, mean, I was just watching earlier. The, I think Wagner, the Wagner group, maybe making its way to Nigeria. But all that is going to do for them is just suffering and pain. I mean, because they're not to fight war. So if they want uh, want people to die, um, they're going to get that for sure. Uh, Niger is um, it's not strategic to 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 Russia. I mean, unlike Ukraine, um, and um, I'm not sure. I mean, it's, it's population. I mean, they have nothing really. Um, to offer Russia, but of course the U.S. has its uh, military base there for strategic um, strategic purpose. Um, but the lady, you guys, you showed uh, there, there she goes right there on the on the screen, Victoria Newland. I, I like to refer to her as the 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 messenger of death, really, because every, everywhere she goes, um, <laughs> uh, destruction follows, really. Uh, she was there in uh, uh, in Ukraine uh, before uh, Viktor, um, what is it called, is it Poroshenko was um, uh, uh, Yanukovych rather, Viktor Yanukovych was um, Big Daddy, you know, really, you know her resume, God bless you. <laughs> you see, she, she wasn't there by accident, she wasn't there randomly, strategically, right. with yes. a hundred million dollars aid. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, actually, there you go. So she's that. Destruction follows her. Um, she's she's been around for a very long time. This lady, you don't know her. She kind of works. She's an undersecretary right now, but she's working in the State Department. I mean, everywhere she's been. Okay, so she understands Africa. Um, um, about last year or so, she was in Nigeria also, and this lady, um, Mokwe, um, interviewed her. <laughs> She gave her a low ball question, but she's uh, she's very dangerous, smart, dangerous. She knows what she does. She understands Africa and and uh, uh, Europe, of course, the south of the the Eastern European bloc. So that's Victoria Newland for you. Um, what are this what are these people? What do they really want? Um, the Nigerians I'm talking about. I, I, I don't know. Prisoner, let me let me interrupt you. You just said something about this lady. Is anywhere she goes, and after. <laughs> The aftermath is usually destruction, right? Yes, sir. That yes, so yes. Give me an example of such one such a destruction after he left, after she left, rather. Well, she was the mastermind, if you ask me, when it came to the overthrow of uh, Viktor Yanukovych. Absolutely, because the guy that was yeah before um um Vladimir Zelensky came about. Uh, we we're talking about it yesterday. It was pretty much a, a coup, of course, civilian coup, I would say. But nonetheless, uh, Yanukovych was more aligned with the Russians, with, with Vladimir Putin, right? And they, did, they didn't like it. And I was saying yesterday also, Ukraine is strategic to, to Russia, of course, and the U.S. A lot of shady deals goes on in, in Ukraine. It's, it's quite corrupt. And the American politicians... They found a, a, a foothold in there uh, to operate. They do so much stuff about Ukraine. Uh, and this is coming from mostly American intellectuals. They have documented a lot of things like Noam Chomsky and, um, and some other ones. So um, that's one example. Uh, in Benghazi, by the way, in Libya, <laughs> she was there. If you know, you, you guys never heard her name. Victoria Nuland was there. How, how, was she, how was she there? How? What, what role? In what capacity? Well, she's and now she now she's the undersecretary. Back then, I mean, she she's the coordinator. Whatever happens, is it with the American embassy? Just like um, uh, is it Colata? Uh, ben just said right now, a hundred million dollars withdrawn from the jail, just like that. She's the one that pulls the plug. She she's, she she approves everything. So you may not see a handiwork on the ground, but such transactions, she makes the calls. I mean, imagine a hundred million dollars aid gone from Niger overnight. That's a lot of money. Uh, that's a lot of money. So, um, there's one thing you, you uh, should tell. There's another thing that uh, you know she, uh, 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 instructively now, has given signal to the U.S. that they have caught up, like 
so to say, an ally now that they can work on and they can work with probably the, the number two to that guy or the chief of staff. So this, when you, when you, well, let, don't let, but people should actually. Yeah, they'll be announcing the death of that guy before the end of the week. <laughs> <laughs> the mic, the mic. <laughs> so look, uh, when when you when this kind of lady, right? They are for what you call the covert oper oper operators and covert operation. So what he has done basically is to deliver American gesture to Niger to the guy, which he missed. But he signaled to to the guy and to the world that well, they have an ally who works closely with him. What do you think America would do? The, all they need is just a loophole, and then within two hours of that visit, where she where he he, he failed to Be, because uh, because when she's saying uh, let me bring up the article again when when she's saying that um uh where's that paragraph so when she's saying that um she said that uh, Bamoa was well acquainted with cooperation with the United States through his past involvement in special with special forces. So that is to tell you that they have a file on him. Of course they do. I mean, <laughs> I, I, that's why, you know, so far again, I, I've not really settled on why this coup happened and will give the approval. The U.S. does, does not have a large uh, military base in, U, in Niger and they're sleeping on, on duty. Uh, all they do there is collect intelligence on Niger and all the other countries, including Nigeria, Tinubu, Obi, name, name every one of them. Um, so... And these guys are not sophisticated anyways. Uh, what does it matter if they, if they declare no-fly zone over the airspace? Do they have any weapons to, to stop any uh, uh, encroachments? They don't have anything. These guys are jokers. I mean, we, we're just playing, you know, again, I'm not for war, but I, I thought this guy should have been taken out like the first one or two days after they announced the coup. Uh, now do, it's kind of do, dry. You that is, do you think that is why he's hiding away? He knows full well that... Um... Yeah, he's a mad man. Do you think that's why he's hiding away? And that could be a reason. That, that could be an absolute reason why he's hiding away. Um, uh, because again, well, that's a good example. And this guy, they they soft. I can look at them. They they soft. They all about getting paid all the money. Of course, they're gonna use that the rhetoric and the propaganda about you know against colonialism and all this other stuff. It means nothing. Um, yeah, it means nothing. This guy is if the kitchen gets hot. These guys run away. They'll be gone in like a few minutes. They'll be out of Niger, gone elsewhere. They're not going to stand for war. They're not going to. They, they, they don't have it in them. They, I look at them. They don't have it in them. They don't have the spirit. They're not like true freedom fighters. They are not. They, they, they're not like the standard. Uh, the, the, there, there, there's no real ideological <laughs> underpinning of this coup. It is essentially a money and power grab. That's all and, it is. And the only idea, the ideological, um, um, connection I would say is that which I kind of learned today that Bazoom is actually from the, the minority group connected to the Fulani and this other people perhaps the, the, the larger percentage of Nigerians are not they, they're more like I don't know other groups so they are 53% houses okay good so Bazoom is like almost a, a, an anomaly to be the head so that's a motivation for them to to get rid of them they, they can't have a flying person ru ruling over them so that's the only thing i see why they want to get rid of them actually which which kind of makes sense you know they don't want the minority person imposed on them so that that's the the, the, the gripe uh right now um but um but it just happens that a lot of interests are at play um in, in that country even though as poor as it is you know the u.s has interest the, the, of course the the french they have interest in it um so th that's what we're seeing right now um and uh and of course uh Tinubu also wants to wants to maintain the the you know democracy in africa we, we all know that if anything we know that's that's Tinubu's um uh, we call it um ideology when it comes to to, to politics and um uh, we, we talk about people talk about well, I come Mali and Burkina Faso. Uh, uh, we do have concern about those two nations, but you know you have to pick your battles. Um, but the Niger to Nigeria is kind of strategic in a, in a lot of ways. I mean, I just looking at the landmass, looking at the map, it covers the entire pretty much uh, uh, the northern part of Nigeria from uh, from state to state. 
So, uh, meaning, what does that mean? Nigeria is very, they ha has a loose border control anyway. It's very porous. And, and someone was saying yesterday also, you know, all this Boko Haram people and all this, you know, Akata writers and all these people, they, they're from the Nigerians. They're not even Nigerians. So look at how lax uh, the porous the border is. Um, uh, so it's, it's so, you know, so Tinubu being concerned is not just to, hey, invade another country, African country and take him out. It's to try to, to maintain and solidify Nigerians' territorial integrity. And there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, we cannot be passive in today's world. We cannot be passive. Um, well, what, 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 what did you make, uh, Prince, of um, of uh, uh, Dati Baba uh, Ahmed, uh, his older brother, I think Yusuf Baba Ahmed, uh, what did you make of his ethnic saber rattling on a rice TV, uh, telling us that um, the population of... Um, of Niger Republic, 53% Hausa, uh, Fulani, and Kanuris, uh, uh, that's the population. And essentially, it, it, it was somewhat uh, ethnicizing the narrative, which uh, Abati tried to pull him, pull him back from. Uh, but uh, what did you think he was trying to do there? Well, what, are you sure that that's Baba Ahmed, or are you talking about the other guy? Um, uh -huh. No, that's Baba Ahmed. No, 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 that's yeah. not. So he's, he's no. sounding like he's that's, answerable more to Baba Ahmed. Ahmed. That's not Papa, man. No, no, no. This guy is uh, the former NHI National Health Insurance King. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, that was that was oh, there. sorry. I apologize. So he's issues with Buhari government for a long time. You see, you see so what my, what my, so now you want to bring No, no, no. I thought it was Papa <laughs> Meto, that brother. It still looks like a Mauritanian anyway. What, so. what? <laughs> <laughs> You and I, we are from the same country as this guy. You, you know, we have more in common with a China man, probably. He's a Fulani man now. He's he a Fulani. He doesn't look Fulani. So he's, he's sounding like he's answerable more to Ecowas than to Nigeria. I, I think there's an Arabian mix there. <laughs> what about, I don't know about that. So that's what Baba, Baba made. Oh, right. Yeah. Apologies. Yeah. Just a second, there, uh, Big Daddy. This this guy, uh, this you know, he's a he's an expert. He is he is a technocrat, very smart. He was. He's a medical just, doctor, isn't he? Is he not? Yeah, just like Bosun, that that Bosun to Jani, right? He had issues with a lot of people, and they brought him into government, and they humiliated him out of government. <laughs> Did he yeah. not used to be the PA to Saraki? No, he he was he was brought in as a as a technocrat, quote unquote, to yes. to revamp and to reform the uh, NHIIs more like uh, the yes. uh, insurance system, insurance medical system in America. He did everything within his power. He was on the right track, but they sabotaged his effort every turn of the way, and they never allowed him because he was Buari gave him the the latitude to have. Uh, to directly report to him because he wanted to correct and then to basically reform that uh, health uh, health insurance scheme in Nigeria, but they sub they sub they sabotaged him and they never gave him any uh, that uh, you know direct reporting uh, you know link to Buhari until they until they booted him out for one corruption or the other, and after extensive. Uh, uh, in investigation, mm -hmm. they found out it was nothing. So mm -hmm. it's just one of those uh, things. So Boston Tijani should be careful, like I said earlier. Uh, uh, all right, back to you, Prince. Oh uh, yeah, um, yeah. I didn't watch the the, the interview with, uh, with that man, um, but just like like I said earlier. So I think, um, yeah, the, the Northerners, of course, and um, I guess the, the military. Um, People in Niger that took over, they are um, this ethnic uh, component to to what they are doing. Uh, so that'd be the only ideological um, uh, reason why I would say they 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 had this uh, uh, that the military junta is is in place at this point in time. Yeah. Um, uh, but, uh, uh, have, have you been following the uh, the screening and uh, the somewhat uh, rough 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 times that um. El Dufai and um and more more to it uh uh Cafe I, I saw a brief few seconds video about um um Cafe I am um, it just it was non responsive. It was just looking at looking at the the senators talking, maybe they were bashing him or, or whatever, but it didn't seem to respond. I didn't see the, the entire um session of what they did to him. 
Um, but Festus Kiamo, you know, I mean, is a is a team player. Uh, if they can allow this uh, Tijani guy go through, why not on um, Festus Kiamo? Um, that's what I would say. I, I, think um, they confirmed, I think they confirmed him subsequently after they made him apologize. It looks as though everybody goes to apologize there. But El Rufai will never apologize, though. That's for sure. What is there to apologize for in, in, in case of El Rufai? I mean, he speaks his mind. You may disagree with him. Um, I, you know, and looking at him, I heard something well, like a week or two ago. Uh, El Rufai is uh, an equal opportunity offender, really. He offends Christians. And um, Muslims alike, uh, it's not the sheikhs in the north that want to uh, get rid of him or don't want him confirmed. So uh, Erufai, you know, he, he speaks, he speaks his mind. Um, as for, um, but but again, um, at this point in time, we, we have to look past all this, you know, sentimental reasons why he should not be nominated or, or whatever um, um, issues people may have with him. I think is is a fine, uh, smart man. I think is is an asset to Nigeria. He has a lot to offer. So um, let's move on with him. I think so. With Don Festus Kiamo, you know, is a feisty guy. <laughs> he doesn't back down really. So uh, we, we, let's get a mix a mix of everything. Uh, as long as they can deliver, that that's all that matters. Uh, just like you know, um, we can also. Uh, that's what I would say. Oh, all right, brilliant, excellent. It's still a few things more to run through. Oh, yeah. Before you proceed, just uh, to correct something for the purpose of misinformation on your platform. So the point is, those three, uh, Okotete, Abdudat, Abdullai guy, and Erufai, they are, not having, they are not having issues with the Senate any longer. They are having issues with the security uh, agencies, the DSS and those security agencies who are supposed to clear them. They've not been cleared. So that's just to get the point straight. Oh, 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 yes. I, I think I actually have that as uh, one of the headlines. It says, uh, Senate fails to confirm El Rufai Abubakar Danladi is Stella Okotete waiting security report and, and checks. So the security report and checks, they have no meaning uh, because, of course, we saw um, uh, when, when Bosso can scale through after all of the obedient uh, things. It says, uh, the Senate has failed to confirm the nomination of the immediate past governor of our Kaduna State and ministerial nominee for Kaduna State, Madame Nessu Erufai, uh, after its seven days of screening of the forty of the forty nine ministerial nominees sent in for screening by President Tinubu. The Senate did not also confirm the appointment of former Deputy Governor of Taraba State and ministerial nominee for the state, Senator Abubakar Danladi, was not uh, confirmed. Also not confirmed, uh, uh, Stella Okotete. According to the President of the Senate, Senator Goswila Lapabio, the Senate did not clear because the security reports must be cleared. Uh, so, 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 yeah, they are just awaiting. Uh, I, I suppose that's just a formality, isn't it? But, uh, but there it is. Uh, let, let, let's hear from Rational Mind. Rational Mind, you're up next. Same question, uh, your response. What are you looking at in the news today? Rational Mind. Yeah, one on. As I was, <laughs> I was before you. Rational mind. I beg, apologize. One more, I sent you something. You can uh, share it with the platform. They can read oh, all right. the, the reasons for those three guys. All right. Well, yes. a lot of things. Um, it's just um, this whole thing with uh, the war in uh, the possible um, invasion of uh, of Niger. I've had some people here. Uh, they've said. I think it's their own point of view they just expressed. Uh, it's just sometimes, you know, my people say, when you point a finger at other people, uh, look at the rest, it's also pointing at you. Uh, I've, I've often said it, it's just the sheer um, hypocrisy that some other people are accused of people of being. Uh, they are also you know, even guilty you more than the other people that they are accusing. The last time I checked, um, we already hear one man. Uh, when somebody said, we're giving you seven days ultimatum, and after that, uh, all, of, all options are on the table, which is military invasion and all of that. And we start seeing that, uh, they start calling the security meeting of, um, of the chief of defense staffs of different um, West African nation after that. In fact, that same, that same day, they had to call the defense ministers of different uh, defense um, uh, chief of staffs of defense, uh, the chief of defense 
of each um, ECOWAS uh, nation. So what does that tell you? This is not uh, this is not something that the obedient made up or the people you, people that you're, yeah, you're accusing of as being obedient uh, they're making up. We heard him say it. That's what he said. Tunubu said it. I said, why are you why are you making it sound like it's obedient and make it like he's going to invade uh, he's going to invade uh, Niger he's not going to invade Niger. Tunubu said it himself. So you see, when, when we want to criticize people, let's just criticize people based on whatever is factual. Not just trying to invent things and make it spin it like as if uh, I mean. We heard this guy said he's invading. There are all many options on the table. Seven days of the ultimatum. After that, we're going to see what's going to happen. We're going to invade. And then we start seeing deployment of a, uh, what's it called? Uh, did did uh, Tinubu say that? Or was that read out no, in the no. communique from, uh, I'm asking, did he say that? Who read the communique? Who read, out? Who read the communique? I, I'm not sure. Was it not a, a functionary of, uh, of, of ECOWAS? But then, one man, one man. Let's not, let's not start spinning things like this. Tinubu but Tinubu did not utter those words, though. That, that's just it, yeah. He did not what? He did not utter those words. What word did he not utter, my own man? That uh, he was giving them a seven-day ultimatum. Oh. It was a functionary of ECOWAS that said uh, a closed-door meeting was her, uh, and these were the resolutions, and then she read it out. Uh -huh. so, one man. What was it? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on please. As far as you know, you know, in the matter. Yeah. Um, what did he read? What was those one of those things that he read? What was it? What was it all about? Can you can you can you dig up that video and let us see him? Let us hear him read that communique after the. Well, well, what do you mean him? Uh, you you mean uh, okay? Tinubu, Tinubu, um, Tinubu. Rational mind. Yeah. Can you hear me? Let let uh, yeah. So I think Tinubu, as the chairman of ECOWAS convey the meeting in Abuja with other other state to um, uh, you know um, communicate the position of ECOWAS to the world and while he was directing the meeting, he called on the maybe the director general of ECOWAS or some, something. He directed that one to read the communique of what they have agreed upon. That one read it. But the fact of the matter is that as the president, he with other head of state endorse that communicate. So he did not read it. They directed their director general or what is the name? Maybe the I don't know what title that guy. A, a functionary Tinubu, of the yeah, a functionary. Yeah. So Tinumbu instructed him to read the communicate that all the head of state have agreed to. So Shinobu is part of that decision. That is the truth. We cannot lie. No, but no, yes, but it was an ECOWAS decision. Is the is the thing. It oh, wasn't no, a no, Tinubu's no, no, decision. No, yeah. But what? No, no, no. Oh, oh, hold on, uh, rational mind. Do you hold views to the contrary that it's not an ECOWAS decision but a Tinubu decision? Okay. Thank you very much. That's a good question. Right. I, I gotta go. Are you done with talking? Yeah, let me make this point, then you can talk. So, Tinubu is part of the decision, and what makes it look so bad for him is that he is the president of ECOWAS at the moment. He's the one driving the ship. He's the one driving the affair. He is the face of ECOWAS at the moment. So, we cannot separate him from that decision. We cannot just separate him from that community and what, where ECOWAS stand today. We cannot separate uh, Tinubu. So people should not be dribbling, twisting. Can, can, we, can, can we separate and, the, the, and, the, the president? Oh, hold on, hold on. Can we, yeah. can we separate the president of Ghana from that decision? No, you cannot separate him either. But the. Oh, the all right. The, which, the, which of the. the oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Which of the presidents within the ECOWAS, that ECOWAS meeting, can we separate from the decision? 
we cannot separate any one of them. But Tinubu, so, so it's a joint, it's a joint but decision. Then is what it's you're saying. A joint decision. You are right. But Tinubu, right. the face of the organization now. That is why people are talking more of him as the president of ECOWAS, who is leading that economic. Um, 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 uh, what do you call that? Uh, yeah, like, don't go too far. Let me just help you. Let me help you out. Oh, oh, all, you. Right. Oh, oh, all right. So, so pick it up from there. Um, yeah, rational so, mind. Can, yeah. can you separate the president of Ghana from the decision? Yeah, carry on. Oh, you won't do that with me, please. You won't do that with me. But I will answer your question, please. This uh, leading, you won't lead me. But I will tell you the answer. Yes, it's a joint statement by the ECOWAS. Uh, like I said in this one, your platform and other platforms, that it is not a unilateral. A decision by Tinubu. Tinubu, you say, oh, all of you, oh, yeah, we're, going to, we're going to invade uh, Niger. I'm sure they did not say that. They must have deliberated, they must have talked about it, and uh, maybe they all voted and the majority carried the vote among them. And they said, okay, yeah, okay, that's what we're going to do. We're going to give them several days. And then after that, if they don't respond, we're going to use military option. That is it. So it's a, it's a ECOWAS uh, decision. But this is where I'm saying that, this is where the angle I'm going to, saying that. It is also part of his own decision because after that we saw deployment of troops to the border I mean, even before then we saw the chief of defense staffs of each of these nations of the, who were there who were present who passed that uh, unanimous vote uh, that um, they should use that they should put that option on the table we saw the chief of defense in fact i see saw it was this a few days ago they all had meeting this musa guy general musa was there he himself was part of the, uh, the, the chief of the defense staff of I mean chief of defense staff of, of this uh, uh, this uh, ECOWAS nation. That is on one side, and then he wrote to the Senate, where you read here one man, and we all deliberated it. Yeah, maybe I wasn't here for the past two days, but I know I must have heard it on your platform that they said that we are denying you. You will not go. You're not going to invade. Um, uh, you're going to invade. Uh, what's it called? Uh, we're not going to send troops into. Uh, what's it called into Niger, and we saw all the hula la balu that kid that followed after that. When uh, the, the senators from the north and they were all saying, No, we're not allowed this. But man, this is not the obedient making. That's why that's not just my point. We saw this news just to say, Everywhere we saw this news, and we ran with it because we're not just making, we're not, we're not just conjuring news out of a thin air. It's what we see in the news that we talk about and being an opposition to the APC. Who we'll talk only talking about this? But when people try to shut us down or try to make it look as if it's our figment of our own imagination, or we are, we are just cooking up news from the thin air, that's why I don't like. We need to stop this. We need to stop this dribbling and trying to like spin things and make it look like. So that but but to, 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 Tinubu did not call for military deployment. No, one man, one man, one man. I said his actions. Did you hear what I said? No, no, no. I mean, I mean, his letter to the Senate. It wasn't. It wasn't. Yeah. Oh, uh, well, man, I don't know if we saw the content of that, of that or if it was ever read. I don't know what uh, this guy read, because I have not been following the news space much. But what I saw on the news was that the on the floor of the Senate, they debated it. The senators from the North said, no, we're not going to allow this. You're not going to invade them. You're not going to do this. I was even like the Professor Yusuf or Yusuf Yosmi, all of them, they must have. So is he, is he, also, a, is he also an obedient? Is uh, what's his name? The other uh, senators, even uh, some uh, APC senators from from the north, are they also are they also obedient? So come on, they said it. Let me give you the let me give you this uh, eight point item. So this is resolution of the Senate in closed door session upon consideration of President Bolatinobo's request uh, in respect to the political situation in Niger Republic. So I won't give you the preambles. I'll just give you the bullet points. Number one, condemn in totality the military coup that took place recently in Niger Republic. Number two, commend President Tinubu and the authority of uh, authority of heads of state uh, and government of ECOWAS for their prompt response and the positions taken on the unfortunate development in Niger. Number three, recognize the fact that President Tinubu, by virtue of his correspondence, now listen to this. So. Uh, recognize, this is number three, and I'll forward it to you as well if you want it, uh, recognize that, uh, rec recognize the fact that President Tinubu, by virtue of his correspondence, had not asked for the approval of the parliament or senate to go to war, ha as has been erroneously suggested in some quarters. Rather, President Tinubu had expressed a desire 
to respectfully solicit the support of the National Assembly in support of the successful implementation of ECOWAS resolutions as outlined in the said communication. So it goes on and on, but that's the salient uh, bit. Woman, woman, you see, this whole thing, I mean, okay, let me just go this way. <laughs> what you just read to us is yeah. the position reached by the Senate, right? What is the content of that letter that was sent to him that led them, that elicited all of this, all this, um, all this uh, uh, Bible, uh, Bible that he wrote that you, that you, I mean, you're just reading to us? And then in, in, in one of the paragraphs there, they said they were encouraging to use diplomatic whatever. But then there was a, a you, you same one man here, I think you were having one back and forth uh, uh, argument with Ajali Koko some days ago, where you read one of, one of, one of those, um, one of those um, things there that suggested that there was going to be an invasion, but they would say, no, don't do that. We will not support you invading it. So what are we talking about? What man, you see, you see, the point I'm trying to make here is this. I, I ever want to spin this thing and dice it or whatever. The point is this. APC uh, House, right, House right members who are not obedient, they were against invasion. They were saying it because they could deduce this from the statement that ECHO, ECHO has put out and the possible, uh, I mean, the, uh, the whole, um, the whole uh, build up after that, which is the chief of defense staff of each nation meeting, and then the deployment of, um, of, uh, of, 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 uh, of military personnel to the border, these are all just signed up. There's something, there's something going on in the air. So we also saw this thing, the same way the APC senators and rep members were saying it, and other people who voted for him in the North. Mind you, oh man, there were so many APC people that voted for Chinubu in the North who were also saying that Chinubu should not go on this war. Are they, are, are they, are they, but my point is this, are they also obedient? Come on, come on. Let us not vilify people because they just see things opposite uh, indifferently from you, and then you, make, you have to make them as if they are like just uh, a mortal enemy for you because they don't just see anything with you and then they criticize your man or whatever. That's my point, one man. And that's, let's just put that aside. So my point is this, that I've said it here, and I don't go I said it, that military invasion is not the way to go. Because like somebody was saying, I had in one of the news today, I never thought about that. And that was what the, uh, the, uh, the US, uh, in all the three um, wars or invasion that America did, not even three, even many in the past, but let us talk about the recent ones, the one in Iraq, the one in Afghanistan, and the one in Libya. There was no, there was no, uh, there was no exit strategy. They never had anyone extra exit strategy. Okay, if we put down Saddam, or if we put down uh, Gaddafi, if we, what is the ex exit strategy? They never did. And then look at what, how it turned out for them. And look at who are paying the price. The people of those nations are paying the price. So do you want to go do something the same? Because you feel that they are a smaller nation, we can just invade them, and then we think we just, just you stop everything there and then you stop your power and give it back to Basun. No, you have to wear everything. Already he is ha already is having, I, I won't call them traitors, but let me use the word traitors among even Nigerians. Who are the people who are who say like Yusuf, you you had Yusuf and some other people say, oh, they are our brothers. They, they have the same uh, religious affinity with them and the same cultural affinity with them. And look, that alone in itself is to tell you that you don't have loyalty from your own people. In the event so, of- uh, um, 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 uh, Rational mind. Mm. Well, what, what you are trying to say now is that in the north, there's going to be sabotage. Sabo that's what I'm saying. Sabotage. That's we, what I'm saying. Sabotage all the effort. That's what I'm looking for. Sabotage. 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 I mean, it happened to Jonathan now. We saw that's it. The Boko Boko Haram. Even Jonathan said it, that uh, Boko Haram are in, in his government. And we, we had what the um, uh, Commander Adewumi even said too, that Boko Haram are in, in, uh, in, in, in Aso Rock. Joko Boko Adam sympathizer as in Aso Rock with Buhari, working with Buhari. Yeah, so, Ande, who said it openly so, on TV. So you see, with, with these kind of things he's facing, I mean, if, if I, I don't know if you heard, if you heard somebody, so maybe the same Yusuf, Professor Yusuf, or some other person says, Oh, are they being is this uh it is uh Yoruba people now that have shared brother with uh, with uh, Niger? Will he, will he go and do what he's doing? Just imagine, don't look at that, just listen to that comment by a very prominent person from the north. Saying that, and which it was, it was, it wasn't a prominent person from the oh, north. Uh, one man, one man. He's prominent. If you don't know, he's prominent. He's a prominent person. Go on, go on. Look at the interview. Uh, no, no, hold on, oh, hold on. Watch this. Man, this is Comrade Mohammed Ali Ringa. I want to say this very means to congratulate members of the Senate for denouncing the instruction needed by His Excellency, Mr. President and Commander in Chief of the Nigerian Armed Forces, seeking for 
Nigerian armed forces to invade Niger Republic. Nigeria and Niger, we are together. You, Mr. President, Alajibola Ahmed Tinubu, able to say you share borders with Niger, the Yorubas, no western part of Nigeria, Lagos, Ondo, Ekiti, Oyo, Ocean, if they share the borders with the Niger Republic, can you say? So it was okay. just a random malam. Hold on, hold on. Yeah. It, it, it maybe says nobody because I'm, I've, I've been mixing people because I've heard so many northerners talk. I've been conflicting, I mean, confusing some statement made by some people to some other person. Just as you just did a while ago, saying that that year, Baba was not so. Let me be like you, but like at least you, you prove my point that the point I'm making is that they already are saying that even though if you are to be in Yoruba, people that bothers, um, if, fine, it's a, it's a nobody, yeah, it's a nobody. I agree with you, one man, but it's a northerner. But he's saying that, which I, I'm sure is expressing the same sentiment of other northerners in Nigeria, saying that if we're to be the Yoruba that are bordering Niger, and we know like we have a, a Yoruba state bordering. Uh, oh, shut up, uh, Everybody is somebody. Nobody say nobody. Hold on, hold on. I'm just going by, going by what the woman is saying. Uh, I, can, I, I get you. you know, give woman, like, woman like to give somebody to just using what? I, I will, I'll take that. That's my, that's my own word. Yeah, so my point is this. Just like uh, we brought up, uh, we brought up with uh, Niger, um, with the uh, Benin Republic, and we have our uh, Yoruba people in Benin who are also Adashe people, Sakete, uh, Kobe, and all those areas. And I imagine that we go in there and want to go and fight war. Who will say no? These are our brothers. We cannot fight them. Yeah, I, I agree. That's 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 the that sentiment. Is so the point I'm trying to make here is this: on one platform that I was talking about it, we need to understand there's 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 a pattern to war, to warfare we've seen since pre 2011 we've seen the kind of warfare we fought with that has been fought uh may not be the kind of warfare we've seen for post post uh, 2011. the post 2011 kind of warfare we've seen is more of um uh it's more of um, an ideological uh attached to religion and when there's religion into something <laughs> one man why, why is it that we've not been able to defeat uh, uh Boko Haram? we saw how Burutai said it that we cannot defeat Boko Haram because not just even the religious aspect to it, because some people connected to them, like they feel like they are our brothers. We had Pantami, like of Pantami, who was uh, NCC, uh, whatever, saying that they are our brothers in, in something. So the point is this: they feel that these guys from Niger are not just only their culturally brothers, but also religiously they are they are, they are attached to them. And so, if religion comes into it, it's another thing that it needs to consider. Is it why I'm doing all this analysis? So whoever is listening, maybe Tinubu people are listening. Yeah, there is even family ties. Um, um, I, that's what I'm saying. Family, cultural family, whatever. Family, so, blood, related, broad, related, related. That sentiment alone, it, it will defeat that war because these people will sabotage it. So the point is this: the best, the best bet. Listen, I'm not, I'm not for Tinubu invading or whatever people say. Even though he's going to invade or he's not going to invade, I'm not for it. My kind of person who supported. The other person to be the president instead of him is that I will give him my own advice. That I will do my own analysis just based on what I've seen. That do not invade. It's not because I feel you want to invade because I'm going by your body language and what you've said, your pronouncement and the actions that have followed, and not just me. Even your member of your own party also. They are saying they are warning you that do not do that. So which is not obedient thing made up by obedient people. It's what we see and we're, that's what we're jumping on and we're talking as an opposition. So my point is this that. He will find saboteurs in that war. As long as the Northerners have taken sides in this, saying that no, we cannot invade our people from the from the or their brothers, so and not just even the religious, I mean, not just the ethnic angle to it or the family attachment to it, but the religious aspect to it. And you being in a southerner, even though you are a Muslim, but they will still see you as a Kafirini, Kafirini. You know, they will still look as if you just see another Kafiri that is pretending to be a Muslim. So my point is this one man: do not go there, strangulate them. If you can through whatever uh economic economic uh, whatever but do, I, do you think do you think the war will take place uh because it looks as though the, the, it has lost momentum somewhat well well i, I can't put anything beyond anything uh, it can still uh, well you know he will always do whatever he wants to do we, everybody can shout he's the president so he will just want to show himself that i'm a man of my word maybe that's i, I fear him i want to, to carry out that war but i'll i'll, I'll just i would i would employ him not to do that not because i uh, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't agree with him in anything. But in this very one, because of the implication, the fallout from this, 
it will not end well. All these people that are pushing you, gra 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 now, you, they will they will back off. They will back off. No, they will back out at some point because you will be because you have economic problem in your country. And then let me bring another angle to this discussion again because you talk about some people on some platform will argue said no, you cannot even do this war because economically you're not doing well. It's going to be like what we saw in the former Soviet Republic. They were militarily strong, but economically they were not strong. Look at how they collapsed. But economically, we're not doing well. Even security-wise, we're not doing well in our own country. Why don't you fix your own house? Let your country become prosperous economically. Be very. Look, we're talking about UAE today. We're talking about uh, Qatar. We're talking about those big, uh, those Middle East countries. Why are they like they are? They are like a force to be reckoned with. If US wants to do anything right now. You just have to be on the same table with these UAE countries and uh, the Qatar because they feel these guys are economically, they are vibrant and they, they, they've been able to bring in technology to their countries. And now they are kind of like superpower. I mean, they're kind of like power of their own. Can, why can't we replicate the same thing? Create an, a kind of like a, an economic prosperity in that country whereby we are, our, our buying power is so strong that we can even influence other scoundered countries within West Africa and beyond without even having to even lift a gun. So my point is this, one man. You see, we we will just leave um, uh, we leave we leave uh, mosquito be chasing cockroach. Or I don't know how to say it. The point is that Tinubu needs to face his own problem. His problem is Nigeria that he said is going to fix that he, he promised the electorate that he's going to fix. If he if he gets wins the case in court, let him even right now even before he wins the case, let him fix it because even if he have to declare it wrong. Whatever he does now might probably propel him to winning the election again. So uh, what well, we're going to say again, uh, win the election eventually. I don't believe he ever won the election. <laughs> so he's going to win the election. So the point is this, except when he was rigged, like the way he's always rigged. So whatever. So my point is this, that he should fix his own problem. Create your economic prosperity in your country. Let your country be very, very sound economically. That is what will translate into your military and your foreign, uh, foreign policy uh, diplomacy that we use. In excess, I mean, in, in, in just pulling that weight in international community. But when we are not strong economically, we'll be subservient to all these countries and they'll be manipulating us. So my point is this, woman, we don't have what it takes right now. Not as if we don't have militarily, we don't, might not have it. But the after effect, do we have exit strategy? How about if you go, if you go in there, you remove the, you take out the bazoom. How about these people start coming in and other, other, other neighboring countries like Burkina Faso? And Mali, they started sending the Tuaregs into them. Are you going to be going there to be to be to be to be, uh, to, be to be protecting them, to be protecting Bazuma and his people? So right now they are not threats to Nigeria. I understand the concern that uh, Tinubu might have because of this sweeping military, whatever that is going on in the Sahel. He's afraid maybe they might want to maybe they might want to instigate Nigerian military to overthrow him or whatever. I understand that. Hey, but, Russia, my quick question for mind. For your people, if your people see that you're doing right. You've made their life better. I tell you, even though if the military overthrows him, everybody will everybody, everybody will protest. That uh, that's not my, uh, uh, take a question from Prince Daddy. Go on, please. Yeah. Uh, so um, I, I heard your submission about the, the family ties of the Northerners to the Nigerians. So, but the, but we know in the north, the Fulanis they, they tend to occupy uh, um, powerful positions. And the person that was ousted uh, in Niger is of Fulani um, extraction, oh. if you want to put it that way. Arab, as an Arab. Arab. A manager Arab. Well, they call him Fulani. Well, Arab, Fulani, whatever. Probably an Arab. Shua, like more of just few Arabs. Go on. Okay, so, yeah, even though, the, um, so do you think um, if the Fulanis in the north support Chinabu to go into, into Niger, uh, would that still be a big problem for him in the north? I just said to you, um, Prince Daddy, that already you have sentiments uh, within your country. Let, 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 me, let me give you an example of George Bush. You know, the sentiment in the United States was initially like, okay, yeah, go, go and invade uh, Iraq, all of that. But when you, when the United States uh, people find out that there were more to that, that thing, what was the sentiment that they have back home here? People were like, no, just as the same thing with uh, the Vietnam War. And look at how the Vietnam War they turned out for. Uh, what was that uh, president that that then? So Nixon. the problem is, is that what? Nixon. Nick, I think Nixon. Yeah, Nixon. I think Nixon. It was Nixon. So the point is this: that you must have an exit strategy. You can't just go invade a place and say you want to. Uh, you want to. But after you do that, 
we, we, I mean, it seems like nobody has learned a lesson because if they did that many years back and they still replay, replicated that in, the, in, the, in what happened in, um, uh, what's it called, in Iraq when they removed Saddam Hussein and what happened in Afghanistan and what happened in, uh, what's it called, uh, Libya. And we saw that it's the same for the same false, the false step, I mean, the same error they committed in the past, you've not learned. So what tells you a smaller, a smaller regional power that is even struggling? As you, are you going to ex exit, knowing how fragile that area is, that there's a lot of, a lot of um, criminality going there, a, little, a lot of, um, not even their neighbors upstairs, I mean, up north, the, the Libyans and the Algerians, you know, you're dealing, dealing with the Salafists and, and the, all those, all those uh, Akeda in the, and, and uh, Akeda in, the, in, this, uh, in, the, in the Sahel there, in the desert there. So what's going to be the fallout from there? So these guys, you know, they're not trying to run. We know they overthrew a democratically government, and they justify. I mean, this is you. Um, as far I just remember this point now. This is was you, uh, Prince Daddy. You were, I mean, you were you were praising this woman to high heavens. Oh, whenever it goes, it's after him. There's always the mayhem left after. But this is the same you. If truly he was an accessory to the deposition, you know, you know, you know what's the name of that? A former uh, Ukrainian um, president that was removed that ran to Russia. If he were, if she was instrumental, she was an accessory to it. Why can't what stops the Nigerians from doing their own? If the United States were part of the political coup or the civilian coup that led to uh, what's the name of that former Ukrainian um, um, president that left that ran away to Russia when his people they, they started insurrection? I mean, they started a protest and everything. What well, I mean, what difference does that make with this? There was no. This was bloodless. It, there was no bloodletting in the, this school that would happen. It was just a palace school. But that one, that of uh, one of this guy, there were a lot of beating, a lot of people were beating, and even not even some people even died you know, during the whole thing. These people, people that were pro-Russians for what's his name. Uh, that was what led to these breakaway republics within uh, Ukraine. You see, so dude, we need to look at historical context when we're talking about things like this. Tinubu, I mean, you call him master strategist. I don't even see what strategist he has. Even though. The three, four, the three, the three blunders he has ever made, I've ever seen, is making me feel like I'm always forgetting here. Like, imagine what is the next thing this guy is not going to do. The first thing, which I'm, I'm for, removal of subsidy. But the way Amana did it, maybe the way he said it, was not what triggers the whole thing. Look at the whole economic spiral now going on in that country, how people are suffering as a result of that. I'm not saying that you should not remove West subsidy, but maybe you could have looked for a better way to have done that. This is the same man that was gaffing during the election, and we come here, we talk about the people who say, no, there's nothing to it. You people are just making it up. We saw many things he said that it was like, <laughs> it makes people like, <laughs> wonder that this guy, is this the guy that's going to be- oh, like One man, is other people going to come in? Okay, you can come hey, in. Hey, yeah, I mean, can I take my floor? Yeah, it's not your floor, it's my floor, but I will allow you. No, 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 you've been too long, I, uh, I want to yeah. go. I said you don't want me. When Animati was talking here now, nobody said it was too long ago. I but mean, now. Well, uh, well, a rational mind. I'm looking at time, and I have to go. If, you, if there's no space for me, that's fine. I can listen. No, and you're, 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 after, you're, you're after enigmatic, but let him land. The enigmatic, yeah, bring it home. Is it, you mean beyond... enigmatic again? No, no, not enigmatic. Oh, uh, <laughs> rational <laughs> mind. So I beg your pardon. I could go on and on and on if you give me time. But let me just let um, since our friend said he wants to go. But my point is this: that I fear because, like I said on one platform today, which I have to say how Saturday will be. This is how we know from Sunday. Look at all this thing that is going on now. Look at all this gaff and goof and all How this. Sunday will be, you know, from Saturday, you Saturday, mean. Saturday, yeah. Maybe Sunday, my share, Sunday, Saturday, something like that. Mm. But, but the point I'm trying to make is that if we can be seeing this hardship and all this um, misdirection this guy is, is doing right now, I mean, you should, I mean, why would you say this, uh, after seven to give the ultimate? You see, one man, let me just, because I won't have time to... Uh, to flesh out what I'm about to say. But my point is this, I'm afraid, but I wish him the best. If he ever gets over with this court case and become legitimized through the court, I wish him the best. I hope he'll be able to use the legitimacy he gets to be able to act right, because I don't see this guy acting right. He's been making a lot of blunders that has been costing us a lot in that country. So I wonder oh. what is the strategy you're calling this man for? What man, I submit, I just leave it at that. Oh, oh, all right, stay steady. Uh, we'll really open up this space when, uh, when uh, um. Uh, Thomas uh, comes in in a moment, but uh, yes, uh, uh, you're, you're up next, um, uh, uh, Bishop. So the question, your response. Okay. Um, what's, uh, what's the question again? Uh, is uh, what were you looking at in the news today? But I think everybody was looking at the same thing. But uh, let's hear from you. Okay. Um, 
Um, basically, uh, let me just start by saying, please, uh, uh, there's still plenty of uh, uh, space. If you want to click on the like button, that would be much appreciated. Yes, get it's, us to 100 likes. We need 100 so likes today. If you are, if you are listening, uh, uh, please kindly do click on the like button. Uh, that's the minimum you can do. Uh -huh. But probably let me just start from the because there's nothing on the news uh, on this topic. Uh, we, we we kind of uh, dwelt on it yesterday. And uh, to a great extent, it's showing a pattern. I don't know what they will be able to rally around and speak with one voice because I can see many of our opinions are tainted, are blurred by partisanship. Uh, listening to National Man has not helped uh, to douse that now. Uh, he, he spent a lot of time just, you know, everything that is wrong that could be wrong with Nigeria's intervention and the rest, everything. Not, he said nothing has been done right in Nigeria so far. Uh, we know where he stands, but there comes a time. Hold on. It's probably better if you if you if you set aside the commentaries of other commentators. Just hold on. Hold on. Hold on. It's probably better if you uh, if you set aside the commentaries of other commentators because if you comment on their commentary, then they want the rights to reply. Who and they reply? I will reply. Are we not having a conversation? Are we boxing? Are we do? Are we gloves no, drawn? No, 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 no. Just give us. Your no, 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 I'm just saying follow directions. Uh, it, it, uh, the, have I said anything unreasonable? I said, leave it's aside the other commentators. Give us your monologue. Uh, what have I said that needs uh, an argument around it? Just give I, us I your monologue. I didn't want him to let him just free flow. Let him free flow. I mean, why would, you know, why would you always silence me? Okay, okay. Why? Just go on. You know, am, I fighting? am I boxing? I'm, re I'm, I'm spreading, I'm, I'm laying the foundation for my opinion. You are silencing me. Okay, okay. So, so and I've said this okay. several times. Oh, 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 all right, Bishop, give us your opinion. So just give us that. It is my opinion I'm giving you. And I'm, it's, 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 it's tainted that we cannot, as Nigerians, we cannot have if, an opportunity to come and speak with one voice without necessarily bringing partisanship into it because i have listened to a lot of comments it's tainted by partisanship so if you want me to don't want me to lay that foundation if you don't want to hear my voice no, so be it every comment no no people have spoken oh, and people have interjected every, every, and people have made contributions on what other people have said i'm not oh, listening Lord. to you you are not going to listen to me you can move oh, me all right, all right, all right. thank you thank you no no this is unbelievable i cannot abide this i apologize but that's too much it is just give us your commentaries, please. Just do that. Well, man, if you if you if you silence me, that we once again honorably, humbly, I'm not fighting you. I will leave your platform and I will leave for good. No, no, that's not. Yeah, I'm not. That, not that it's not. Your, I'm that, not. That doing, I've choice. not said anything. Listen to me. Listen to you. Make people to listen to you. You don't want to listen to people when they say their own. If you are not going to listen to me, there is no point. If you want to be saying oh, okay. this can, to me, you, go, just, you cannot listen to me too. Everybody gave us their commentary. Just give us yours. I'm, I'm so why don't you leave me to give the okay. commentary okay. the way okay. I want to give it? Am okay. I fighting okay. anybody? Okay. Do, do that. Do that. Is that my, you, know, is, you said my commentary. Why don't you leave me to okay. give are, are my you going, commentary? Are you, are you okay? Uh, uh, what, what, think, no, no, no. This is, this is, is too much for me. This is too much for me. ASAP, let's hear from you. One man, oh, one man, can you hear me? Um, can you hear me? Yeah, yes, Car carry on. Um, okay. what are you looking at in the news today? Okay, well, um, first of all, good evening and good day to everyone, wherever you're listening. Um, listening on um, one man, um, um, and uh, Bishop, please, uh, don't be, you know, I, I understand what's going on, so no. I appeal to everybody. Um, one man, um, thank you for giving me um, this opportunity, I appreciate it. Um, I'll go straight to the point and be very fast. Um, first of all, what I'm about to say might uh, run against um, some of the things that have been said. Please, I want to, uh, I, I would appreciate if I'm, I'm given some chance to express some things. Um, the, it's unfortunate that the coup happened, right? 
Um, but I also uh, observed that uh, maybe maybe I'm the one that is even wrong because I remember that we were saying some things about uh, um, President Tunubu being the president of uh, ECOWAS. So I was wondering uh, that uh, is, uh, the last time I, I, I checked, I don't think he was the president. Maybe we meant to say he's the chairman of uh, ECOWAS. So which means that he doesn't even still have, uh, you know, um, presiding powers as we are ascribing uh, to him, you know, and... Uh, oh, oh, hold on. Uh, Rudolph, do you want to hop on? If you want to hop on, I'll send you the link, uh, Rudolph. Uh, it's there anyway, but uh, carry on. All right, sir. Thank you very much. So um, this is my own take. I, I want to first state that I was a supporter of Tunubu in terms of him bring uh, being uh, uh, how will I put it now uh, uh, president of Nigeria. However, I remember one of the last um, interaction I had on this space, which I was a little bit uh, um, uh, I was surprised about the interactions I had that day. It was just after that was in May. It was just after. He, uh, he swearing in and he made that statement, which uh, I'm surprised that I'm even going to agree with uh, was um, a rational mind on, on an issue, but the truth has to be told. I remember that I, I called the attention of people here, Baba Angelico was there that day. And I said that statement was a bit surprising to me. And it was, to me, if you ask me, it was unpremeditated. And it was, a, I would consider it as a knee-jerk reaction, as a mistake. Please, uh, I know many of us are sympathetic to uh, our, our our wonderful president, but please let us put sentiment ap apart. Our president has been making a series of mistakes, which is quite uncharacteristic of him. If we go by his uh, former antecedents in uh, in the way he managed Lagos State, and it is to me it is cause for concern. At this stage, I expect his advisors and people that are around him, even people that may be listening to us, I believe they should begin to come in and help the president. I want to believe that a lot of factors have contributed into his uh, um, sporadic uh, re, uh, uh, decisions that he has taken. Please, don't get me wrong. I, that's why I had to start by saying I don't have anything against President Tunubu. But when the truth has to be told, we have to see it. And I'm trying to be very temperate and measured in the uh, way I use my language to let people not to not get across the wrong message of us. I like him and I support him. However, because I know the next thing people may say is uh, maybe I've added sentiments. No, I'm talking about from a point of view of a supporter. That uh, subsidy remover, the manner in which he removed it, the manner, the statement he made actually led to um, the market forces reacting. Let us not let us not lie, and and it was a mistake. But he cannot just own up and say it's a mistake. So that is by the way. Now, as regards the issue, we can see another trend again regarding this issue of the Niger Republic uh, stance. First of all, I I, I I believe that you know the way I I um, my ideology towards uh, life is that anytime something happens, the first question I usually ask myself is why did this thing happen. Uh, you know what we can learn from um, if you're trying to determine the cause of a failure the one of the things you first ask yourself is that, okay root cause the five whys what why did this happen what caused this we ask ourselves those questions so i began to ask i said okay what why is president tunubu saying this now one man you know i know you said yes that he did not uh, give uh, the directives and the rest yes that's true one man however he also made threats that is on record for example in the BBC, it was written there that he had already made threats of military invasion. That is on record. So yes, he may not given, have given a go-ahead. That's true. But the understand his body language also suggests. And then to uh, to uh, to um, buttress that point, uh, you know, we, we read where we saw how the, um, the the Senate, so is the Senate or House of Rep, actually denied uh, his request. So they cannot deny a request when he has not issued one. So I believe all of these things that he has made, right, is... Um, showing tending to show one possible thing that and um, I began to ask myself why is he doing this so I said okay is it that uh, the Fulanis want because that's their uh, uh, like somebody like somebody was saying although one man um, rational man corrected and said maybe the guy is uh, Arab okay fine why is there something at stake here in this issue 
what is at stake? Is a Yoruba man? What is there? Or is it President Buhari? So then I started, I started wondering. And now, this, well, okay, fine. A woman, um, rational mind actually hit, um, you know, said some hints that perhaps the lingering uh, attitude of, um, you know, the Nadeko days is still what is still in, ingrained in him. The fear of maybe if this happens now, maybe this can also uh, catapult and lead to his, a, a chain reaction. Maybe his own military too will take over. Yes, that is understandable. But um, but in this kind of case, you cannot just take any decisions like that. First of all, this uh, military coup is already even not the type that is, uh, you know, um, the one that is ideological that we have in the, in the, in the 1960s, that we have the, some, those, the support. It is a money grab. It's a, it's a money it's and a money power grab. grab. It is yeah. even, it is even, it, it, okay. For, for example, somebody was saying something about uh, the lady Victoria uh, this thing. Uh, I, I don't see anything. Okay, I don't see anything serious in this uh, in this military coup. It's something that okay, um, if he if he takes his time, you know, listens to counsel and hears from every side, it's not something that he should make a knee jerk reaction. We don't enter into war with knee jerk reaction. War is not something you just go into and you just go into a, a, a flipper. Even when Putin wanted to attack Ukraine, you saw that there was a build up. It's not just something you just take the armed forces and you just release. Apart from the historical ties, apart from the familiar ties that, are, that they have with the North, you know, all those things are there. Yes, those things are there. So you don't just enter into a war and say, oh, okay, uh, uh, just make it. Even, even if it's based on, fact, I understand. Apart from another thing, let me also shed some light. You know, remember that in 1993, he was a, senate, he was a senator in the First Republic. We all know what happened when Abacha took over and then he had to go on exile. So maybe all of those things are coming back and haunting our president to maybe think that, ah, this is the beginning of something. Let me quickly nip something in the board. However, war is not something you enter into. There must be first diplomatic measures, diplomatic efforts must be made at all for Were well, you not looking forward to the war? I was. I was uh, ah, so I was looking I was looking forward <laughs> to lighting up Niger Republic like a no, Christmas tree. No, no, Niger Republic is a Niger Republic is I think one of the poorest nations in the world. If I'm correct, correct me if I'm wrong. Niger Republic is not a threat to us. In fact, if it were another Yeah, president... all the more reason why we can just slap them around very quickly ah. and assert our dominion over that sub-region. But then posterity will not smile at that. Oma. Posterity will remember that that is what we did. And we, we, we based on our position, we, we obliterated another nation. I, like I was that. only joking, by the way. But I, I, know, I, I, know, I know, I know, you're joking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know. Yeah, yeah. Okay, sorry, yeah. sorry if I yeah. sounded serious, but you know, I'm no, no, no. It, it's, it's for the audience. It's for the audience because they will, they will start to slaughter me now in the comments. But carry on. Yeah, 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 yeah. man. So, so it's not yeah. something that you enter. Now, let me now, let me now say, say some things. You see, uh, it's a pity that Niger found himself in this kind of scenario, and it's not, it's not surprising because it's typical of every nascent democracy. There's always teething problems. And Niger is experiencing its own right now. After a while, Niger will get itself. But we have to ask ourselves this question, we commentators. What is at stake here? First of all, we ask, what is why? Then I say, okay, why is president behaving like this? I say, okay, then there's, what is the tie? Okay, that, that. Then what is now the issue at stake here? We have the United States also dragging matters here. We have the uh, uh, Russia. We have France. We have Germany. All of these countries, they are all in that same place. So you now begin to trace, okay, like somebody used, like they always say in a, in a, you know, in a espionage a palace or maybe. Uh, so, 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 sorry, do you think it's RIP for the leader of this school before the end of the week? Yes, I agree with you on that because not, not, not I don't, I don't, I won't give a timeline, but he has already taken a, a step on, a, 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 on a point of no return. The moment he himself took that step, he, know, he himself knows that this is a point of no return. So, but I, I, I wouldn't say it's this week, but eventually, because it might span beyond this week. Which, which step is that? Which, which step? Which step has okay. he taken that uh, has taken him to a point of no return? If the step of taking over the government from the. Ah, uh, come uh, on. We have Burkina Faso, Military Junta, and the Mali. They are still in place. What are you uh, guys talking about? Baba Jaleko, can I can I quickly push back, sir? Now push back. Push forward or push back. Push <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or, or if you push to the center. Yeah. <laughs> or to the center. <laughs> <laughs> to the center. <laughs> 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 we decide to go. 
<laughs> but Jali Koko, she, you know that he has already, he, okay, he has, he has taken, he has taken a step of the coup. He forever will be, if they are writing the history of that nation, he will be linked to a junta. That's what I mean. He cannot, he's not, there's no way he can ever, they can ever write the history of that nation again, that they can write him as a, a democratic leader. That is a point of no return. So from that moment, right, he's, he's already, he already knows that his stance. Now, this, this, here's the funny thing. I like that Papa Angelico even interjected. We, even among, um, 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 is it Tietiani? I mean, that's his name, Tietiani. Even among his own people that uh, joined them together and took over. The one of his, um, um, you know, one of his uh, uh, handyman or uh, uh, his right hand man, um, is, is not um, uh, Bamu, Bamu, uh, Brigadier General Bamu. He's also a U.S. trained general and um, 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 brigadier or colonel. He's U.S. trained. So you begin to ask yourself the question: What is actually at stake here in this country? That's why I said it's unfortunate that. Uh, Niger found itself in this situation. Okay, then I said, okay, let's let, let's begin to trace. Number one, security purposes. Now, the US, the prior to 2017, the US did not really mind about the uh, Niger Republic. But until they lost four military personnel due to ISIS, that's when they began to say, okay, well, it's like this region is really a tough uh, uh, region. And you know, to conquer the ISIS and uh, Al Qaeda, they had to come in, right? And they had to build what I think they even have a, a, a military, um, a drone drone base in the northern part of the of the nation so then again they also trained they also spent they have i think millions of dollars they also invested millions of dollars in the security architecture of that nation so you begin to wonder okay so people have their stake their stakeholders in this in this issue okay what about russia itself russia and the us you they, they also are interested i mean I, mean, I will try to be using my words carefully i want to use my words carefully with niger republic is i think the seventh or the sixth largest producer of uranium so you now begin to wonder. So it's not just by accident that these nations. It is not actually Niger that is. The, you can begin to see all this connection. Anyway, I'm not going to put two and two together. People should be able to put two and two together from all these things. So when our president now decides, right? That is why um, the, um, the, that professor was saying that uh, if president is not careful, the Western powers will use him to fight a war by proxy. So meanwhile, our president decided let us go and fight. Now in his mind, he's thinking that he's trying to abort or preempt. And a, 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 a series of reaction of military coup within the region, but he doesn't know that he may actually be used by Can this I nation. A okay, yeah. Can I ask a question? Yeah. yeah. Don't you think that Tinubu is trying to play a double card? I'll give you an example. I okay. think just barely last week, uh, Shetima was in uh, was with uh, Putin, was in Russia, right? Okay. Yes. Yes. And then, do you think he went there to play? <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? That's I, just, I get I get where you're going to. Now, in terms of brisk, brisk and the rest, side. right? In terms of brisk, no, it was in Russia. No, what I mean put by brisk is that um, um, Brazil, Russia, yeah, uh, India. He was in Russia. Shetima was in Russia, mm -hmm. meeting Russian leaders. Let's put that one side. Just barely before the coup took place, and okay. then uh, Tinubu was in. Uh, they were in Ecowas, and if you. If you actually listen to his speech at that meeting, he said, whatever position you take, I will stand by you. That's hmm. what he said. It was like, whatever position you take, I will stand by you. We will not want uh, to encourage this in West Africa. He said that with African Union too, when he had a meeting in African Union, reference was made to to the military coup that took place. If you look at the speech with African Union, and then where, with the coup, I say, okay, whatever position you take, I'm going to stand by you. He, he, to the West now, he's like, oh, he's pro-democracy. He's known to be a Democrat. And he, he took that position. And in, this, in the spirit of democracy, he went to National Assembly. Sinobu knows in his mind that National Assembly will turn it down. Sinubu mm. knows in his mind that Nigeria does not have money to fight any war. He mm. knows. He knows. We, we need money now. He knows in his mind that we don't even have enough military boots on ground, even with the campaign, enough military boots in, on, on ground to even maintain the internal stability that is required now, minus Niger threat now. Internal stability that we require 
We don't have enough military on ground. There are plans to set up National Guard. There are plans to set up Forest Guard. There are plans. You understand? So he knows the implication of now taking, withdrawing the scarce military resources to protect some international interests. At the same time, he knows the implication. I've said it on this platform. Of... Hello. I, I, I think uh, I think it was okay, interrupted. Can I can I respond to what he? Uh, uh, Can, uh, all Canadian this? chief phone. Yeah, Canadian <laughs> Canadian Canadian chief phone. Yes. Eh? <laughs> you understand? Eh, we, now have, we now have we have Niger very close by, and I don't want you to see it as oh the Northerns are not the Northerners are not patriotic. No, 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 no. They are the position of the Northern speakers. Those people speaking the North is essentially position of most of Nigerians, even the southerners, even some no, people. I, 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 did, I didn't actually say that. I actually, I'm no, actually... No, I'm not talking about you. I'm talking, I've listened oh. to everybody. I've listened to oh, okay, okay, Masil, okay. the northerners. And all. They are patriotic. Where you will know where they are patriotic is if there is a threat to Nigeria from Niger. For example, let's say that Niger government is the one sponsoring Boko Haram. Then you will see the difference. Even though we be neighbors, even though they claim to have brothers there, then you will see how the northerners will fight it. Hmm. You understand what I'm saying? So as it is, they might say, "Oh, we don't want it because no, 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 it's no, really no. not." Patrick, 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 Patrick. No, that's, no, no, I know that. Hold on, hold on. Let me oh, finish oh, now. Oh, yeah. hold on, hold on. You, you, Allow you me to even speak one minute now. Okay, I've heard you speaking scenes for like how many? Ah, minutes? yeah, you go. Let me stop. Let me mind. Check your phone. Yeah, carry on. Let me land. So I say that if there's a threat from Niger to Nigeria. And it's established that that threat is to Nigeria and those people's position, the northern states that are neighboring them, their position, their situation is threatened. That's when you will see that there's a difference. Yoruba says there's, uh, they say when the father and the son owns a farm, there's usually, there's usually a boundary. Even when a father and a son jointly say, oh, these are our farm, they usually draw a boundary. So that's when you will know that even though you are our siblings, and you are this, there's a line you must not cross. So I don't think the northerners are not, it's not as if they are not patriotic. No. We All might right. have some elements there, but it's not a problem. And I believe that inside Tinubu, he knows he's not going to fight that war. But you can't just play out like that and say, no, we are not. That's him standing against the West. You so I see right. All right. Okay. Uh, um, Pat Patrick, you're breaking off. Yeah, but uh, back to your ASAP. Yeah, well, well, Patrick Patrick raises a very, very, very important point. Now, if let's assume that what Patrick has said is truth, right? It will mean that Tunubu is playing a master card and a master game at this. That is true, and I hope that that is actually true. That he's he is trying to be diplomatic and you know not wanting to reveal his hand. However, Patrick should understand that we cannot blame the people, that is we, who are seen from the outside, based on the things, the body language of Tenobu, and number two, based on his antecedents of recent. This is a person that has already made an utterance that he later that was an af more or less like an afterthought. Then he saw that, oh, I, I was wrong. So we, let's agree that what he's saying. But you, I like what Pat Patrick, Patrick put it. He said that, I believe that Tunubu is uh, doing certain things. So it's, it's still based on an assumption that Tunubu is doing that. However, we can only work on the, based on the facts. If Tunubu is doing what he is saying, then it's a smart move. But if Tunubu is not doing what he is saying, I believe that uh, anybody telling Tunubu to go to war at this time will be an ill-advised and an ill-timed uh, decision that will be taken by Tunubu, which you know, all go away. Number one, we don't have the... Um, we don't have the even the economic economically we are not we, we don't have the with the resources to embark on a war so but if what he's saying is true which i don't which i we, we can still it will still be based on speculation right then it is actually a master plan and master stroke of that of him to go to because he, he knows that his own he, then in other words he will pass the book to the uh, um the house of rep and tell the equals that ah, this is what they have said because actually i think i read that even in our constitution except maybe by veto power, he cannot uh, deploy our military forces without seeking approval of the um, the, 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 uh, the House of Rep. 
and the Senate, that's uh, the, uh, the Senate as well. He cannot do that. So there is no way he wants to make any decision that he has to go behind. And then it is going to be completely ill-advised. In fact, if it were another leader, let me say it like this. I don't want to sound, um, I don't want to sound uh, 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 in a way, maybe uh, omni uh, ominous or something. But another leader will rightly position the nation, especially based on our economic situation right now. We position our nation in such a way that we will benefit even if there's an uh, onset of maybe a war in that nation. I don't want to go into uh, um, details and respect because I don't want to be hot, sound uh, uh, like a doomsday. Uh, uh, thing. So they, they, you will begin to position our nation. Uh, that we can uh, hawkish. You don't want to sound hawkish like a prince <laughs> that the, uh, I don't want to sound like that. that. Oh, yes. I, I don't want to sound. I don't want to sound that way. So I believe that that is that is what our president should be doing. So but let's agree. Let's as, assume that what Patrick said is true. But another thing again that Patrick uh, that um, which Patrick mentioned is about uh, the patriotism of. I well, I don't know, but I on my own, I believe that um, the northern part of Nigeria are patriotic. They are only just trying to tell us that they have ties, and it's actually true because be, before um, what was it called? Is it not the Berlin? Uh, the Berlin uh, Act or something like that, right? In I was in the eight, uh, 19th, 19th century. Uh, Niger Republic was still just an extension of the northern part of Nigeria until you know the colonizers came and began to colonize. So they, we still have extensions there. We still have the Fulani there. We have the uh, Kanuri there. We have the houses there. I think they are in the majority. So we cannot uh, begin yeah, to they take are, a They are fifty-three percent of the country's population. The houses. So you see now. So uh, how how Nigeria will the only fear now? What is making everyone you know uh, commentate on this? What is making one man commentate on this? Is because we've seen in recent time how our president has responded to other issues, which is no longer something we can uh, call as a, a maybe and say it is just a, a, a theoretical or maybe we're just we've seen how he has how he has handled and that's what is making people say oh hope is not going on another coalition course so we can quickly um, bring back I, I know that there are a lot of supporters of Tinubu here but let us call his speed his speed over this particular issue that's my that's my take one man thank you for your time oh, 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 all right brilliant um now, uh, um, let, let, let's hear from Moses, uh, and then I'll bail out and hand over to Thomas. Um, uh, uh, Moses, you're, you're up next. Uh, let's hear from you, Moses. Uh, speak to the conversation, Moses. Uh, uh, good morning. Oh, 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 just uh, just as it will be around my circumstances, so I just uh, I just keep low. Yes, everything keep low. everything is good, sir. No, everything is good. Not uh, no, everything is good, but uh, the situation on ground, you know. Uh, are are, are so you back in Nigeria? Are you back in Nigeria? No, I went to Nigeria last year. It's like a year now. I went to Nigeria. I'm trying to go to Nigeria also this year, but uh, just uh, just to keep myself uh, low because I wanted to change my location. So I'm trying to to change my location from here to to somewhere somewhere else. Uh, just uh, I just I'm listening to everybody. I'm listening just to learn a little thing from uh, you guys. Uh, it's been a while. So, uh, to be with my family, one man, uh, <laughs> and everybody. I miss you all. Uh, no, we, we, we missed you too. If I had your number, I would have called you, but uh, there it yeah. is. It's good to see you're well. Yeah, I'm sorry, sir. So just my, for me... Uh, Moses, it's nice to have you back. Oh. Uh, yes, sir. How is family, sir? Everybody well, okay. So... Just to learn a little thing from you guys and uh, to contribute my own uh, quota is uh, the, the situation. Let me first go to the senator, senator with uh, screening. And um, you know about the screen. What I what I what I just view about the screen and my own uh, expression about the screening concerning uh, Kiyamu. 
I can discover that if you are in position, whatever position you you are, you are in world today, you just you have to think of a uh, uh, tomorrow that maybe you are not you are not going to be there. Someone is going to be there, and you don't need to be arrogant. You don't you don't need to to believe that uh, whatever you are do, uh, nobody can challenge you. Nobody can ask you. Nobody can demand for for accountability or your responsibility. But uh, the, 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 today, I can see, I can see that uh, no matter no matter what position you are, you one day somebody will, will will ask you for accountability, and you don't need to be arrogant because you are in position and you believe uh, you can do whatever you like or uh, you can hold the power forever. It's not, it's not, it's not so. That's about about the Kiyamu. and then about the coup in. Uh, in Niger that concern Nigeria. For my own view, for my own view about the, the, the war, concerning the war, about uh, maybe the uh, junta in, uh, in Niger, is uh, uh, Mr. President, sorry to say, Mr. President, in, 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 he lacked the international, international relation, relation uh, idea or diplomatic idea. That is where you know who have the experience or who have the knowledge to rule a country. It's not by the age. It's not by maybe I have run a state before or I have hold uh, some position before. Because what uh, Mr. President lack is that you don't have the people, the people that have idea about how we relate internationally. You don't have those those guys around him. For example. Maybe you have a god or you have some issue with Obasanjo. You cannot you cannot write Obasanjo off in this situation. You cannot write Obasanjo. People like Obasanjo, people like uh, Jonathan, people like some other than uh, former uh, diplomatic that we have. So you cannot write them off. You cannot say because you are you hold power today, you can do whatever you like. So no, it's not so. That's where the uh, uh, president lack uh, uh, idea. Okay, now you said you wanted to you wanted to lead the uh, ECOWAS to go and fight Niger. If it is Benin Republic, will Yoruba people support any president to fight uh, Benin Republic? It's not it cannot be possible. No Yoruba will support that. I'm sure of that. So anybody from the northern uh, Nigeria will not support any president any president to, to fight Niger. It's not going to be. It's not going. It's not going to be happy. They will not. They will not be happy because the majority of uh, northern people, they related to Niger. Majority of Niger, they related to northern Nigeria. So they will not. They, they, they will not happy for Tinubu to say, that, okay, you wanted to carry uh, what to go and fight Niger. It, it cannot possible. Likewise, if it is uh, Benin Republic, no Yoruba will allow such a thing to happen to Benin Republic because Benin Republic and. Uh, and Western Nigeria, they are family, they are one, they are one in uh, uh, your kingdom. So, apart from that, what uh, the next thing uh, I wanted to talk about is, uh, is uh, about Air Five. You know, and Air Five issue, people have been, have been complete, even though the, 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 the Muslim, the, the cleric. Muslim, they have been complaining about Erufai. Everybody have been complaining about Erufai. Now, it's before he said he, he don't want to be a minister. He have been uh, aging. Uh, he have uh, uh, developed people that can take over from him. Okay, Mr. Tinumbu uh, begged him that he want him to work with him. But now, he was selected to be a, to be a minister. And people are complaining about him. They are writing such all mistakes they have, have been making in the past. They have been writing such and complaining about him that he cannot be a, a, a minister. That if Tinubu appoints an Erufa as a minister, definitely is going to ruin the, the, the government of uh, Tinubu because they have done that, done the Obasanjo. That is the one that caused trouble between uh, Atiku and. Uh, Maybe it's true, maybe it's just ESA, but 
I don't know about that. But for now, I'm not sure it's going to be confirmed to be a minister unless something happened. So that's my own contribution. I just just to listen to you guys, just to learn a lot of things from you guys. Oh, 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 all right, brilliant, uh, brilliant. Uh, stay with us and don't make it so long the next time. Uh, uh, don't make it so long the next time because uh, people will start asking where you are. So, so that's Moses. Uh, he's been all right. Uh, so he's just had to take time out to deal with life. So thank you, Moses. Uh, let's go on from Moses to Folly, who hopefully has a good connection. I think he's joining us from Ekiti. Uh, Folly, uh, uh, at this time of the morning, Folly, Folly B. Sure. Oh, oh, all right. Let's let's go to Patrick. So, so Patrick, hopefully we have you and a better connection from you. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, perfectly. So, so P Patrick, you have the floor now. The opening question is, uh, uh, what what were you looking at in the news today? So you take that on. But before you take that on, let me use this window to bail out and hand over to Thomas. Uh, Prince Daddy, uh, super chat. Thank you. Uh, solid super chat. Thank you. Uh, you of course, as tradition, thank you. So keep the super chats coming. There seems to be a uh, slowing down in that space. I wonder if uh, it, and it's not even uh, 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 yes. Uh, uh, anyway, uh, keep it coming. Let me just leave it at that. Uh, but uh, also, so Thomas, uh, uh, you're you're up next. Oh, thank you, everyone. It's winter here. I don't know you guys are enjoying your weather wherever you are. It's it's crazy freezing here in Melbourne. Um, uh, Patrick, uh, were you there when the opera that happened between um, one man and Bishop? No, no, no. When was that? Today? No, no. No, just yes, just yeah. Uh, I've just employed everyone. Um, uh, one man and myself. Let's if if you are trying to uh, make the conversation go in some direction, let's let's just follow the the, the flow and the the, the, the moderator. We, we are not here to fight. I, I don't think that um careful or what happened between them it's necessary let's just follow the, the if, if the moderator say let's do it like this let's do it like that bishop i, I hope you will come back yeah so that we have a good uh, conversation yeah patrick you have the floor how are you my brother fine oh fine yeah i've actually spoken on the nj thing um the last thing we want is a is a war in that place because uh Myself. So I'm even talking of in terms of money now, because you need money to fight. And uh, this military junta, they are not uh, they are not alone. Except we are deceiving ourselves. They are not alone. And uh, we cannot rely, we cannot be fighting France's war. You understand? We can't be fighting France's war. Then we cannot to enforce democracy on the people that don't want it. That's the mistake people are making. Democracy is the best form of government. But democracy is, uh, promotes the will of the people. If the will of the people is that they, they want a military junta, then why do you... It would be undemocratic to, to, to now do otherwise. Does democracy promote the invasion of another country? You understand? You need to see the rally. That uh, my brother, my brother Patrick, do you think yeah. people think Tinubu really wants to go to war? <laughs> I don't yeah. think Tinubu is going to any war. I don't think so. Yeah, that's what people think, but I also I also don't think so. But the challenge I have is that if Tinubu is trying to play a double card, if if ordinary people like me can see that he's trying to play a double card, does you think people like people in the West, Western leaders, will not know that that's what he's trying to do? 
they will know now. You understand what I'm trying to say? Yesterday you were in Russia, the day before you were, you understand? They will know if people like me who don't have military, we don't have a, a military intelligence gathering system, but just by reading newspaper and looking at the uh, situation and body language, we're able to know how this is then providing and they will know that this guy is trying to play double count. And uh, so we can't uh, we can't afford to let that be the the issue now because I don't think there's any Western countries that really have the interest of Nigeria at heart that much. We are not uh, we are not important to them. That's just it. <laughs> not, it's true. We are are you not, sure we are not important? <laughs> we are not. We are not. How much are they ready to put into Nigeria? What's the population of Nigeria? What's the population of Ukraine? Do you know how much America is investing in Ukraine even before this war? Ukraine, Ukraine has a bigger economy than Nigeria, yet America is putting all the resources into Ukraine. All the all along. We we have more population, we have more population than Ukraine. We are more strategically positioned in Africa than Ukraine is. And uh, we are also equally well positioned in Africa, rather. But uh, they don't even discuss us in their congress. You understand? We don't come up except when there are some other issues like that. But Ukraine, those are major issues in Congress that they discuss regularly. You understand? They discuss uh, they discuss the countries. What of the resources they are getting from Africa. What, what of the resources? Which resources are they getting from you, Nigeria? Is America how much of your oil is America buying? America, I don't know how much whether they are even buying our oil now. Sir. And America can decide not to buy our own oil. Nothing will happen. I think, I think it's more of UK that is even buying our oil. Sir. The, the, the America has cut down the, the buying of our fuel. Even so before the before then, they were UK used to buy more. So what is the what's the big deal? We are not as important to them now as in other countries. I'm telling you. America is going to be paying more attention to South Africa, to countries like Angola, than us. So what was our own problem? Look at, to even get weapons, look at how much we are paying for it. They gave it to Afghanistan free. Free. They just left mm. in the military base and walked away. Afghanistan is more important to them. Look at how much they put in Afghanistan. Look at where Maybe we are. Maybe because they... they... They have a real war. We don't have a real war. Can you say that? No. What what led to the real war? They started the real war. Now. What led to the real war? You understand? It's their interest that even led to that real war. It's not the real war that led to their interest. You understand what I'm saying? So yeah. why will you, will you now? Why will you now? Instead of you just be taking care of your family, as a father, you are now looking, trying to prognose them into what other people are doing in their home. You are not even. The excuse you would have given to Equas is that you know I just came in, uh, I need to study situation and this I have this issue. We are we have Boko and we have all these issues, security problem in our country. What did Equas do? When we were having military, is Equas just imagine when we we're having military all over in Nigeria? What did Equas do? When we had the uh, Boko Haram invasion, what did Equas do? Did we not organize ourselves? You understand? Did you not organize that? So, so the idea of now you will not be the one spending all that money. If you think that the West is going to give you money, even if they give us money now, we should not take because when we need money to take care of our people, they didn't give us. If we now say we want to fight for they will not give us money. To do what? Hmm. To do what? Hmm. They will not even give you money, they will give you weapons and say they are giving you money. Weapon that we will spend money to maintain. Weapon that if we know if we are not careful, it will fall into the hands of bandits and Boko Arams. And then we will start having problem again. So we should maintain peace in that place. I tell you today, if there's a crisis in that place, and it might destabilize Nigeria, because when the West come into that place with their weapons, they will really, the, the East. Let me not say the West. When they come into that place, those weapons will get into the hand of Putin, and they will create problems here. 
You just wear puff. And if they, they, are, if they are running away, Nigeria is the best way to run away to. Our borders are porous. They will deliberately, it's not even the running away. When the when the civilians run away and come to us, it's not a problem now. We are okay. But when the rebels, other people, is easy to overtrain when Nigeria is war than when we are at peace. Very easy to overtrain. Mm -hmm. You see military moving their armor car, moving their formations in the time of peace. It is easily seen. Why are they moving? But when there is mm -hmm. war, if they are moving, they'll just say, oh, we need to deploy this, we need to deploy. Before you know it, they are deployed around you as president. They just even use cane to chase you out of that place. The Babada cannot walk out anywhere. They just they will just carry him inside car. They will not even they will not match it. They will just say, Baba, just go and stay but you know. We'll keep you there for now. <laughs> so so what are we saying? The only way eh, to ensure that there's no coup is to, is to leave provide the right leadership, motivate your military, and then let them see that even under the civilian government, their careers are better off than under the military government. My brother in the military used to tell us, tell me other, even when civilians are there, I think they are, that they are better off than when the military are there. You understand? But unfortunately, mm. you know, yeah. the young boys, all these young boys, they don't know. They didn't know when the military were there, what we, what we suffered. So they say, ah, one military, let them go. I just look at them and laugh. Look at this one. <laughs> Can we ask a question? Oh, ask yes, of course. Question. Why not? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Mr. Patrick. Yes. Uh, I agree to. Yeah, my brother. Yeah. So um, you were saying something about the other time, uh, <clears throat> patriotism, when it comes to the people of the North, that uh, I think they've all said this. Uh, like we haven't heard their elected members talk about uh, saying Tinubu should not um, carry any warfare with um, with Niger. And you said these people are not, they are, they are patriotic. Can I say yeah. something? I like how, how you pronounce Niger. <laughs> I'll, I'll say I'll, be, I'll talk about it one day. Uh -uh. That's how it's said in That's how they pronounce it in French. Niger. Oh, that's it. Oh, that is the pronunciation. So, you always stand up when you pronounce it. It's not like we are the papo, we don't know. No, no, it's, I mean, that's different. That, well, we say, you want to say in English, I don't know, I think it should be in Niger, in Niger, in Niger, in Niger, in Niger, in Niger, in Niger. I pronounce it in French word, anyway. So, I don't even know about the pronounce it. Uh, so, now, having said that, uh, now, looking at uh, what you said, that uh, it's not about uh, patriotism here. If these people are Nigerian subjects, Nigerian citizens, and I can understand, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that the uh is justified in anything he wants to do with that Niger invasion. What I'm saying is that that tells you the problem we're dealing with in that country. Because if you have these people which which patriotism should be to our country, Nigeria, in this matter of Tinubu, I'm not saying it she she can't be play. But what you just said right there is the problem. Why the Boko Haram, the boundary tree cannot be defeated. And Tinubu wants to go and wage this warfare. Going on. I don't want to believe mm. that. I'm not done. I'm not done. So, what my question is this: my question, is, my, I'm trying to ask you this. Don't you think that that's a problem? Considering that uh, Burutai said it that for us to defeat Boko Haram and this uh, resurgency we see in the north, that it's going to take us like is it 50 or 30 years? It says because it says the the people themselves, their accomplices, the locals themselves are complicit into this. The the ancestry into this whole. Um, Bandit treating and all because of the so called religion that these people they profess to bring to them and say they are fighting the war of God or war of Allah. So, don't you think that is a problem? And besides this Niger thing, don't you think it's a problem with patriotism? Do you think these people are really patriots? Okay, you want me to respond to that? Yeah, yes. Hello? Yeah, you see, uh, yes, we can hear you. Go on, go on. It's a fresh party. Go on. And than Nigeria, but simply because they know. I think Patrick is breaking, though. Oh, yes, yeah. I thought I'm the one breaking. Yeah, I think that's Patrick. 
I think it, I can feel like he's, he, he's driving, it, like somebody in the car. So maybe it's the network over there. Um, hello, Patrick. Do you have oh, no. Patrick is is gone. Yeah, do you have Prince Daddy? Prince Daddy just came in into the house. Hey, what's up, Thomas? Yeah, Prince Daddy. How are you, my brother? My brother with good the, idea. With the with the UK accent, you always intimidate me every time you speak, my brother. <laughs> Thomas, <laughs> you know <I'm> Thomas. <laughs> 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 you want to see it's in the, and maybe I will move to UK too so I can have some accent. <laughs> How are you, my brother? I did. How far? I did. Um, What's up? Body, body, day, body day side plus. Let's hear from can you. Can you hear me? Uh, but, uh, now we can hear you, Patrick. You, you, you went off for quite a long time. No, I think I was muted or something. So yes, we I'm can hear you now. That yeah. We don't have any interest. Bishop, I'll anything. come back. Um, please, Daddy, I'll come back to you, please. Yeah. There's no economic interest in, in fighting that war. And uh, so, except, except maybe they promised him that, oh, if you fight this war for us, we're going to cancel your debt or something. It may be, but I don't know. I don't know why. So those people are saying, not necessarily saying we are not patriotic. We are, they are saying, look, it's not in the interest. Of, that's where I want to see it. That is not in the interest of Nigeria. Just like you are saying, rational mind, you are not in support of this war. It doesn't mean that you are not patriotic. It simply means that you have weighed it and said, look, this man wants to make a wrong decision and we should not allow it to happen. You understand? We should use every means to make sure that we guide him right. You understand, and if if it's either by condemning his action or by condemning him, him as a person, just to make sure that no Nigerian blood is lost as a result of that war. You understand, to uh, stabilize uh, democracy. Uh, um, um, Patrick, I still yeah? I still maintain my position. Tinubu is not going to any war. He just wants to strike it. That is. He just thoughts. want to do what? Strike a deal. Strike a deal. With who? Ah, with the West or with the East, with anybody. To strike no, you don't have to do that, use that to strike any deals now. You don't that those are lives and those are very jugular issues now. You don't play with uh, you don't you the point is that if Nigeria, for example, you want to exert our dominance in Nigeria. If you look at the same the way war is being fought now, the war that is being fought is the war that China is fighting. It's the economic war. If, for example, which what is what Buhari is trying to, was trying to do, if we are the one controlling all the maritime industry of Niger, such that all their ship, all their vessels, all the containers for Niger are better in our port, we are the one controlling, if you are controlling maritime, the shipping and everything in Niger, mm -hmm. is like controlling almost 50% of the economy of the country. That's a very strong position. Mm -hmm. Those are the kind of things we should be doing. We should be funding their transportation systems. Nigeria, Nigerian transportation companies like all oh, these God is good, all these big, big companies, they should go there. BRT should go there and invest. All those companies, they should go there and invest. You see, you see, that that in... Patrick, what you just said now brings, brings another question to mind. What is the sanction they're talking about? Because you see, Almost 70% of this guy of these people's importation it is through Ghana, uh, what's it called? Um, uh, Togo, and mm -hmm. in the pipeline they built that China considered for them. Guess who? Guess where they went to go to, to, to Benin, Benin Republic. So you can imagine. So, mm -hmm. so why are those ones not why those ones not sanctioning them? Uh -huh. And again, another thing again is this. Uh, among the threat they gave, the threat, the only West African nation they, tre they threaten, uh, besides Nigeria, is Togo. They didn't threaten uh, Benin. So it, it begs the claw of question that uh, what is going on here? So I just think Tinubu being an Yoruba man, I mean, why were how... they threatening Togo? I think because Togo was a belligerent, kind of, they, they were like pushing more for military sanctions because I think Yadema's son is, is, um, is under threat, I would say. 
because with uh, what is going on in uh, Mali and what is going on in especially Burkina Faso, there could yeah, be another. Because you know, so you know that the Ayadema, Ayadema dynasty there has, has lasted for many years. I think it has overstayed. Yeah. Mm, so I, think yeah, I get you. I get you. I think it has overstayed. So I think it, it feels like a trap because you see that young guy in uh, Burkina. That guy is. He said he's going to go after. Uh, he's going to do um, this uh, Sankara Thomas uh, Thomas Sankara. Uh, so he's going to follow his. Uh, and, and then and then they have this ideology. This ideology of Africa first kind of ideology. They want to do away with this uh, colonial mentality of where we have to pander to the West and to France. So I think what I'm seeing is that among all the all the nations they try to be sent Nigeria, that's the only nation they threaten. Togo. At Rational mind. Rational mind. Uh, let me say this. Rational mind. Uh, um, Patuski. Um, Rational mind. I think the 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 what do you call it? The Bokinians. I think they are happy for the unity unit, unit junta. I saw many videos. They were jubilating. They, they were happy. If the citizens are happy, so what, what do you think? I saw many videos. They were jubilating. Yes, yeah. they, they might have took over. Yeah, you know, mind you, these countries you mentioned, Mali, Guinea, uh, Guinea, they are all under military, uh, military rule. Uh, they had the military took over. Tinubu's um, that picture, that uh, video of Tinubu in a helicopter with uh, that former was the name of that uh, Guinean uh, president uh, that gave him that gave him citizenship. What's that guy's name? Uh, his bodyguard is yeah. what? Okay. I his name yeah, you. so anyway, let us go. These are the forgetting a lot of names. So anyway, the guy was the one who, who, who overthrew him. You know, that tall guy uh, that was US trained. I think he's US trained too. He's a US trained uh, military guy. Um, he, he's the one, I mean, he's the one, he's the, I mean, he's the, he's the leader now in uh, in Guinea. So, and also now in Mali, uh, in Mali, we saw the also the military there and in Burkina. So, the point is this Cote d'Ivoire. Togo, Benin. These are the two Francophone countries remaining. I mean, maybe possibly Senegal has remaining now that possibly there could be a military takeover of their countries. So that's why these countries are always they're like they're just afraid. Uh, Benin, I don't think they want to have a military takeover of Benin. It can never happen in Benin for now. Ever since Kiriku has left there, uh, Mathieu uh, Kiriku. Uh, I think he has done it such a way by there could not be any military to go out in. I must say, I never say never, but in Benin. That's what I want to say that never say never. <laughs> go, on. go on. No, I said, uh, I said you, I, I wanted to say, say that, uh, never say never. So, uh, you said it immediately, you said that, that never say never. So, we can yeah. never say never. It just, it's just uh, I, I I lived in I used to live in Benin. I know that country very well, like back of my hand. Uh, but the way I see it, Kiriku, a uh, former president, he did a very good job. Whereby there's no way military could take over in that country. He has really broken the the ranks like such. But never say never, like I said. But that's the only country. But the only country that I feel because you see one thing about um, uh, Benin Republic is that they've been very very progressive when it comes to democracy. They've had many years of power changing now from one person to another person, even though we know that sometimes the election too is rigged, they rigged the election, and France still impose whoever they want there for them. But it's in reality, they've been calm, they've been peaceful. But you see that, you see that um, Cote d'Ivoire, and what's it called, uh, Togo, whereby, you know, Alassane Gbagbo was, that's Alassane was, uh, uh, Gbagbo, Laurent Gbagbo was the one who was the president, who was, the, who was like a dictator there, and he will not give this guy that is there now, Alassane Ouattara, he will not give him time. So even every election, you have to find a way of skinning me, skimming him out. Now, look at the same Watara that was campaigning back. You see, these people are just a bunch of hypocrites. This is the same Watara that was saying, how could Bible be there for many years? This, 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 this. Now, he, he, has, he has done two terms. Now, the third time now, look at I me, mean, second time, I mean, third, he, he, he did the second, third time. He changed the constitution just so he could have third time. So you can imagine how this, these are our, our civilian dictators they will transform into a civilian. They will become another kind of dictator that is even worse than worse off than, uh, than a military dictator. So my point is this: that they are threatened. Cote d'Ivoire is under threat, San Pano, because they've also they've had series of military takeover, coup, counter coup, and all of that. 
uh, rebellion. Togo, that one, we know that they've had uh, several years of peaceful, one family living or living ruling that country. So they also they are under threat with what is going on in these uh, francophone countries now. So for me, I just believe that um, there's more to this thing that we know, and maybe that's why um, I don't know. Maybe that's why Tunisia is on the edge. Uh, I don't know how Nigeria is affected in this matter, but I just feel Tunisia needs to chill out. He needs to just get his heart together. Uh, for me, he should have come in for us with two people. Two people among his cabinet should have entered that government with him first day. Minister of, Minister of Foreign Affairs and his Attorney General, those two people should have come. Those are the people that would have directed him and shaped his foreign policy for him. And maybe his legal issues within Nigeria. But, but he still need the Senate. Yeah, he, he could have done that. We are done with the old Senate now. The old Senate that were there before. He could have gotten the approval from them. Can, can, he, can he do that? He can, yeah, he can do that. Because he did, um, what was that? Uh, he sent, um, what was it that he sent to the House? When he, after he became um, president, I think he sent, he sent something to them for them to approve, and they approve it now, right? So why can they? Why can they also approve his? Um, his, um, his? I think that's why the, the constitution yeah. makes it to lapse like that. So far, they are still sitting. It doesn't matter. Maybe they are eighth assembly or ninth assembly. Yeah. So they should be able to do it. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, um, is Patosi there? Um, is is back, but I don't think he's uh, he's gone again. He's gone again. So, uh, Prince Daddy, over to you. It's just Prince Daddy. What yeah, Prince Daddy. Yeah. 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 What's up? Yeah. Uh huh. Is that what you said the other time yeah. about this lady? You got me like, what are you talking about? You said this lady, wherever it goes, is a mayhem after it. You see, we sometimes we have to like, just, just I want you to talk about that lady. Talk a little bit about that lady. Let's. let's yeah. See, the, Victoria Nolan. See, I'm not talking about her because I just found out about her today. I know about her and her record. Okay, trust me. I, I, I know about her, what she did in Ukraine many years ago. I'm not talking, this Ukraine issue is not just like, you know, this is a Lensky time a couple years ago. I'm talking about over, over it was seven, eight years ago. And she was also in, 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 in Libya, Benghazi issue. She was part of it also. So maybe you don't know about her, but obviously uh, Benny knows about her when I, when she came up uh, on the screen, and and that's she's that the person that that she works in the in the state department. I mean I don't know if you work there also, but she pulls the plot. She's like the final say. She's not a boss of the boss, but trust me, she's the person that sends to these places. Okay, if you remember, go check out the beginning of the war in uh, Ukraine. She was there. She was there with Zelensky and the other other people so she's always been there and it, just like it happened i heard that a hey, a hundred million dollars was withdrawn from our uh, aid was withdrawn from uh from uh niger she called the shot uh, if you see a picture like 10 15 20 years ago she was very nice and good looking woman she's i mean she's still a kid right now but she's getting older this lady she's she, she's been through all the administrations in the past i don't know 20 years in america Victoria Newland, Google her and read about her. She's that important, very important for that matter. During the um, Senate hearing, when Trump was being um, investigated for a quid pro quo matter that testified against Trump about the quid pro quo, was it not the same lady? The ambassador, former ambassador to, of, um, is it the uh, US ambassador to Ukraine, Russia, one of those um, countries between Russia, I think, um, or Ukraine. It was the ambassador that it was asked, it was recalled and they call him back and then the, the senate were grilling her and she testified against um, trump and his activity in um, in ukraine yeah I, I think i know the lady you're talking about it wasn't her it wasn't victoria newland it was not her um uh, uh, well, please daddy let's digress a bit and uh, not and uh, not big discussion i just want to hear the ask of you are they going to jail trump no, Trump is not going to jail. I mean, that's what I want people like uh, rational mind to believe and have hope. But he's not going to go to jail. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Trust me, everybody's beating the drum. Trump is going to jail because the the, the whole purpose is to make people be afraid and do, uh, wouldn't want to vote for him, thinking that hey, uh, there's no hope for him. But if you look at the polls, it's it's actually getting stronger. His support is getting stronger. And and Trump is not going to go to jail. If anything, this these cases are going to go all the way to the Supreme Court, and we know how the Supreme Court is right now. Uh, you know, 
well balanced. Let's put it that way. And all the shenanigans they're doing against him is it's it's all garbage because everything they're accusing Trump of doing. Guess what? Everybody else has done it in the past, and they continue to do it. So you know, it's it's all a game, a dangerous game for that matter. But it, it's all a game. Thomas, please let me let me counter this our friend here. You see, sometimes Prince Daddy, you say certain things that just make me like just wonder. Sometimes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> do you do you sometimes sit down and listen back to what you say? Some of, some of the things you say. Let me see all the things you say. Some of the things you say. And do you really give it a careful thought just to understand from one side to the other? The same thing we're talking about the, the, the lady. You are accusing this is the same lady that went and talked about uh, a regime change in uh, Niger when she was one of the people that you said was used in removing a democratically elected governor, go, uh, president in the Ukraine. Yeah, I heard it. Hold on. I heard it earlier. But guess what? I, I totally agree with you. But in what you said, but this is about it is all about interest. They can kill us about, you know, if there's a coup in the jail, whatever. What is Americans foreign policy interest? That's what matters. And I told you about Ukraine. Ukraine is a breeding ground for American politicians and all their their cronies. And it's very important, that they, and, and also that Ukraine is strategically strategically uh, uh, next to um, Russia, and trying to you know it's it's all and trying to get Ukraine into NATO and trying to kind of suffocate Russia. It's all part of the strategic plan of America and NATO. So it's all about interest. You're right. Everything that you know, Nolan seems to be want to be doing in uh, in in Niger. She herself, she's done it. You remember I said earlier when she came to Nigeria right before the election and Mokwe was uh, uh, asking her a question and the and the, a response to the question was like, oh, yeah, America. Oh, it was about Ukraine war, something like that. And she was like, oh, yeah, I mean, America is against um, um, uh, what Russia did going around the world in the nation. And I was just chuckling because because uh, Mokwe did not even counter her by telling her that, hey. What about Americans, um, uh, uh, quote unquote, um, regime change around the world? She didn't even say nothing like that. I remember making a comment on the on the, on the channel's television to 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 respond to that clip. So yeah, you can accuse her, but uh, yeah, exactly what she does. So it's all about interest, rational mind. You know that. I know it's about uh, it's about uh, interest, but the point is this: when when you paint one people like the devil, and the other people <laughs> the, the wicked devil of the devils. I mean, it, that's just, just, that just, be, just, it just baffles me how we sometimes just paint other people as devil when they, they, are, they are the most worst of the whole of a devil or even demon, demon, devil themselves. So if you, because of your national, I mean, it's their own interest. This, this school leader thinks that it's in the interest of, the, I mean, in their own interest that Niger should extricate himself from this Western influence, especially this um, orcish um, uh, exploitation of their country whereby. They, they get all this, uh, just like what Nigeria is currently going through too, whereby all our resources is in the hands of a few people. They just make it, they come and bring in ships and just go with cr loads of um, crude oil that were never accounted for. And some people become so rich from it. So why can't we also, in them in Niger, talking about the Nigerians now, talking about why can't we just have control of our own resources and let them stop, uh, let these people call the shot for us. If you take one, one tons of our, of our, of our uranium, and it's supposed to be sold for like four hundred dollars in the world market. If you guys can give us two hundred dollars and you go with two hundred dollars, that's okay, that's fine. But you people want to go with three hundred dollars, three hundred fifty dollars, and give us fifty dollars because we are just we're we're, we're SO of the country. Is that why you give us fifty dollars? We don't know how what to do with money. Only people know how to, how to use money to develop your own country. So next, look, I would give three hundred fifty dollars, but they're giving them five fifty dollars. Right. You think you're breaking up? Am I breaking up? You're good now. You're good. Yeah. Yeah. So why why would they be taking our resources when we could also sell these resources to you directly? And you pay us that hundred dollars that you're supposed to pay us, or even pay us three hundred dollars. And you, if you like, one sell it for four fifty, sell it whatever. At least we are making more money from it. You see, the same thing that is going on in Congo. But but, but who do you blame, though? Who do you blame? Yeah, you go. You see, this is this is a, this is a topic we should be talking about. This is what we should be we should be discussing. Who do we blame? It's not as easy as you're saying. You cannot say we okay. Look at like okay. Let, let us use our country as a, as, a, as a case reference. You cannot blame the people because the leaders that Nigerians get are not the leaders they voted for. Example, the one that is currently there. 
I tell you, he's not the one who voted for. Ah, rational man, what are you talking about, okay, bro? Okay. What are you talking about? Oh, now, oh God. <laughs> fine, fine. I never declared him as a president. But I'm a, <laughs> I'm a people were allowed to vote. So you see, how did they, how did they, how did they, how did they even get the ticket of his, of his party? Is it because he's so that good? Is that why they gave him that gave him that ticket? It's not because he bought he bought his way. Ah, come on, come on. Everybody bought their way. Uh, yeah. Peter yeah. Obi bought their bought, bought his way. Isn't Let it? So if if you see, you see. It's so complex. Peter Obi bought his rational mind. Let me ask you. Okay. Did Peter Obi Gregory yeah, so. did he bought his way <laughs> yeah. in Labour Party to get their ticket? Yeah, you tell me that now. You tell me that. Uh, did he, I'm way. asking you. It's a question. I, I don't. I don't think he did. Never did. He never did. Yeah. Do they carry Do they carry out primaries? 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 Somebody, they, somebody, they all stand. They, they all, uh, I mean, step down on, on a post for him. Is, is is that democratic? Uh, yeah, because they did it in um in uh, what's it called? Uh, in 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 the case of uh, uh what's it called? Uh, um, Labour Party. They all stood down for him. Nobody contested with him. Is that but, democratic? Yeah. It's, is it, that well, democratic? It's, it's the same thing because APC did the same thing too. Men, no, men, no, they did it. They had they, the they did. Okay, let me tell you. If you know, if you don't know, let me tell you. During the primaries, all the people that bought forms, uh, your your Ekiti state governor was one of them. Your other other people were all one of them. They all stepped down for him. Even this woman that they, they denied her, was it denied her ministerial list now? She was also part of people that bought form and they stepped down. One uh, cross river guy, I mean river state guy. What's that name? Um, what's that boy? That guy, that young man. Ayade. Ayade. No, Ayade. I think Ayade too. I think Ayade too. No, I'm talking about uh, River State. One guy from River State, like that. He said, step, so a lot of them stepped down for him. The, the rational man, you, you call you compare apple and oranges. It, it, this is not the same. It's not the same. You know that. That's a question. He said, what's the, what is at the root of it? The root of it is that the people do not get the leaders they want. Yeah, 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 yeah. The Western people can make some forces um, under the control of the Western influence. The money bags within Nigeria, they call the shot. They put whoever they want to put there. The right person doesn't get there. That's the point, because the people who are fighting against this this behemoth of, of 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 criminals organization in that country. The same thing in Niger. There are some people that are making money out of the poverty in Niger. Bazoum is one of them. And so, if you can allow France to be coming and exploiting our resources and not asking them to pay the fair share amount of money they should be paying, not because at the end of the day they will give you some 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 euro. Uh, just to make you do okay so that you can look the other way and let them continue shipping out their stuff then they said no you will not we will not allow you and also the mismanagement you handle the way you are and handle the insecurity over there if you are in the northeast uh in the north uh, west and northeast part of the, the country it's only a problem they felt that this thing cannot come especially economic economic economically niger has no has no reason to be that really that poor i'm not saying they should not be poor they won't be poor it's an african landlord country but they should not be that poor the mass poverty we say that country should not be. The there should be distribution of wealth. So at least, at least 40% of that country should be at least okay, like in the middle class. If not, only 60%, but at least 40%. But you see mass poverty in that country, and you have all these resources. They have gold, they have uranium. And then recently they discovered oil and they laid down pipeline to, to Benin Republic. So they have no business in being that too poor. But because some people you are know, a puppet to this Western uh, influence, and as long as they are puppet to them, they'll give them some euros in thousands of euros or millions of euros, and they look the other way and they make policies that will make that will favor them to continue exploiting their countries. Even this Bazoom, this election that brought Bazoom, it was contested. Look at how he jailed, uh, they said he jailed uh, his op uh, opposition. He jailed the guy. The same thing what this uh, is it Maki in uh, Senegal did, where he was jailing his own, his own. I mean, these people they get there, they become a despot of their own. They are civilian dictators. Look at what the uh, Kagame is doing in uh, in uh, in uh, Rwanda. This is the same guy that pursued uh, that, that brought in war during the uh, genocide, and he said they were fighting. Uh, uh, Ari, what, what did they call it? He said they are liberation army. Then oh, the people revolutionary army. People think oh, revolution has come. We've seen a leader that will liberate us. But look at how, although he has he transformed. Don't get me wrong. He has brought brought prosperity. To, uh, um, to Rwanda in some ways, but it became a leader 
that nobody can can, can ever remove. Every election you do is the only in the only in the only be the leader with the the boss make the leader. So you see all this never, they, ne they never allow opposition to operate. Exactly. This and it change, change, change the constitution. They change the constitution. To give him to give him for to let him stay for like everlasting. Exactly. Yeah, everlasting president. This was the same person that was pursuing the, the, the former president they had there before the before the genocide. There were the people that were like they went on exile because they felt you see um, our people, it's it's not as easy. Um uh we are fighting against a very huge criminal organization in the person of in the, in the people of uh, the western influence and our own corrupt criminals within them within our within us that are using in that country that continent you know but until we see a true revolution a true one not the kind of revolution that i mean this one that, that they're doing in niger too, who knows how it's going to turn out get to the, the, the guy might say okay next to the next moment now i want to become civilian okay. it's a rational man see oh, sorry um um so cuba you know cuba right cuba they don't have um a lot of natural resources just put it that way so even though the, the communist um uh, fidel castro and his brother rahu uh, have a uh, a strong grip on, on on cuba but um you know they were able to use intellectual um you know what you call it a resource to develop the country, quote unquote, in terms of uh, educating their doctors and and uh, you know having a, a more robust uh, medical industry, whereby they do um, you can say export their doctors around the world. What is stopping uh, many African countries from doing the same thing, like Niger, for example? Because like yesterday, right, I was making the point that hey, uh, what about Nigerians too? use the uranium that they have in their country to produce uh, electricity rather than depending on nigeria and people are like oh what do you mean uh you know niger they pretty much saying the, niger the nigerians are not that smart to be able to uh to do that <laughs> so if that been the case wh who's to be blamed the europeans the french they actually know what to do with the natural resources just like most resources in africa okay so at the end of the day um, as much as we like to point fingers at the white men and the Europeans and the Americans, we have a hand in it. It's our greed and selfishness that has kept kept us Africans in, in the in the state that we are. Not so much to do so much natural resources. The, the other ways to develop your country. Uh, Japan, for example, back in the days, they did not. Japan is not up to now. They're not really well known for natural resources, but they built the economy and became the, the second largest economy in the world based on intellectual knowledge they they they, they became the master of uh, uh electronic uh, miniaturization they they perfected it that the rest of the world began to buy electronic from from japan china was nowhere but what was not japan's number one natural resources so we africans we are backwards in everything we, we just like to point fingers and blame one person or, or the other for our problems we are the but selfish Japan, ones. No, I mean, never, ne Japanese never went through um, and slavery like uh, African people. So, but by, I, Jale, like, well, have you been through slavery yourself? Uh, what did you say? Have you been through slavery yourself? <laughs> are, are we not? No, are I think not? Not? Okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold okay. on. What are we doing in a foreign land? What are you doing in America? Uh, I I don't rem I don't remember coming by by slave ship. I don't remember doing that. <laughs> what are you doing in America? What am I doing? I don't remember. <laughs> the plane ticket was really expensive. I tell you that. So I don't know about all about that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, long time slavery, man. Um, yes. Destroy destroy us as African people. Japan never went through that path. Never ne never been subjected to slavery. As a matter of fact, Japan colonized Japan colonized China as some as some as some uh, point in history. So Japan was one of the greatest power in the world uh, before America went to destroy them with atomic weapons. 
but, 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 but that, that, that is but that's all excuse it though you may, the israel the state of israel we're talking about here it became a nation like you no know, they started gathering no, themselves no, no, in 1948. No, no. You, see, you see this argument this argument that oh israel became this israel became that it's america that is behind israel if African countries are given reparation, <laughs> reparation are given, you think we'll not be better? Yeah, you think we'll not be better off today? You think we'll not be why better do off we? Today? Why do we need reparation so, when we have trillions or trillions of natural resources beneath our, our oh, lands? Oh, why oh, do we no, need reparation? That is not the issue. How many Jews were killed during the Second Republic? I mean, the Second World War? They, they claim over million. six million. Million. How many Africans were killed during the during the slavery? Many Africans. I got it because you're breaking. I don't know. Is it me that is breaking? No, no, it's him. It's him. I got it. We are breaking. Oh, yeah. Now we can see you. Now we can hear you. Can you hear me now? No. Yeah, we can hear you now. Okay. So, it, 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 look. Let the Western world that give. Even to them. Let us be given and let's see if we won't develop on our own. Let them give us all the support that we needed to be great. All those supports were given to, to Israel, including taking land for them. What are we talking about? We are not giving uh, anything. You know, it, there, there's, there's <laughs> truth in what you're anything. saying, but, but let's... But, but rather, the, the, we were no. not left alone. We were not left alone. They, 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 I mean, they, they held us in bondage up to today. They never left us alone <laughs> to develop on our own. You think we don't want to develop on our own? At any time that you see African countries have a great leader, patriotic leader, they want to take their country to the promised land, they will plan coup and destroy that person. So, don't let us um, um, disparage ourselves or look at ourselves as, oh, we have too much problem, and that is why they are the one creating problem among us. I got to go. Let, let, me, let me help you with something. You see, you see, you see um, uh, guys, you see, the, the, the problem facing Africa is so humongous, it's so huge. That if we don't see them as a problem, it's very difficult for us to understand why we are where we are. You see, apart from the slavery, which is which maybe is also one of the things that one of the, those things that is at the core of the problems in Africa. You see, this mentality of not embracing our own language uh, in Japan that you're talking about, they teach their kids in their language. School is done in their language. In Israel, it's in Hebrew, the yeah, modern Hebrew language or Jewish language. Go to Germany, all these countries that are advancing, even China, the mode of learning is in their own language. Now, you, you give birth to kids in like country like Nigeria, and very diverse too, whereby you see multi, multi languages there. And then you decide to want to use English as a mode of instruction, whereby these kids, they go home, their parents speak to them, mostly like people like myself, and I'm not talking about now, uh, when we're growing up, our parents taught us, uh, they speak our local language to us, Yoruba. Uh, 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 so, I, 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 Rex, my friend, good father, do, do you believe that, as they say, that um, speaking multiple language actually helps improve IQ or I makes you, I don't know, is I, not? I, I agree, I agree. But okay, see, so, okay. so hold on, so, so, but if, I mean, so what is wrong with people speaking their own native language, Yoruba, Igbo, Aousa, and learning English and French in addition? Well, why is that so bad? Thank you. Because I'll just give you an example of models of countries that have done that. 
and how they succeeded. Tell me a country that you know, apart from United States and Canada, whereby you have the English people coming here and dominating over them here, besides this country. Tell me other countries you know that apart from their indigenous language and they embrace a European language and they are prosperous. Tell me, give me an example. Give me an example. You hardly find any. You hardly find any. Because they use their own language mode of instruction. And I, I'm not saying you might not find, but you might, I, I don't think there's any right now. So my point is this. You see, that is one of the things that are at the core of our problem. Because we've been, our, men, our mental mind, our, our mind has been so bastardized to make us feel inferior that we have to learn a foreign language for us to be successful, to, to learn, to understand. If our language has been promoted, we, we so if I'm if I'm not mistaken, in India, I think the the, the method of instruction okay, is okay, English. Tell me, where is India? How is India progressing? Tell me. Tell well, me. In India, in terms, of, come on, you know, in terms of um, like I software, you in, in terms go. of. Go on, please. Go on, please. In, in terms of software, in you know, in, uh, uh, India has nuclear weapons they, okay. that they develop themselves. Okay. okay? Uh, when it comes to software engineering, software in general, for the past 50, year or 50 years or so, they are one of the top nations in the world. Perhaps they have the, the largest number of such professionals in the world. Are you done? Are you done? Are you done? Are you Go done? ahead. Okay, good. Thank you very much. You give me an example. Having a nuclear power is not an uh, example. Pakistan has a nuclear power, the nuclear power state. <laughs> Look at how Pakistan is. Just like Nigeria, if not even worse off than Nigeria, maybe like a little bit better than Nigeria. Even, even India that you are talking about, go to Mumbai, go to all those places. You see this slum, heavy slum, real heavy slum. People are seeing poverty. Maybe you can say like, well, a lot of the population are doing better because a lot of them, they travel abroad a lot. And maybe especially those people who, are, who travel abroad, they come back with, uh, with wealth. They build the country or they build more, they create wealth. Yeah, yeah I'll give it to them for that. But India is, is not even a good example of what we're talking about here. We know they speak English. They use English um, in their mode of uh, instruction in their schools there. But my point is this, that it's not even a good example of development. I agree that the, there's prosperity in some, in, some, in some ways. But why is it that some of them have to go abroad before they can make it? Some of them. Why is it that some of them have to travel abroad? Indians are the most, the most traveled single nation in, on earth. Anywhere you go, you see, you see Indians. And when they, wherever they go, like Nigerians, they prosper. They become big. They, 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 they get, acquire wealth. You see them build, having big, big tall, house, tall, tall houses in, in Canada. Even here in America, you see them they build homes. They own gas stations. They run a, a, lot of, um, a lot of hotels here. Most of the wealth is from within, I mean, within America here. They got it. And they were very good at it. They're very cheap. They're very wise. I mean, they know how to spend money, how to, use, how to, how to make uh, money and spend money. So a lot of them that you're talking about, like Nigerians, they also acquire this money from outside. I'm not saying you don't see Indians that make money within India, but it's, it's, it, most of their billionaires and millionaires is from outside. So the point I'm trying to make here is this, you see, the, the problem with Africa is so much that I just don't see a way out of it. It's just so, yeah, it's, uh, the, more I just, the more we just go, it just keeps getting worse and worse. And again, I well, even, even that India that you're talking about, do you know that uh, it is adopted uh, there that the language of uh, teaching in school must be their local language? Hello, can somebody hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Yes, yes, yes. The, yes. The, the, the Indian language, yes, yes. they do. Yes. But you, you, you know, in. in and uh, depending on the Indian local government or the state, the land, the dominant language is the language. Particularly, I mean, they even they even go down to local government. Any language that is peculiar to the people in that local government is what must be adopted as language of the India. Oh, oh, okay, so okay, so if you go on this uh, on this conversation, one second, it's going to go so, forever. So. Which you and Angelica go? Oh no, Angelica go and write the mind. One voice. Um, hold on, hold on. Um, Prince, uh, Prince Daddy, let Angelica go land. Angelica go land it. Yeah. So English is just a subject 
they don't use English to teach them in school. It's the language in that in their community, in their locality, that is adopted as a language of uh, teaching in their school. They don't. They have several languages, as we have in Nigeria. So, it's language of their locality. Each locality that uh, is is adopted to teach in the school, and and. Uh, and you, you can see them how they are progressing. They are working stronger every day. And we are lagging behind. So language is very important, you know. When you don't adopt your language to your school, they can't do better. They cannot. But Ajali Koko, okay. Ajali Koko uh, yes. please, before you come in, let me push you back. But if they get out of India, if they come to the West anywhere, they still have to learn English. No, they, they don't communicate learn English. to make that wealth. No, they can even speak English because the the English is one of the subjects compulsory. In their curriculum. Subjects. Yes, in their curriculum. Yes. They can speak English. But in their school, it is their own local language that they use it to teach them in school. Their local language. So English is one of the compulsory um, subjects they have to do, but it's not the language of teaching in school. It's their local oh, language. There you go. Yes. There you go. Prince, yeah. Let's have one, Prince. Yeah, you see, this argument that um, language is the, is the problem of black people or Africans where they can progress in, in, in society, I can never buy into it. I, I can never buy into it because we, we go out of our ways to learn new languages all the time. And, um, and for that reason <laughs> that, you know, we cannot be successful or do things by ourselves because we speak, speak somebody else's language. But this, this argument, uh, the premise of this argument is not entirely true because it, nobody, I mean, there are a lot of people in Nigeria that don't speak English. I mean, they, they don't, they speak their local languages in the rural areas and in, in the villages. I mean, it, at the end of the day, I see this as, as, as a big ex excuse. It's, it doesn't, it doesn't serve anybody. The black people I'm talking about, it doesn't serve as well. To think that because of a, uh, because of a language that we can speak multiple languages is the reason why we can't we can't think straight, and 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 waiting for somebody to pay us uh, reparation. Let me come in, Prince, um, Prince Daddy. What I'm what I'm telling you is that it created a barrier to some of our children that will have excelled well in school if they are taught. No, I don't yeah. think I don't think it's is basically our children that is the problem. When we are talking about language um, being a barrier, let's let's put it in the in the what, what will I say like the age race of maybe forty something above or maybe thirty something above. That is where we are going to put it at because right now I mean almost everybody grow up learning english so it shouldn't be a barrier because knowledge is is basically knowledge yeah but when you're talking about people that can't even understand english which is almost 87 60 70 percent of africans in that age age uh, age bracket that can understand english then you have to make it in such a way that you have to teach them in the language they can understand and if you do that that progresses the society it's a simple thing when and they go who is stopping can't... them from doing it I, we're just talking now is a barrier that's what i'm saying i'm not saying i'm not the government that is supposed to bring out a policy like that it's none of my business i'm just saying it's a barrier <laughs> based on you can't those people that don't even know how to read or write english they can't understand and they can't learn whatever you're saying so it becomes a problem do you understand that yes what, what, what uh, look, let me let me tell you this look in in um 
many of our places, other than the city, uh, other than the, the metropolitan city, if you go to rural area um, in our country, across the length and breadth of our country, they speak at home in their local languages, right? So when the children now go to school, elementary school, high school, they teach them everything in English. So some of these children that doesn't excel well academically in school, some of them, if it had been in their local languages that they are taught in school, maybe they would have, they would have been <laughs> what, percentage put, what, what percentage would you put on it? What percentage would you put on it? Uh, percentage. Okay, I would say um, for those that are not doing well in school, um, I would put like 80%. If they have but if they see, language, they would have been doing better than English language because the parent doesn't speak English to them at home, right from the baby till seven years old when they started elementary school. Uh, I don't know. But, oh, oh, well, let me let me answer oh, quickly before you go. Please. Sorry, one second. No, See, no, do you do you know people? In, Hold on. You put those children in a state of confusion. They be struggling. They no, no, no. I, want I to speak English because they know it's the gibberish that they be speaking. Hold on, I just let Coco. Do you know? Let let uh, Prince come back at you. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, do you know that people travel to like China or Germany and learn the language first? Then when they learn the language, they go to school and, and, and get their degree. So uh, learning a language is like learning any other subject, subject really. Is it be math or, or chemistry or physics? It's just learning. If you have the capacity to learn, that is the brain power to learn and, uh, and comprehend. What is the big deal about learning a language and using that language to 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 work or do some other things? It's, it's just learning. So, so the, 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 um, the fact that you, you, you use uh, learning a language to learn, if you have a, a native tongue as a crutch, why these people are not smart to me is really troubling. That means you, you rather question rather the, the, the intelligence of the black people or the Africans that they can learn. Because they speak another language, that's why they're backward. That's why they can't uh, progress. Because they learn uh, Yoruba at home, they go to school, they learn things in English, they become confused. I don't believe that. Especially oh, at a young prince, age. The especially at a young age. Or the, well, especially at a young age, children have the ability to learn multiple languages. And they quite, the, 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 the acumen at this point in time is really, really sharp. So you make an excuse for these kids. That I don't believe that's the reason why they can't learn. Please, Daddy. Please, Daddy. <laughs> let, let me get, hold on, hold on. Uh, I gotta go. Continue. Let me give you an example of you, Prince Daddy. Prince Daddy, you on this platform, you've come once upon once. once there was a time, I think, when you nearly started coming here. I'm sorry, it was you that made that comment. You said, I'm having I'm I'm making, I've become a Badorian now. <laughs> 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 I'm making a lot of you know, you know, you know, APC and you think that Bado, okay. So, you you came here, you said before you, when you were like, uh, uh, I it too, so you are a secret closet. <laughs> the noble, are you saying? I have a I have I have a 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 I I have a I have a I have a I a I that you never really understood things that were taught to you in Nigeria. But until when you came to the United States, you it became so like, oh my goodness. Like the mode of treating here was just so different. This was the same you that said that. Do you know why it was different? Because you were in a society where everybody around you speaks English. It's easy, it's easy for you to understand. But when you live in a multilingual country like Nigeria, you become so confused. In At home, your parents speak, uh, speak, uh, speak, uh, speak local dialect. 
You go on the street, the street, I mean, the kids, they speak different languages. They try to adapt. You go to school, a different language. You'll be so confused. This is the same you that said it here. I'm sure you said it. But, um, no, my, my, my point of correction, I don't think it was, wasn't me, but I said something similar to that in this, it, when it came to the, the, the area of spirituality that I, I, I understood it much better in the West than I did back home. But in terms of learning, it wasn't me. Okay, maybe not you. Okay, I'm, I take it back then. But I know somebody said it here, which I'm sure it was you, but you said it was you, but no problem. We have recordings here. Guys, go and dig back. Go and dig to Go and look. Go and search your uh, praise daddy, whatever you said. I know you said it. Call, call on Pansat. Pansat <laughs> will dig it up for, for you. <laughs> so, the point I'm trying to make is this. You see, when you teach kids in a language that is predominantly spoken around them, they do better. But when you... I'm not saying that the kids are not smart when they learn many, many languages. I mean, people with many languages like me, I speak so many languages. So, but then that doesn't make me like I'm super, super smart. But uh, smart, but then I would say I'm, I consider myself as a little bit smart because I can think in different languages, did that language. But the point is this: when it comes to instruction, you can understand why are the, why are Germans doing better? Why are the Czechians? I mean, Czech people doing better? Why are the uh, Latvians doing better? Why are the Russians doing better? It's because they teach their kids when they are in the classroom. They think first, and it, you need to understand the process of language. How long, how language, how you process language in your head. If you're a bilingual person or a multilingual person like myself, you will know how to, you know, understand what I'm trying to say. Because you have to think in many languages. I mean, if I were to speak in French now, I have to think in French. I have to switch from my English, from my English or from my Yoruba to speaking in French. If I have to speak in English, I have to switch from French or from Yoruba to speaking English. You know how, uh, you know how tasking that is. It makes you smart, yeah, but you know how tasking mentally that is. So you need to understand that there's a process to language. You have to think in that language. So if you live in, a, in, a, in an environment where a particular language is spoken, you try better because that's the language that is spoken. Not that you go home, you, you hear a confusing language, you get uh, to school another confusing language because you have to multitask in these different languages to be able to process what you're going to see, how you're going to say it, how you're going to reason, how you're going to write things out. It takes a lot. I got uh, rest of my, this, um, because you're speaking language doesn't mean you know the syntax or how to write the language itself. I mean, that's I, I know the syntax. I'm telling you the process. That's what I'm telling you. No, no, no. I'm not claiming to be honest. But, but there, are a lot of, there are a lot of people that no, live in the villages, in the rural areas. They, they don't speak English. They speak their local languages. Huh? And there are, a lot of people that, there are a lot of people that live in the rural areas in africa they, they don't they don't have access to the city they speak their local languages and they do all these things you know that they do there but um how much innovation comes out from those places since they're not exposed to english since english is such, is such a bad uh, uh uh language for them so to speak or french they, they keep to their own community they do their own things they're not exposed to multiple languages how much innovation has come out from those so from such places that's my question that is where Hold on, Baba uh, Prince Daddy. That is where education will come in. Speaking language, a particular language is one thing. Educating the people to read and write and develop that language is another thing. So when you don't give education to your people, you cannot develop your language and you cannot develop well in every areas of life. So education is very important. So look, this issue of language that we are talking about, to teach in our own, you know, local language against English or any other language, it has been experimented in Ibadan. And the result shows that teaching our children in Yoruba language or Igbo language can produce better um, um, uh, results than teaching them in English language. It was experimented by Dr. Uh, um, uh, 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 Professor Fafunwa, he, he had a school in Ibadan, and some group of students started from 
Form 1, or maybe let's say GSS 1, as it's called today, Form 1, they were teaching them in Yoruba language, all the subjects, except English. English is, a, is just one of the subjects. It is not the language of teaching. It is Yoruba that they adopted to teach in that school. So geography were taught in Yoruba language, biology, chemistry, everything. They went from form one to form five, like GSS one to GSS to SSS three. And the sat at the end, when the result of WIA came out, 95% of them met the requirement of having five credit at a go. But, but, uh, Jali Coco, how do you learn? Let me, let me come first. Let me let me learn. Okay, okay, finish. So, about 90% or 95% of the students pass their WIAC. They make that required five credit at a go to have admission into university. Whereas their counterparts that were taught with English language all the way through from DSS1 to DSS3, only 40% of those one pass make five, 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 um, 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 uh, uh, made their five credit at a go. Only 40%. So that man experimented and proved to us that we are wasting our talent in Nigeria by not teaching our children, our local, using our local languages to teach in school. What's the, what's the man's name again? Professor Babatu de Fafuwa. Yeah, was former Minister of Education. Former right? Minister of Education. Uh, um, one man, can I come in a little? To support so, what Angelico said. Okay. Yes, yeah, come in. Perfect. Okay, you see, the, what Angelico said is actually truth. J just look at look at the um, Bible. The Bible is the only language in Africa that is translated into every local language, and that is why you see when you talk of the Bible, our people understand the Bible very very well because it's taught in their mother tongue. It's taught in their own local language. Imagine where you you teach children physics, chemistry, biology in their own local language. They will understand it more when you're teaching them in English. Because if you look at but, it... But let me come in there, please. I don't know. Okay. It, it's more like it's, 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 it sounds so easy in the mouth. Because now, if I'm processing it in my brain, it's telling me that how can you even start to think of, let's say, a Yoruba language and have a word like, let's say, photosynthesis. What is the word <laughs> going to be? <laughs> what, is, <laughs> what is the word <laughs> going to be? Let me answer. Can I answer that question? Can I answer that question, please? Okay, please. answer it. You see, that is where one you man, go. one man, just give me, yeah. You see, the Japanese, they have word for photosynthesis. They develop that word for photosynthesis. Why can't Chinese we? do. They you can do the same. The Germans do. Everybody did it. Why can't who, we do it? Why, who is why stopping us from developing those words? Okay, excuse me. All the Bible languages, in all the words in the Bible, um, English words in the Bible, because the Bible was written with, um, by the English, by uh, um, King James Version. But in, in our local language, you have words for all those English words in the Bible. Why we can can't we do the words. same in the science books? Why can't that's, we do it the same in the science books? That's not stopping us. We're just not serious. That's all. We're not exactly. Thinking. That is what. That, that if we is, want to do it, we can do it. We can do it. You, you, you see, guys. You see, I, uh, Professor ba Baba Tunde Fafuma was one renowned educationist that I will always respect. That guy brought in during those times. He brought in reforms. Many of his reforms never saw the light of the day. There is three six six or what was that? What was that um, method of uh, education? Is it three, is it three 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 six six whatever. If we had followed that process. Um, I think we will not be where we are today. So that man brought a lot of re reforms. I mean, this one, this one that uh, the people was saying to me, and you said to us now, is new to me. I never knew about this research. But I know this guy is an educationist. He's a researcher. 
it does a lot of research. I mean, that was when it came up with that uh, 3355, five, whatever system it brought that time. So my point is this. What has, ever, what has happened, happened to our, our education in that country whereby we used to have researchers that sit down, sit down, and they devise our curriculum for us? I don't even hear, now all you hear is, hey, uh, uh, well, they, they are striking. Uh, they have to get paid. Uh, Lecturer is sending it down. And it's under too, I just um, have big kind of um, instruction that are not really in depth. So you just wonder, oh, I can't, oh, I, oh, why would not, why would it not, try, okay. I don't know if you guys have seen, okay, let me, uh, there's something I was thinking I wanted to say initially. Uh, um, Thomas, I don't know if you can pull up that video for us, if one, one man can allow you. There's a picture, of, there's this video of a small boy in, um, a little boy, a little small lad. He was um, trying to express himself. They asked him in English. To, they asked me a question in English. I think it was in a school, like what is the uh, make house, make house uh, get peace. This small, small uh, lesson school like that. They pick, that's little child. They were asking a question in English. He was having a hard time expressing himself in English. But what did he do? He was not explaining in your in Yoruba language. That tells you a lot. If a child is having a trouble to express himself, I can tell you, my little granddaughter here, as little as it is. If you start speaking English like this, mouth so sharp. You see, when you get me, Tom, the party, I got done. I'm talking about your grandfather. When he speaks, he speaks so fast. He goes to school, he hears um, English, he comes home, the dad and mom they speak English to her, and she's not confused. So this little boy, this little boy could not express himself in uh, in English. He was even trying to mix English with. I, I, I hope I, I hope my could forever was part of the video. Wait, so are you are you all saying that in a country like Nigeria as we are now, the three major tribes, you know, by outside Igbo, are you saying that the, they should not be they should not learn how to speak English or they no, should no, not be no, speaking that's English? Not that's not what we're saying. That's not you what we're saying. Uh, sure. Can I come oh, in, please? Uh, so what I uh, what are you saying then? Cool. Now, just this, to, this, uh, this, um, um, uh, let me just say something, please, please. You see, the problem we had in Af uh, in Nigeria, the, thing, uh, the the problem we had in Nigeria is this: we will have adopted a language, even if it's Aosa, even if it's Yoruba, even if it's Igbo. We just make it a national language, just one of the languages. That is uh, just like what Ghana did, you know. Just make no, one no. language. If Aosa is widely spoken, we just speak one language, Aosa language. And if you look at this language, this language will bind us together. It will kind of bond us. Uh, it will uh, this, this, us. There's no, nothing wrong with the English, though. There's nothing wrong with oh, Hold on. Let, let me because interject real quick. English is a universal language. I the person is speaking. I know it's a universal language, but at least our when you teach our kids in their local language, they will understand more. More. They will sir, understand more than the, when you okay. teach them in English. Quick question for you. Quick question for you, sir. So look at this. So a Yoruba person is going to have to learn to speak Aousa, right? Okay. Is there a learning challenge or curve to learning Aousa as much as English? Or there's not there's no barrier. Is that what you're saying? Okay. It should be like that. What I'm saying, what I'm saying, when we had independent in the 60s, when we had if they had adopted a language, uh, it, it, because you cannot make you cannot um, um we have three major languages in Nigeria. You understand we have so so many languages anyway, but you cannot put these three languages in one language. You cannot do it. It's very difficult. Why not speak a language like the way the Ghanaians did? Other countries no, did no, no, and they picked a language and they no, 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 no. I, I don't think that's a good. Uh, that, that, that's just uh, uh, a, a fancy. A fancy. <laughs> Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> we should have gone the Indian way that adopted that, you know, your local language. You, should be adopted as a language of teaching in school. You see, when when but should people also be able to communicate in English as well? And, and people can yes, and they are taught in English too. Yes, but what about me, what about government? I tell you, I tell you, I want to ask you something. I want to ask you a question. Like, if, mm. if you look at the Indian president, when the Indian president wants to talk to the nation, he talks to the nation in one language. In one language, yeah. just like the Chinese, you know, Chinese have met different different languages in China. They have different. They have yes. Mandarin. They have Cantonese. They have this. But they they adopted a the Mandarin. The Mandarin is from the northern part of China. They adopted it and they are speaking it. Every mm. country is just like that. You understand? So 
what I'm saying, it will be much easier because wow. if we, if we, if we are, if we're saying now that our president should talk to us in in, in our local Ooh. language, which language is he going to talk to us in? Uh, the dead. You know, See, would, in a, in, in Amer one second, in America, for example. I'm not sure what percentage of the uh, of the English people, the, the, the Midwater people that came to America compared to the rest of the uh, American population, of course, which is composed of the Irish, the Italian, name them all, the Germans. They all, too, had to learn English language, you know, to be part of America. That was not their native language. What is the problem? What, what is the problem you guys have so much about learning English or a, a different language? To me, to me, it's, it's just a... a, a uh, a subject, so to speak, to learn, especially if you learn from a, a younger age. I don't believe it's that even because an you. It's can an I, asset can, I, can I answer your question? I, I, I agree. I agree. Let let me, me, exactly. I agree that it's an asset. I if, agree. If Nigeria was a francophone country, I would say that I will like this. This point that you're making, that some of us are making, will have a stronger point because in uh, French compared to English, I mean English is just way more spoken and way it just accepted as the world's official. Uh, lingua franca language. So if a Nigeria business was a language, Franco, correct. If if Nigeria was a French francophone country, I would say we should. What what are we even doing with French? How many people in the world speak French? But I think as it is English, I think it's okay. But the local languages should not be taken for granted because they're actually dying. All the studies from the universities are saying that all of our local languages across Africa they're dying to the point that they're even predicting that they will soon be extinct. So locally, from the local governments and everything, they should be taught in local language. Uh, local language, but eventually, those pe those children were training should also learn how to speak English, uh, just a general language. I think that's the better option we have now. Well. Can I can I answer uh, uh, Prince Daddy's question? You see, what you're saying is that the in the English were the people who who colonized the United States. Oh, you know that. You know, you know that. The English are the people who colonized uh, the British, the old British Empire. They colonized, yeah, they colonized, hold on, they colonized the United States. You're aware of that, or you're aware, are you aware of that? Yeah, 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 the English. Right. So, the anybody yeah. The hold on, anybody, the, the language of administration then was English. Let's forget that the Native Americans were here. They too were also forced to adopt English as the mode of that's why you know you you, you you might know the story you know where the native americans are today how most of them are losing their languages the languages are dying most of their kids they cannot even speak their native um uh, la uh, native american language anymore you know how that goes now anybody coming in the irish the germans the swedes the uh norwegian that came after into america they had to learn english mind you a lot of those people who came in the 17th century, in the 18th century, in the 19th century, they were all, most of them were already skilled people who have already had training. People like Abad Einstein, all of them. They came into this country. They were already doing well in their respective countries as, as professionals. They understand language of instruction in their own local language, but they had to come here and learn it in English, or maybe they've already learned English before they arrived here. But the mode of instructions for most of them were their local language in, the, in Europe. They only just have to come in here and maybe learn English, but they already are excelling. So my point is this: you see that argument you're talking about. If you go to if you go to like places like uh, Switzerland, they have different cantons they call them, and then these cantons they have different places whereby you see the Germans speaks in one area, the uh, Italians are in one area, the French are in all one area, and the mode of instruction is the language of these areas. We were doing that in the fifties. We were doing that in the 50s. A lot of our languages were being taught as mode, mode of instruction. I can tell you for, for, for a fact, while growing up as a kid, my mom would read me a storybook in Yoruba. And my imagination then was so, was so, was so, I, I could think very well in Yoruba. I could imagine I could write things in Yoruba because that's the mode of instruction for my mom. When she taught me, she would read me storybooks. I will talk about Alawi uh, uh, then and all of that and Ejola, all those kind of things. We we'll talk about them. I still have uh, uh, I still have some memories of some of those storybooks that my mom read to me back then. And my imagination was so sharp as a kid. So the point I'm trying to make, you might not understand this maybe until when you find yourself into education, you might understand. As an myself as a teacher, 
I've come to realize that that you need for us to pro. You see, I'm not saying that's the that's the that's the major problem we have in Africa, but it's at the, at the very core of our problem in that country, which has which has also come as a result of the uh, slave trade or the colonization of Africa by the Europeans and the balkanization of Africa that has made us to like think ourselves as inferior to the Europeans because we feel that their language is more superior to us by adapting their own language so that we can learn their language before we can learn. No, we can do it. Uh, if, if, uh, we can adopt three in. languages. We can start with three languages or three, four major languages in areas where they are spoken and we ask everybody to be taught in that language. Or we'll go okay, to, okay, right, the mind. We can still speak English. Even, we can still be taught in school as a, as a side subject. That's what I'm saying. See, when it comes to language, I think the issue, I mean, of uh, uh, you guys made um, earlier or uh, prior, like uh, Angelica Coco, is that you lose your identity. Now, if you're talking about, about, about America, right? Yeah, all these different European people from Europe came to America, right? Um, but they have to learn English. Now, and, and did they have me, can, can, I, can I interject? It, you know, right, in sure. America, eh? Let, let him finish. Well, let him finish. Let me just interject oh, because oh. it let wasn't him. only English that was spoken in America. It was French. French controlled some areas. They were speaking French there. German. Many, many... Dutch, uh, many, many different languages they were speaking. So, so, sorry, Cyrus, you should have let him finish because he was in the middle of a thought, but, um, you know, okay. let him finish. I just want to, so people, go ahead, go ahead. There. Yeah, yeah, okay, thanks, yeah. So, um, yeah, um, just like you, to what you were saying also, yeah, initially, uh, by the way, I heard, I think it's written also, I'm not a master in American history, but they talked about, even before English was adopted as the official language, language in America, German was being considered also. I think just a few vote or one vote away, that's how they became an English-speaking country. That's America. So, but a lot of these people too, like the Italians, they didn't speak a lick of English, many of these Eastern Europeans. But when they came here, they had to learn English with their little children and they grew up and they adopted the English language and everything. Because in, well, in today America, you, you, can, you can learn in Spanish too. But in the beginning, it was strictly English. You had to learn English. Some people's name, when they even came to America, the white people I'm talking about, their names had to be changed, like some Italian names, to a more better sounding, so to speak, English names. So, but, but they didn't really lose the identity as is, it is a problem for a lot of people. In English. Therefore, we don't have an identity. We, can, we can't learn properly. See, the mind, as I believe the, the brain works like a computer, we have the ability to translate, you know, what you learn in one language to another. And I don't believe it's a barrier to learn something in another language. And by the way, the reason why it's easier for a child that speaks Yoruba, for example, to learn in school, because most things around that child is being um, uh, illustrated in the language in which they understand. Like, right, somebody said, uh, it was Des, I believe, said, um, how do you translate for the sentences in, in Yoruba, for example? How do you? See, even if you want to learn about uh, such a word in, in, in Yoruba language, it's, it's going to be so abstract to the learner because we, we didn't do the research or have the foundation of it. See, it has to be incorporated, you know, like the like the Chinese or, or the or the Germans, these people didn't just show up. So oh, we have photosynthesis in in our language, and this is what it means. Of course, it will mean nothing to the native speaker because that'd be a new word. It has to be uh, it, it ha their language has to be more robust to the point that that word becomes part of their their, their language itself. So you're not gonna go around and translate a bunch of you know long sounding biology words and and this. You know, academic words into Yoruba, and you think the native speaker will understand? That's a joke, and that's a lie, and we all know can that. I, uh, can I interject? Can I interject, please? Right. Just yeah. You see, when we talk about um, science books, translating science, um, um, the science book into our local languages, mind you, this science, all um, all this uh, um, education. Let, let me put it: science. Science didn't start in Europe. Science started in Africa. If you look at if you look at science, everything about science, everything just everything, science, geography, everything started in, in Kemet, which is now Egypt. And who built that civilization? It were the black people that built that civilization. It were people from the Yoruba, people from the Igbo, Ashanti, 
um, Ethiopia, um, you name it, in West Africa, they went to Egypt and built that civilization. No, West that's Africa. just fantasy talk, man. What is the documentation? No, no, no. What, is, what is the I'm historical record? You. So the word, the word photosynthesis didn't start in English. It didn't start in English. There were local words for it in, Egypt, in Africa, in Egypt, before nope. they now took it to Europe and translated it. So the thing is this. If, 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 let's, let's look at it. If we translate these words, we can trans if the Chinese could do it, the Japanese could do it, the Germans could do it, the, the Irish could do it, why can't we do it in, in, in Africa? Why can't we, after all, somebody was saying Professor Fafua was translating a lot of things. Then Fafua was also translating some science words into um, Yoruba, and these people could, uh, could do well in their, in, in their entrance exams. So we can actually do it, sit down. We, we, we just feel, I think, Africans are just being lazy to do anything. We are just being lazy to do anything. Let, let, let me ask a general question. Do you all think that we are going to do it or that we're just going to let everything scatter completely? No, no. The, the thing is that we don't have the willpower to do it. If we want to do it, we can do it. It's just going to take some time. Then we'll get used to, to the word photosynthesis and local languages. But does it look no. like we're going to focus on that area or we're just going to leave everything to mess up completely? Because I don't see, I don't no, no. see us focusing there. Okay, okay. I, I, I want to ask you. I want to ask you. When Samuel Ajayi Crowder was translating you, um, um, the Bible into 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 our local languages, you understand? They, he could do it. So there are people that can do it. You understand? We if they can translate the Bible into our local language, they can also translate science books, political books into our local languages. You know. So we shouldn't, we shouldn't say it's impossible. It's possible. It's just that we don't have the willpower to do it. That means we won't do it then. <laughs> <laughs> you well, know, that's, that's but see, it's, yeah. it's better for us. It's better for us to be African. We should do our thing. We should like everything we do in Africa should be African from the African prism, from the African concept, not from the European concept because it's gonna it's not gonna work for us. It if it works for them, it's not gonna work for us. That's see, it. yeah, the proposition. See, many times when Africans talk, you know, in this area, is you're you're thinking about these issues too rigid, because you know this this so-called French language and and the English language, even the Germans, they all borrowed, you know, language for for different things or words for different things from this other from from themselves from different languages, and 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 some of the words were not were not organic. To, to to them, for example, the, the, the Germans, right? But they adopted that word in their own language because the illustration and the understanding, the essence of that word came from a different language. So now they have to teach that word to themselves or, the, or their own people and gain understanding. The point here is that we're not going to be make Yoruba, you know, for example, the, the language for everything that we do because to many people, it would be abstract. It's not many of the science words that we know today will be far, it will be so much abstract from the understanding of the native speakers. So, again, learning a language, be English as French, I think is a plus. And I think people, and, and I think it's just like learning any other thing. You, you can learn something and master it. Just like we know many Africans have mastered the English language and they are quite successful around the world. So it, it's not a bad thing to learn a language. I don't think it's a handicap that holds us back, our children to, to learn, to be able to learn. And in, in regards to that research, I don't know much about that research that you, that you talked about, but um, to, to learn uh, chemistry in Yoruba, and and because of that, you are a better student. It's it's something I have to look into. I don't know all about that. It is it's, it's just know. like it's very it's quick for you to understand. I, I don't know why you're pushing back uh, at um, uh, this idea of speaking or teaching our students in our local language. I, I told you now the main. And it just shows that uh, um, our our children our children did better teaching them in the local language than teaching them in English. So what they say, and I told you that all these subjects were taught in Yoruba language. The the the, the man did it that the 
wrote all those um, um, uh, uh, biology books, chemistry, physics, they wrote all of them in, in the Yoruba language. Everything, geography, name it, except English. They had English as one of the curriculum, just one of the uh, uh, subjects taken in school, English. And they even passed that English in Wayek. As one of the subjects, they pass it better than those that were even taught in English. Oh. Did you understand what I'm saying? I hear you. I hear you, but I hear you. I hear what you're saying. English, English, English as a course in secondary school when they search for English in YA, they greater percentage of them had credit in English than those that were taught with English language for all the subjects in the school. And, and what, what do you think that was? What do you think that was? So obviously, it's, it, it, I was, okay, let, my question is, um, so these people that learned all the other subjects in, in Yoruba, they even did very well in English. So, so what is the connection? What is the correlation there? Well, the correlation. Uh, so, sorry, can, can Saki come into the conversation? Uh, he, he's been there, uh, Saki. Good to see you, Saki Fada. Yeah, wonderful. I just came quite late. So good, good evening, good morning, good uh, whatever to everybody here. I just came quite late. I, I came when all the talking points have been exhausted so far. But just to quickly ship into what you guys are saying, I dropped a message. I said, even Prince, that the reflects an apparent contradiction of his message in this case. You know, uh, the Prince Daddy that, you are, that is talking about Niger uh, we Africans thinking in African perspective and trying to teach our children in our local languages. You know, even you, you know, the way you speak here is an apparent contradiction because uh, yeah, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I don't know how you try to, you know, adapt to another accent that is divergent from the African <laughs> accent. Do you understand what I'm trying oh, to say? <laughs> Do you understand what I'm trying to say? So I feel it is... Uh, we should even start from there. There are some Africans, especially Nigerians, when they go abroad, they, either consciously or consciously, they try to adapt to fine tune their accent to the accent of the new place. You know? So I okay, think. Okay, Saki Fada, since you kind of asked a question, let me uh, ask, answer your question real quickly. So I don't know where you're going with that point because when I was in grad school learning Chinese, also Mandarin. Um, one of the the guys in the program is a Chinese guy also, a PhD in computer science. He was quite impressed with me. He said, wow, you're speaking Chinese with a Chinese accent. He was so impressed with me. So what, what is your point? If you're learning a little new language, or if you're talking to a people, they have to understand you. It's all about pronunciation. It's not so much about the damn accents. It's about pronunciation. Trust me, when I was learning Chinese, which I was pretty good, I mean, I'm not anymore per se, you know, but when I was learning Chinese, I was trying to learn Chinese speaking with a Chinese accent so people can understand me. That was the whole purpose. So you're maybe trying to make an argument. I mean, when I speak, the most people around me, they have to understand what I'm uh, what I'm trying to tell them or how I speak, how, how I pronounce my words to oh. their own understanding. It just make conversation conversation much easier. So you don't oh. have an argument right there. If I was learning Igbo, uh, I was also. By the way, I did learn Igbo also when I was little. And 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 I, when I was learning, I was also trust me. I was speaking. I was so that I was a uh, uh, pronunciation or or, or, or no, tone, no, so to speak. No, no, no. That is not what I'm trying to say. What I'm trying to say, in effect, is that if you want to take the perspective of having the mentality of the Africanism, the African mentality, in whatever you do, it then means that you should also try as much as possible to mainstream the African accent in whatever language you are learning, to show that you are trying to practice these preachings, 
because it is very, very simple to start from there. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? It's very, very simple to start from there. Since you are able to learn English language in English accent style, so to say, it is also possible for you to mainstream the African tradition, even while you are learning the English language. I'll give you an instance. I'll give you an instance. Somebody like Chino Achebe, you know, when he was alive, or rather, or rather there is somebody that is still alive today. You know, he's, he's a very popular, um, very popular um, Catholic uh, cardinal. His name is Cardinal Arenze. Arenze left Nigeria in 1965, you know, and came back in the late 2000s. So he lived abroad for more than, say, 40 something years, you know. But he even became a professor. He taught abroad, studied, the, went to different, different universities and taught. And still, when you see, when you hear him speak, you know, he tried as much as possible to maintain that very African identity. He tells you that that accent is... No, no it's not that he's, he's trying to... He was incapable of adjusting his accent. No, That's no, the difference. No, no, Trust no, me. No. I, okay, quick, let me tell you, I have an uncle here also that, you know, he was talking about a friend of his, right? The guy is brilliant. He's a, he's a Yoruba guy. He's a lawyer in, in America. He said the barrier to this guy was because his accent was so thick, people couldn't understand him. But the guy was so brilliant when he put things on paper, is like magic. So some people don't think everybody's capable of doing it. Just like learning. Not everybody's good at learning math or, or chemistry or physics. Not everybody has that, that acumen of that side of the brain. So if somebody is brilliant and they're not able to adjust the accent because they're incapable of doing it. I'll tell you that. They were incapable. Can I, can I ask you a question? Go ahead. Since, since you are capable of adapting to that very English accent, it also means that you still have the capacity to adapt the English language using the African accent. So why did you... And, and, my, and my point is that why would I want to do that? that option? No, see, see okay. So African. you want me to speak English to, to white Americans with my Yoruba accent? Is that what you're telling me? I want you to speak to us on this platform with that Yoruba <laughs> So we are, we, we are the... We are, we, we are the audience at this point. So I want you to adapt to, you know, to mainstreaming this African tradition in this very platform. You know, because I even struggle to hear you very well, you know, at times because of that uh, uh, adaptation we have really made, you know, uh, using the English. Well, what you're talking about, this is what I call ad hominem. It's like a personal attack. No, I don't know no, the no, meaning no, what you're talking no, about. No, it's, no, it's no. to me, it's totally relevant. Um, uh, see, you may not even hear my accent, right? But when I talk to Americans, they, they're like, oh, where are you from? You know, you know, you may not hear me, but, you know, they know that I have an accent. You may not know. So what you're talking about, uh, who's to say that the way I speak right now was the way I spoke 20 years ago? See, this is what I'm telling you. It's, it's about, uh, to me, it's not about an accent. If you actually hear me speak, actually, clearly, it's about pronunciation, not accent. I try to pronounce the word to the best of my ability so people can understand me. So if you can, I mean, not everybody that speaks also, but I can hear you. I never complain about anybody on this platform, be from Sierra Leone or, or Cameroon. I can hear everybody clearly. In fact, I'm actually good at it. I always tell people, if, China, if a Chinese person speaks uh, Vietnamese or, or Japanese, I can even hear them clearly. I don't have a problem with that. So maybe you have a problem on understanding. It doesn't mean that, you know, I'm trying to be something else. I'm not. No, I'm not trying, trying to impress you. No, no. Just to come into your conversation a little bit, Saki. Um, you, you know, um, when I first came to the UK, um, this go back several decades ago. Um, when you speak to somebody uh, in your uh, in, in maybe in your thick native accent, uh, you, you are a good English speaker, of course. You you are very conversant with the language and all of that. Uh, but um, there, there's this look of puzzlement on their face. Uh, maybe you've made a witty joke. Maybe you've made a, 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 an intelligent remark. But there's this look of, uh, there's this blank look. And then they say, oh, I'm sorry. I wasn't paying attention. Then you repeat yourself again. And then you see then that look of panic on their face. So then they start to tell you that, oh, I'm a bit deaf in one ear and all that. 
So what they are really saying to you is that they they couldn't really cut through your accent to really understand what they what you're saying, and then they really try and excuse themselves very very quickly from that conversation. So then you get to that point where you either have to start to continue to repeat yourself three four times in order just to get the most mundane base level conversation going, or you make an adaptation in your speech pattern. Maybe you slow it down. Maybe maybe you inflect it in whatever manner, but really, uh, you you really have to make that leap in order to have that communication. So it, it's not it's not so much people trying to affect as though they were not as they are, but it's really the reality of the circumstances you no, find no, yourself. No, 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 no. Yeah, you guys are just mis misunderstanding me. Yeah? I, I don't want you to see it from perspective of ad hominem. I'm not trying to attack you. No, no, it's not an ad hominem. It's a, it's a general conversation beyond yes, the yes. personalities. And, yeah, and, yes, yeah. yeah. And at the same time, I'm not trying to say that he was forming, that he formed to adapt to it. That's not what I'm trying to say. That's not what I'm trying to say. So what I'm trying to say is that, you know, it, you know, like you now, you have lived in a in in the UK for a very long time, but I wouldn't say you are speaking like, uh, like. A, a pure English person. I wouldn't say that. I can see some uh, some sort of the influence of the Yoruba accent, that African accent, you know, when you speak. They, they, though it may not be so uh, concent highly concentrated, but still, I, I can feel some of, I can feel that you know, this person is truly African. It's not, the, the, the accent has not changed. You know? So that's, that's what I'm trying to say. So I'm not like uh, saying that uh, I, I, if you ask me somewhere like Prince Daddy, you know, the first question I would have asked him is, Were you born here? You understand what I mean? I would have asked him, Maybe you were born here. Maybe that was why your ascent has changed to this level, you know, because ordinarily, if it was not a place you were born, uh, I when you speak, I was still like have that very flavor of that's our African accent. So to, it might not be so concentrated or so deep, but you will still have some feel of it. Okay, you the hear English, you the hear pigeon. So I speak with pigeon now. The hear pigeon. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, general, general, you permit me to speak pigeon. <laughs> okay, next time I go speak pigeon. Yeah, uh, yeah for me, I just think, uh, yeah, I, don't, I think everybody has said it all, but for me, it's just Africa. You know, what brought us to this question, um, about, about the uh, uh, Prince Daddy was that you see, we talk about why we cannot develop in Africa all this cool and counter coups and all of that, why we keep blaming the West for our problem. I, I agree with you that we should stop blaming the West. But you see, we, we, we find ourselves in a situation whereby it's almost looking that these guys will not leave us alone. They will not leave us alone. As long as we don't, they don't leave us alone, it's like we're doomed to always criticizing them as the reason why we remain backward, we don't move forward, because the things they need is in Africa. Everything they need, virtually everything they need. I mean, almost like, even you know, 60% of what they need to develop their economies is in Africa. Yeah, uh, sorry. Um, uh, Rational mind, that reminds me, just, uh, uh, I wasn't here when you guys were talking about this issue of uh, what is happening in Niger, what is happening in Niger. And I, I would like to actually comment a little bit on that, you know like the position Nigeria is taking, you know. Uh, I saw some people that are trying to rationalize the fact that Nigeria want to go to war and some people that are against it, you know. So I think in my view, in my view, if Nigeria goes for this to this kind of war, if Nigeria goes into this war with uh, Niger Republic, I think Nigeria is going to lose a lot. You know, our military right now is quite overstretched, in my view. You know, our military are already doing the jobs they are not supposed to do. Almost all parts of Nigeria, almost all the regions in Nigeria are, 
uh, how do I call it? Uh, so, uh, so, somewhat insecure that the military services are quite needed. The only region I will say as of today that is relatively somehow stable that doesn't need this uh, military presence now in Nigeria is maybe the Southwest. You know, so if you want to take our troop from Nigeria and say, let's send this troop to 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 Niger to for, to fight with Niger, most likely you are going to get such troops from the southwest because other regions actually need this military presence. Something like the southeast, the northeast, the south, the the the, the, the northwest and co. Cool, you know. So I think our military at this point is quite overstretched. Number one. Then number two again, I hear people that keep saying that this is issue of ECOWAS, that it is not issue of Nigeria, you know, that yes, Nigeria has uh, some influence in ECOWAS. But the primary thing you should think about is our national interest. It doesn't matter which organization Nigeria belongs to. The first principle is national interest. Is it in our national interest to go for this war? That is the first principle first. It doesn't matter whether uh, ECOWAS is pushing you to go into this war. Is it in our national interest? And mind you, there was a soldier I was uh, talking with the other day. The soldier was like telling me that the Nigerian military today, you know, some of them are Nigerians because not Niger and the, the North, they have things in common, you know. Some of them have, uh, what do we call it? Some of them have uh, a kind of uh, relations from Niger. Some of the soldiers that are, that are even currently Nigerian soldiers. So when you now send these kind of people to war, you know, do you think that naturally they will, the, the, they, they will have this kind of uh, sort of uh, kind of the, the sense of these are still our brothers, you know, these are still our relatives, you know. We, they, they won't. So, the, my, my point is, I think Nigeria has every reason to avoid this going into this uh, uh, military intervention they want to go to Niger, in my view, you know, in my view. Rather than, rather than going there to, to you know, create another problem, you know, in the, in the northern region that we might even not be able to solve for the next 10 years. So I think it is, it is better to just avoid it. I use diplomacy. Diplomacy first. Exhaust diplomatic options. That's my view. That's what I think. Is everybody sleeping? No, no, I can hear you. Yeah. So, I mean, for me, I just say, I think I'll be leaving very soon to myself. So, uh, for me, I just feel like uh, our, our problem in that, in that continent is it's so, so cooling. It's just so huge um, that um, the only way forward is it's just that sometimes, you know, this this revolution that comes in the form of military takeover, some of them just don't really uh, look at that one now in uh, Guinea. <laughs> so, so a few days ago, I saw this guy <laughs> with his uh, mixed race kids, and they were just uh, walking down the street, and they become some kind of royals of their own, you know. And then he's the same guy who came in and he was like saying he's the savior of the Guinea people. But well, look at how he has transformed himself now. We don't even know what they are trying to do. Is he, is he going to uh, pull up khaki and transform himself into a civilian? We don't even know. Or is he, or is he going to continue to be running as a, a, a military head of state? It's just, you see, it's a mess of, it's a mess of the continent. It's, uh, it's also hard for me to see a way, a way out of all this uh, quiet mind that we find ourselves in that continent. Because some of this, uh, look at all Nigerian military coup. They all came with uh, some promising of Oh yeah, uh, uh, Agui Rossi has taken over. Uh, Gowon has taken over, and then next thing we see, something else happens. 
Mutala's taking over. The next thing we see again, another thing happened. Well, what I mean, uh, what has take over? What has what has been what has been the, the result of all these military takeovers in Africa? This is not the first time Nigeria is experiencing a coup. This is not the first time that uh, 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 Burkina Faso is experiencing a coup. This is not the first time that Mali is experiencing a coup. But what all these coup and counter coups? What has it what has it brought? What has what has it really transformed? A lot of people that even became finally they maybe they even transformed themselves into like a civilian, like the one we saw. No, that one, that one was, I mean, that that, that wasn't the military. Bagbo, I mean, ba, what's his name? Uh, Alassane Ouattara in uh, Cote d'Ivoire. Even though he was not a military guy, but he became, look at how they touted him like, oh, the Ivory Coast would have moved, in, would have moved forward. If Alassane, I think, who was, uh, who was, uh, what's it called? Uh, who was the minister of uh, prime minister then, or kind of like a sort of a minister of finance then under Ufobani, and then and then look at what what happened. After after many years, after Ufobani died, he came there. Look at what he how he transformed. I mean, it's, it's just wonder. Africa is in it. So so Rashima, why do you think uh, people are touting this Niger coup as a, a new phenomenon? Like oh yeah, it's not a new they're, they're... phenomenon now. It's just about resource. It's just about the resources there that they're all fighting for. It's not. Okay, why didn't, why didn't, why, why didn't, I, I'm talking about the perception. Why do you think people are touting it as uh, a new phenomenon? Because the, the truth, so a lot of people think, I mean, if you go online, that you come to drive away the colonial masters and, uh, you know, do great things. So why, why do you think so? It's, 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 um, uh, please, Daddy, I, I, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying um, these guys are taking over. In, um, that's what I just said now. I just said, well, if you listen to me a while ago, I said, I don't believe in all these military takeovers. I just believe that if that's a way of realizing whatever they want to realize, well, let it be. I don't see anything promising from it, anything coming out of it. It's not going to be another military dictator, another dictator taking over from another dictator who will later transform himself into uh, a civilian and later his own family too, they will start uh, getting contracts and getting here and there and his own cronies too. You know, it's just it's going to be the same old stories that we hear, you know. So. I don't have any belief that anything is going to come out of it. As in, even though they, they are led to be, they, they invade them, they, they continue. I don't see anything coming out of it. They're going to replace another, another uh, European war power, another European exploit, uh, exploiter, with another European exploiter and a person of uh, maybe Russians or maybe Chinese too. So, so it's it's just um, it's so bleak for me when I look at the future in Africa. It's just so bleak that um, for me it's just if if you're just able to if you're just fortunate. Your, your your short time here on earth in that con in that continent you're able to just enjoy it in any way you can enjoy it just enjoy it Rush, rational mind rational mind i want to ask a question to everybody like everybody can answer it why is it difficult for african leaders especially in west africa to develop their country why is it difficult for us as it is africans difficult. to develop our place why is it, is it difficult? difficult let me answer that question okay go on go on the reason why it's very difficult for the Africans, leaders, to develop their place. One, the human tools that they need, it's lacking. You understand? Not 100%, but highly lacking. You understand? Like if you look at the uh, United States, for example, the United States government say, okay, oh, we have this vision, we want to advance in this area. They can look into the society and see a company or individuals that goes to work to figure the uh, solution to the problem or figure out to uh, develop the uh, to the material, whatever it is that they need to make it happen. Like United States companies say, okay, we want to advance our military. They look into the society. They say a company called Lockheed Martin. Lockheed Martin, we say, okay, what do you want? The government say, okay, we want to design an aircraft that can do this, do that, do that, do that. Lockheed Martin goes into research. It goes into research. You bring all their scientists together. They come up with a solution, develop the weapon. The, the, the government says, okay, we want to develop this uh, 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 maybe in a IT sector or whatever sector. They go to Silicon Valley. They look at the companies there. They say, hey, we the government want to advance this area. The companies there in Silicon Valley, no, they go to work. They do it. If Nigerian government they say want to build something, want to advance, if they look into the population, who the hell would they look to? Oftentimes, everything will build. We have to go outside to bring people 
<laughs> it's like if Nigerian government wants to build highways every day, they have to go to Julius Berger. Why can't they look into public They say, oh, this is not a group of Nigerian engineers that have put their brains together and figure out how to do these things. So Nigerian government can go to them and say, okay, guys want to build highways across this thing, this thing, this thing. Oh, this company here, this group of Nigerians there can do it. It's not the case. So a lot of our issue is really we, the population, we have to learn how to be very productive and be very creative and innovative. So that way we can partner with our government and begin to build our country. You can't expect the president that only knows accounting to go and figure all this, you know, to go and, that's not their job. Politicians don't build. They just do policies. They can just say, okay, we want something. You have to understand. So we, the people, have to step up our game. And we have a lot of talented Nigerians who fled the country. So well, and those of us that have developed the capacity to start putting making things, we don't want to go back there. We just want to stay in Europe and America. So that's the solution to that. I agree with you. I also disagree with you. The, the thing is this, you see, there are even even while a lot of Nigerian um, talented um, um, people are leaving, we still have a bunch of talented people in Nigeria, a lot of them there in Nigeria that wants to help and build. Just look at, I was listening to um, a, a, a Senate hearing one time. They were asking one guy in charge of uh, innovation and whatever, whatever. They've pumped, Nigeria has pumped so much money in that ministry. And what they could what, what they could produce, what the guy was saying on national TV that they could they, they have had they've produced the they have created the technology to produce killing chip. Imagine on national TV, you are saying you are making such things. And the federal government has pumped so much money in that ministry. Now you're having my case. Yeah, yeah, you won't strengthen my argument. That's my case. So the federal government is even investing in the population. The population can't invent anything. No, 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 no. No, you don't understand what I you don't you don't get where I'm coming from. The thing is this. The thing is this is that we have pool pools pool of talent in Nigeria. You understand? The government that is just corruption. They do, they are not, see if you bring any innovation to the to the to, to the government, they are going to throw it. They are going to throw it under the carpet. They don't need it. The thing is that we have had. They don't need see, it. I'm telling you. I, 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 see, Mike, I want to just tell you this: Nigerian politicians, the crop of politicians we have today, we have today, mm -hmm. they do not have the mindset. They do not have the capacity to develop Nigeria. And I can say it and say it again. I, I don't think. Shown, they, it, it, they wait, I don't think developing they can do anything in Nigeria. You Listen, they, they, they let me let me my brother let me let's get one thing straight i think it's, it's high time we start to tell ourselves the truth it's not government that develops society it's the people mm -hmm. government just look at what the people can do and they put a policy in place to make it uh, uh, uh to to back you that's what it is that's all it is government don't develop society until nigeria we start to get that sink in our head we'll never develop they don't government don't develop society. It's the they look they, as I can agree with you that we don't have serious government, but some smart government, someone like me, for example, if I become a, a, a politician and a leader, what I would do is start taking upon myself to start letting people know and also trying to let people know that we have to work together and it's it's all on you. Like for example, John F. Kennedy when he became president of the United States, they look at the American population and listen, don't ask what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. And okay, I will, Mike, I, I will partner with you. So I think that's one area I would say the politicians are stupid because Mike, they are now okay, looking Mike. at the people and saying, "Listen, we Mike. have this money here. If you have talent, if you have gift, come. This is avenue. Let's work together. You have to be the one to make to to." Mike, uh, Mike, yeah, I understand what you're saying, but let me just put this to you now. You see, um, um, Dango, um, Otedola, Otedola has the capacity to do a lot of things in Nigeria. Otedola once said that. Um, they wanted um, Potakot or Wari Refinery, both of them, they wanted to buy it up and fix it so that it could be refining oil. The federal government, the federal government took it, said no. You see individuals that want to want to um, um, pave federal roads. Government says no. They, they No, it's, it's not their jurisdiction. Even no, you can't, you, no, no, uh, no, no, you're talking about matter of legal issue. Like, for example, let's say you have the ability to fix road. What you do is start your own company, road fixing company, and go and 
take the contract from the government to fix it. But you can't take it's illegal for you to step on the federal road and start fixing it yourself. Like it's, a, it's just a matter of legal issue. Even in America here, if the road, let's say road is bad, you can't ask a severe individual cannot get on that road and start pouring something there. You're tampering with government property, you understand? They will go against you. But if you want to fix it, what you can do is start your own road construction company. I approach government like okay, listen, I'm a road construction company and I want to fix this road. I want to. I want contract to fix this road or whatever. You work with them. You negotiate with them. So I think that's where you're misconstruing the what is it, the the issue there. You so understand? So even even let, let me tell you. Even even the the, the federal the, the politicians or the federal government or the state government whatever they don't even patronize what is Nigerian. They don't. If you get a contractor like like let, let me give you one instance. If a contractor like a contractor submits his um whatever his um, program that oh i can do this road i can do this road and jesus Baker comes comes around and maybe we'll have a chinese company or we'll have other foreign companies you know that they would even pick that nigerian company to try him they'll pick other established industries or um, but, but, construction okay. companies let me, let me let me say this let me say that that i hear that a lot and when i look deep into it uh, first of all as i look i say it doesn't make a lot of sense to me first of all if let's say you are capable of doing what Julius Berger is able to do, right? First of all, it's even more cheaper to use you than use Julius Berger because you are their local. Julius Berger has to charge more because they have to factor in the cost of them coming in, bringing equipment in, and everything and everything. So, which government will know that you can do it and they can do it, and then they will neglect you and pick them? That, that argument doesn't make sense. The one, two, you have to understand that when uh, people bid for contract or bid for work. The government wants to look at the best bidder in the sense that, okay, this guy is coming in and he's willing to do the work with his own money, with all his money, finish the work. And I inspect the work, make sure they see that the work is completely done before I pay him. Now, a bigger company think, just... Wait, think, wait, 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 now, wait, wait, wait. Contrast in Nigeria. I, don't, I don't think so. But wait, now, I'm telling you how bidding, well, when you bid for contract, that's how it works. And also, the person who want to put his money down is looking at the risk and everything like that. Like, okay. Now, it's, it, uh, history has told us that whenever Nigerian government give contracts to individual Nigerians or things like that, a lot of times, that guy, the, the people will tell the government, okay, give us the money first because we don't have the money to fund it. And a lot of times, when the government give people money, Nigerians run away with that money. Some of them, when they do the work, they do very terrible work and they, they figure, won't stop, figure a way where they, rot, they disappear with the money. I want to ask you a question. And, 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 if you are the president of Nigeria, if you are the president of Nigeria, you give someone and you want to build Nigeria, you want to develop Nigeria, you give a con a, um, a Nigerian construction company a job to do and he refuses to do it. What will you do to the person? If I'm a president of Nigeria, I give If you are the president of Nigeria, you give a contract to a Nigerian construction company and the person takes the money and run away. What will you do to that um, construction company? What will you do if to I can, If I can find the person, I'll prosecute him. But in many cases, many of them are jackpots who run away with the money to another country. They disappear with the money. My, That's my what brother. I'm telling you here. They disappear, they run away with the money. Go and look at how many... If you don't know your history, when they say the budget for this thing in the 90s, especially do many small, small scale projects. Nigeria don't go hire big companies to come and do a small, small scale projects in Nigeria. Now. It's the Nigerian local company that the government are hiring. Now. Most of the contracts given out in Nigeria are given to Nigerians. Trust me. People approach their ministers for contract now all the time. Governors, they give contracts, especially to their relatives and friends and people, cronies and all those people. But most that of it, the Nigerians don't do it. They, that listen, the uh -huh, that's what I'm that telling you. Corruption. So, so. Uh -huh. Even some of them, when they do it, they just do fake work, cheap work or something, and they disappear with the money, you know? Like, so it's corruption, it's things like that. So what I think solution to that is a group of us can form a reputable a company and make it a reputable company that's reliable, that's this, and government know that that company over there, this Nigerian company there, they've done this and this and this, they do quality work, they've never stolen money. It's kind of a way of building credit, right? You know, where you say, okay, you have built credit, you build reputation. Now, government can know that, uh, okay, this company here can compete with Julius Berger for, you know, known, known for doing quality work and, uh, you know, all those kind of, so it's competition. So, you know, so that's what I'm saying. But when you have a reputation of just disappearing with money, and um, people like Julius Berger have a reputation of coming in, they do the work, boom, they complete it, and they call government, come and inspect it, and then after that, they ask for their check. Government can easily say, okay, me as a politician, hey, I want this done within four years so I can get reelected. And I have this two billion to build this flyover. Ah, almost, I can't build a flyover that would that they, or someone will disappear the money or that will collapse. And people will say, ah, see what government wiki did. So I'd rather go and hire a company that I know that has a reputation of doing the complete work. Okay, who is the company? It's a foreign company. Okay, hey, 
come and do the work for me. So that's what the situation is. So a lot of this problem is Mike, just weak. Yeah. Mike, Mike, the, 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 the problem with Nigeria, the, the problem with us in Nigeria or our government in Nigeria is this. There are no consequences for wrongdoing in Nigeria. R wrongdoings are rewarded in Nigeria. That is the problem we have. If people are persecuted for doing wrongdoings, Nigeria, will, everybody will sit up. Everybody will sit up. If contractors eat the money, you jail them, you mess them up, you know? If politicians steal money, you 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 jail them. Our, jail, our, our prison, this thing will be fooled by now. My brother, we reward wrongdoing. That is why the country it, uh, is where it is today. If we start um, penalizing them, if we start throwing them into jails, if we start... If, if we give the if we start punishing wrongdoings in Nigeria, you see that everybody will sit up. Everybody will sit up. If if the laws in order, if the laws, if the way they treat our um, um, our government is treating corrupt politicians and corrupt people in Nigeria, if uh, and I agree with you. And we we have different kind of government. We have some we have some government that are putting that kind of uh, effort in place to so say okay, restrict. Example would be the Chagari Buari government. In the 80s, where they say, okay, we are coming in to restrict. You break the law, we'll prosecute you quick and quick and quick and things like that. Actually, exactly, the rest of you can exactly. stand straight. And when, when you get that kind of government, you still get people going against that government. Like, ah, it's where it is. We got, ah, they'll turn against people trying to uh, overtake you. And then when you get a government that comes in soft, the people will be extremely corrupt. So it's still, you know, it's, 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 it's not that easy, man. It's, uh, but to me, I agree with you definitely. We all have to come to that agreement and listen. Hey, we have to be serious. We have to, you know, we, both the people and the government have to get to the point where we say, hey, we have to get serious. And one thing I will tell you that make it difficult is when we have a multi-ethnic nation, it's very difficult for one guy, one individual to or from to come say, okay, I'm stepping my foot on the ground and I want to start prosecuting. I want to be serious because the moment I start doing that, they will start saying, oh, you are prosecuting people from that tribe. I can't. You maybe you become president as an Igbo man. The first people you arrest, the catch. You happen to be Yoruba or not, and I say, ah, see, see, tribalism, ah, you know, you know, so they want you, so are you going to start only going after your tribe people and be only prosecuting you? Know, so it's right, difficult. Man. That's why when you get multi ethnic nation, it's very difficult to say you want to do the right thing because someone, someone, people will blackmail you, like, ah, look at him, you're attacking, uh, you know, yeah. Mike, the, 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 the thing is that if you, if we get a sincere president or a sincere leader even if it's a governor sincere the people see oh this man is ready to work this man wants to help the people you understand all these things people wouldn't have all this um um we, they are wicked are, people they don't they are some tribe, listen, I'm no 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 you. yeah uh, the good nigerians good people will not do that even when uh you don't but there are some wicked human beings and there are many of them are, in, are nigerians they they will no matter how good you are the fact that they don't like your ethnic group they'll go after you I'm telling you, you can be angel all you want. If you come from one ethnic group, they another ethnic group don't like you, they will come after you all day. That's just the way Nigerians are. All humans, I won't say, I'll, let me not say Nigerians, you know, people. But Nigeria, particularly, we are like that. We have this ethnic vendetta, you know, against ourselves, where if the right man come in, he has to come from one ethnic group, and you have people from other ethnic groups that will hate him, they will not like him, and they will try to do the right thing, they will, they will frustrate you where you yourself be like, why am I trying to do the right thing, sir? These people. <laughs> so the, most of the problem is just the, see the solution is this: good people of Nigeria from all ethnic groups need to come together and you know work. That's the solution. And just deal with the negative people, deal with them. So that and way. Another, and, uh, yeah. um, Mike, another thing that is going to help us in Nigeria is this: if we, if the federal government, because all this spoon feeding the governors. Uh, when you spoon feed these governors, it does not get the best out of the people. You know, bad people. You see, most of our, our governors are lazy today because one, they get allocations from the center. When they get allocation from the center, they go and sleep. The next month, they come and get another allocation. They go and sleep. But assuming you you have the situation where you control your resources, you look for investors. If your resources are just natural natural resources, you go out there, look for the resources, sit in a table with a Chinese, with a Japanese, with an American, and negotiate. You see, th that is the problem. Negotiate uh, your, your stand for that contract. You see that when, when you have our leaders, uh, um, our governors controlling their resources, you see, who have less corrupt people coming, to, coming into gov governance. Because ah. if you don't know what to do, you can just... You know, like you see in developed countries, when their when their leaders come on board and they, they don't know what to do, they just 
resign. They said, come on, I'm, I've given up, and they will leave. That you will see, happen in Nigeria if we have them control their resources. You see, my brother, right, Nigeria right now, we're probably the luckiest country in Africa to be in the position we're in right now. We are like the only country in Africa that have the means to do a revolution without shooting gun or even violence. With the kind of democracy we are where the, we, we've you mentioned governors, right? Nigeria has developed a system where we've taken a lot of power away from center and given to local states. And you can't deny, you can't sit there and deny that it's very easy to replace a governor. The population of a state is finding in Nigeria today, finding very easy to replace a governor than it is to replace maybe a president or a, uh, you know, a senator, a whatever, those in the center, right? And you can also agree with me that states in Nigeria, the most important person the, that can really transform a state or do anything is the governor, not the president. So we are so lucky to the point where we have a, a political system where uh -uh, he governors, every state, in, every state in Nigeria have fantastic governors, like most brilliant set of governors. And look at government, governor, look at government uh, personnel. Dude, we don't need a president. President can sit on me sleeping all day. Nigeria, we are transformed. You can agree with me on that. So I'm telling you that when it comes to development right now, we are, our political systems, we are so lucky that each state, if the good people, of, you don't even need good people of Nigeria to come together. I just need good people of each state come together and figure a way to take over their state governments. Like, okay, we the people of Baeza states, all the intellectual in Baeza state, all the good people, they rally themselves. They decide from now on, this state here, we will no longer have anyone that doesn't have this qualification, this uh, attribute, or this acumen, this level, and we scream. We, the people of this state, will come together. From now on, to be a governor in this state, you must be this kind of this qualification. It's so easy. It's so easy. And you see it played out. Look at when the uh, Edo people came on the street to make sure Obaseki wins. It's so easy, man. Look at the way governors are the easy. Governors, you know, and I'm glad it's growing. Like people are beginning to know that ah, is the governors we become governors in some state, not all state. Too. Look at it, let go. Look at the crazy. Ah, even uh, someone was he, the guy almost shit on his pants. Like ah, oh my man, this is election. That local election, the governorship election, now is, is like the you can't just easily become governor now because people are very cautious. You know, the, it's easy. So ah, if everyone in every state say now nah, from now on, no, let me focus on my state. Leave this Nigeria alone. I want to develop my state. We the people of this state. Particularly those states there is uh, there's no multi-ethnic states like just uh, you know it's easy, very easy, man. I'm telling you. So we have to understand that we we need to understand we have to get the best of the best of the people to be on top. But we are not doing that. It's usually the worst people that we vote for, the worst people we all support. Mm -hmm. Mike, the, you see, I, I, I quite agree with you, but the thing is this you see, I feel you see, I feel why a lot of uh, a lot of people are coming on board to become governors is because one, you don't have to think out of the box. Just think in the box there, and and the allocation the is coming to you. My brother, the, Niger the Nigerian state from the if beginning. You have, the if you have governors, uh, excuse me. A, 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 yeah, a, go ahead, go if ahead. you have governors going out there, looking for um, 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 investors to come to their states to invest so that they can get internal generated revenue then you see that a lot of states will develop and a lot of will now you see people that have something upstairs will come now and and and, and be governing a, a space a state just look at um for example i'm from Imo state my governor in Imo state he just waits at the end of the month he goes and gets his his allocation he pays sometimes they don't even pay salaries sometimes they pay if they if they're in a good mood they pay salaries they go back no development if you ask them they say that they paid salaries you see so you see that governors you elect in, in, in states in like most states in Nigeria, they are their primary duties is just to pay salaries. And they have to pay salaries. So, 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 so you agree with me, you agree with me that so you agree with me that our problem yeah, is yeah. bad 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 uh, governors in within states. You agree, like terrible governors. It, it, it is a system. It is a system. You see, if we can give at least what do you mean it's system? It's system the resources. Are you saying the system is the, 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 the system? The system is the reason why that governor made it there, or is the people that allow well, the governor to make it there? Like, 
this this sharing formula is not is not good it's for us not, in general. It doesn't matter. People. Listen, if if you are a productive person, whether they share, give you money or they don't, you you'll be productive, you'll be creative and productive. The these the people, man. Okay, if you become governor today, they give you that money. You want you to do something, you do something you want to get done now. So we can't keep saying because they are giving them money. I don't give if they are useless, they are useless. You, we just it's give excuses to our problems. Mike, 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 Mike. I, you I know, understand with you, you that, yeah, the sharing formula can make you lazy, but if you are a determined person and have a vision for your state, you, you, the sharing formula shouldn't be your excuse why you can't perform. If you are a determined no, person, uh, you want to, uh, well, listen, if you, if you are determined to transform your state and you have that, you know, that, that determination in your mind, if you become governor, they give, whether they give you the money or you have to earn the money, you you will if you, as long as the resources there in your hand, you will get it done. So let's stop this capping and excusing why the go we it's like you're excusing I'll, governor, you are you are excusing the governor why they are not performing. You are saying, Oh, it's no, not no, his no, fault because they're giving him money. Um, what, what I'm trying what I'm trying to say is that uh, <clears throat> you see, this sharing formula is just like uh, a man that has children. Maybe you have like 12 children. And what you do every time is you give them you give them money to go and buy food, buy clothes, buy do their you know just your your, your food you, you food their bills. Even when they get to thirty years old, you are still doing the same thing. Forty, you are still doing the same thing. So you spoil these kids. What I'm trying to say is this: let's allow states to control at least forty percent of their resources. Those that don't have resources, they have lands to farm. You could see that they, all this banditry in the north will stop. You see. So why are they not doing it now? Why, why are they not doing it? Because of this, the, the this sharing formula is producing lazy governors. They are producing lazy, no, no, no. Lazy the people that want producing lazy governors, it's not sharing formula. It's producing lazy governor. Because I know that if you make me a governor today, I'm not and going to go there and be lazy because they are that. giving me money. I get, I understand it. I, I, listen, I've always been the one I advocate that say that same thing. Oh, they're producing lazy governor. If you, I agree with you. I agree with you. Wait, wait. I, give me a second. I do agree that yeah, that things give them reason to be lazy. But let's still not give it an excuse why they are lazy. I understand some things can make you lazy. Even in you in your personal life, there's some situation that can make you lazy. But at the end of the day, you still can excuse why you're lazy. So what I'm saying is, yeah, we understand. If they, if they don't stop giving that sharing okay. application, they'll they find a reason to look for other ways to make their money. But yeah, hey, yeah we agree with that. But the fact of the matter is, we can't excuse why the governor is lazy. Why are you electing lazy governors? That's the you know we can't do that. Okay, can I? Yes, can I? Yeah, one year. Okay. <laughs> Somebody's making background noise. Can you mute yourself? I've been listening to you guys. Don't <laughs> tell me that. Don't tell me that. If you have that, I've muted. I've muted him. I just need to go on. One time, one time, you get your own lambe. <laughs> okay, so the question that we should ask ourselves with all the enormous power and control that the government in Nigeria have, why haven't they transformed their state? Why do we still have a lot of their people living in poverty in their state and the reason for this is very 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 simple the um good governance for the people does not even lie with the governor it lies with the local government and the reason why you don't have good governance in Nigeria, and the reason why you don't have development in Nigeria is because your local government does not, does not function as expected. The governors have taken over the responsibility of the local government. They amass all the power that the local government should have been used to develop and carry out, deliver good governance at their local level <clears throat> because they are the one closer to the people. It is not the governor. The governor is not closer to the people. At but all. Why? Why are they doing this? Yeah, because why? 
Yes. You know why? Why is because they don't want um, competitors. They don't want any good performing local government chairman to call to rise up to challenge them for the position of governorship and that is why they never allow them to function so that you cannot see anything good coming out from the local government in terms of uh, politician that is capable to contest for the position of governor and that's your, can I ask you a question real quick? Yes. <clears throat> okay. Patrick and I came to an agreement that we are suffering from lazy governors, right? So now, do you think if you end up electing lazy local gov local, local government chairmen too, will anything also change? If we end up on what's the question again? It, it, okay. Patrick and I agree that we are suffering from lazy governors, right? That because they are lazy, so they are not performing. Mm -hmm. If we also are we elected them. If we also begin to elect, you say we should put in local government, uh, local government in place, right? If we also put in the local government system in place, and we begin to elect lazy local government chairmen, will the problem still change? No. Uh, so laziness is a problem. No, 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 no. Hold on. It, you see, if the governors have not. If they had not strangulated the local government not to function, you would have seen the brightest of the brightest running their local government. If they have allowed, if the federal government have allowed the autonomous, I mean, autonomy of um, the local government, taking away the um, I mean, given the um, the total independence of, um, of um, operation and running of government at that local government, so the local government totally away from the control of the governors, you will see competition between local government. You will see local governments shadowing each other, looking at what this one is doing good, and try to do the same in their own. If, for example, if the local government is giving free health services or free education, or me free books and free health services in its own local government to so the um, citizen. In that local government, I like. Okay, I'll tell you, I agree with you, and I'll tell you, I disagree. I'll tell you, I agree with you, and I'll tell you, I disagree with you. I agree with you that yeah, when you give a uh, local government uh, power to get busy and work, things will work. But where I disagree is when you say they should take their hands off it and just leave them alone. What you're going to have is gang warfare in neighborhoods in every local government gang because gangs will be competing for that. The 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 most criminals, toughest gangsters, will be the one competing for all the local government positions if everyone take their hand off that place if the governor the, the, the state take their hand off that local government because in every local in your should the mc lomos boys gangs that we think that we ruling that place i'm telling you you the intellectual state suit and tie so, so what, what, what do you want what do you want no no, no I, I do i agree sir. i say i agree with having local government system because then they look they can govern and say well but you can't say the uh, the uh, uh, governorship or the President is taking a hand off it and let them do it themselves. Because if you, the gov, the gov, gov, uh, the state governments they have to have hand in it, money the the part of the, part of the process. But if you take give complete autonomy, say no hand in it, you my brother, you turn every that, that Nigeria, you turn everywhere to gangster gangster world. What because of, the gangsters of that community will be the one compete going what, for that position. What of if I ask you that? Why would would you like federal government to have control of look of the state as well? No, no. And <laughs> and, and, and state. <laughs> no, 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 no. State, state, you, state. You, you got you got Mike. You no, got no. He didn't, he didn't get me. He didn't get me. He didn't get me. Statewide, it's.
statewide. You understand? It's very difficult to have gang warfare within a state. You understand? But when you're talking about neighborhoods, like com small, small communities, local governments, where everybody know each other, they see each other's face, you pretty much know every guy in your community now, your local government. You know the who the toughest guy is. Who should do all those? You know, so long more there. So those are but statewide. It's hard for one guy to say I'm from this local government. I want to take over a whole state. Or I want to start gang warfare between even within the governorship. We are we still having gang warfare within states. Look at those states. Look at uh, the PDB and APC are one with each other. Just governorship on level. Imagine local government level. You understand? So what I'm saying is, if you have the best governors, that governor, the best quality governors. We go into the uh, local government and have the best people within our local government be the local government chairman to so make the vision of that state carry on. Uh, 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 Mike, if I could come in, please. I don't know how it's working in your US. Is our local government, they call them council here, that is doing mm -hmm. most of all, all things in the community. Yeah. Not even the state. Is the local government, is the, we call them council here. No, remember, 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 I said, remember, I said, I don't disagree with you. Remember, I, I yeah. told you I don't disagree with you that yeah, you I have know. to have local yeah, government. But the, yeah. the part where I'm disagreeing is leaving your hands off it, where they do take care of the uh, election and everything themselves. That's where I disagree. That's what I'm telling you. Now, you can't call Australia. State, it, state it, it, will so, still conduct the election. The hmm? state will still conduct the election. Uh -huh, that's what I'm saying. I will agree. But what Jamie Kogo says is that the state should take hands away from it and let them. No, 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 no. I don't think Oma, Oma, uh, uh, that. The country of Nigeria has like maybe everybody. We are against the neighborhood community. I'm going to take over. I'm going to take over. They will kill themselves for that power. Because they already know each other. You will know the guy that if, if your local government now, you will know. You, you all know each other. Because so, many local governments are so small that everybody knows everybody. So, over my Dijan. So oh my, what, 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 they were killing themselves. Hold on. What is the state doing different now? That the local government, if they are in full control, that they cannot... No, no. No, the local government should be in full control of the uh, gov governors. But what I'm saying is the process of the uh, election or the process of uh, uh, the, who becomes local government, chairman and things... You can't leave it alone to that local government to determine among themselves. It, no, no. They have to have hand in it. Hold on. Hold on. The governor have have okay. Hold on. We have high neck that we conduct election. State must not have control over them at all. Because ah. they we have three tiers of government. Federal, state, local government. Nobody should interfere with the activity of the others. And under democracy, we have supremacy of law, we have separation of power, we have everything that operates in such a way that I put every tiers of government and every organ of government in their own position, not to interfere with others. But you see in Nigeria, where you see everything being modular, That is where the problem of misgovernance set in. If, as look, let me tell you, if we are expecting Tinubu to perform magic, to turn Nigeria to Mecca or New York, <laughs> or New York. Without the local government uh, uh, in ourselves. Without the local government functioning, a uh, friend better. Look, Tinubi has million hour more leadership. Because look, the federal government, federal government, federal government does not govern Nigeria at all. Federal government have specific role they play in terms of defense, <coughs> monetary, management of the economy, distribution of revenue, over to Magba, Koshia, Siske, Koshia, this thing. Kode Wani Boda, Kode Control Immigration. You see, what it does? Federal government does not, Kode Wani, charge of security and police. I hope you agree that I agree with you that the federal local government system is the best. It's just the look, process of 
have uh, put them in place, what I disagree. You know that, right? Look, you see, federal government from Abasanjo, Buario, everything, they have done their job well. Well, they give, they take that revenue, they collect that taxes, they sell that and they, 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 they share it equally as supposed to be money. here. They share the money. Okay, go and use that money to develop your state and to develop local government. But the problem with Nigeria is that the money for local government have to go through the state. That is where Nigeria got it wrong. And then the state government will now take the money and say, ah, Oh my God. And we just give him any anything. And you know the fake jali could oh to not if you can oh na got oh no my fish. Local governor of a jali. Oh my Joe going on at the end on it. So it's the same thing, there's no difference. But you see you see the policy leaders in local government and the states. Policy leader is the key. It's different. Let me tell you, Mike. They won't steal the local government. I mean, they won't steal. No, no, no. Hold on. <laughs> if the local government is getting their funding directly, mm -hmm. they won't steal it. <laughs> People, the, 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 the eyes will be on them to work. Oh, because you, the state will be telling the people will be tell the state will be telling the uh, the people that go and meet your local government. Yeah, We've given local... them so 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 money. And who in them are transparent? Federal government my publisher. Look to this local government. It is 50, um, 500 billion. Mi 500 500 billion. billion. So, MCO law, because look at government chairman, you, should, you go and you, you leave it, you open your mind and disrespect it. You will send an assassin to your house, man. They know your address there. Uh, <laughs> they, uh, they will be saying that the gangsters will be the ones sharing money among themselves. And if you speak, open your mouth and talk, they'll come and beat you, target your mother, target your family, and be beat. They, almost, you guys don't know that they are talking about. They are, you walk in Australia, you give them that kind of. Complete autonomy. We Nigeria there, where most people they are get this. Okay. Are, are you kidding me? Yeah. Okay. Most of those uh, boutouts are the one running communities. Okay. So if, if you are saying we should make traditional leaders or the ballots, all those people in charge of the local government system, but we say just anybody, leave your autonomy. The most notorious criminals will be the one running. The most courtsist guy will be the one running the local governments in Edo. Guy, right. the, it, it be, in Nigeria, are you talking about Nigeria? <laughs> hey. And the process, I agree with you, it's just the process, is what I'm saying. You can't give complete autonomy to the look, process. Everybody will contest for election. You, you can't contest against them so long when you should. You, you, are, you, are, you are not gang, you are not tough. <laughs> <laughs> MCO, if it's popular among these people, it will win the election. Yeah, the, tough, the, the toughest people in local government are the gangsters. That's what I'm telling you. And they are the most popular. <laughs> Oh, Those it, are criminals, it, man. Look, no, that is not true. It is this politician, the state government, the governors that make it look like that to you. So that ah. you need to control. So that they will be in control in, in reality. If, look, if they are given their own autonomy, total independent from the state, from the state, no control by the state, good people in that locality, in that local government, will come out that they want to be governor of, I and mean, they want to be chairman of their local government. Because we see some other local government that voted in a competent person transforming that local government. And because you cannot go to your state, to ask for anything, everything must be done, will be done by your local government for you in terms of uh, maybe uh, refuse collection, um, education for your children, uh, building of roads, and, um, and, and so many other things. Um, Health care center is under the local government. So you can't go to the state. So why do you want talk to govern you? That cannot manage your resources. No, everybody will come out to say this is the person they want, and they will vote in that person because the next neighbor, local government, to them, they have a competent person running that place well. Education is going well. <coughs> Everything is running well in that local government. 
Why would you want to talk? Because they are making their, their, their talk to come and govern you. It's not going to be possible. People will stand up. You don't know that people, people's power is stronger than the power of uh, Gara Gara, MC Oleo, MC Oleo, MC Oleo, MC Oleo, MC Oleo, the man will be defeated one by election will be they defeated them now in, in their, their in their locality in their locality they were defeated really no should uh we people want you no should yeah they, they beat from the diverse they the diverse from all you know should they want no i'm not talking about some wool uh the president nobody really came out to <laughs> but we are talking <laughs> what are we talking about so they, uh, when they woke up after the wool when they woke up what happened next <laughs> So, like, yeah, it's a, it's a warfare. The, to me, I think, I, I think we, we both agree that local government system is the best. Where the policy, well, everything should come, lo policy should be local. The only thing I'm saying, where I'm telling you, is the process, the process of you know making the leadership is what we have to work on. Which process? Okay, to work what on. is your own option? What 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 kind of process? You no, no, the option is they have to first. Uh, the pro first of all, even within uh, to the governorship or even the presidential level, we have to have uh, uh, structure policy in place or process of becoming that person in place. Whereas the screening of who is going to become all those things has to be in place. And, and unfortunately, Annette is responsible for that now. Okay, okay. So yeah, we probably can do it. And the screening, the other, yeah, that's true. That's true. Okay. Annette is responsible for that. So, so we both agree that yeah, this the process is what needs to be worked on. You know, it's what something has to be done about the process because if they don't do that, ah, they just leave it alone. Where anybody can come and run. Hey, oh, you believe? You believe? You agree with me that if they just if they just say anybody can come and run, it's the talks that we're taking over. Oh, uh, no, the process, and uh, there must be a process in place. Okay, okay, uh -huh. okay, okay so we agree then. <laughs> so back on the break, if you want to let okay. If uh, that was the way, anybody can come around. Uh, the moment uh, you open your mouth, they want to run. They, they, they'll be, they'll be burning your, the thugs that will be surrounding your house. They, they'll probably be kidnapping your, because they don't know where you stay now. You live in that community. They will just be kidnapping your relatives. Say, ah, okay, for ransom pay, you must not run. They will threaten you, say, if you run, we take you out. So it, it, it will be a disaster. But the process has to be in place where they make sure those things don't happen. Where it's only the best of the best that can even come and apply. So come, they, they screen you, they screen who you are in that community. That okay, yeah, and that's what they do in Australia and all these other countries now. You can't just be anybody who wants to go and run for local government, any kind of governorship or uh, political place or what? anything else to do with government. It can't be anybody. But in Nigeria, we just leave it open. No, 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 hold on. Mike, hold on. can I make don't contribution? Mike, Mike, don't make it Anybody can contest for election. But the process, process, process you are talking about, number one, the party have their own process of screening. That is number one. Then electoral body have their own process of screening. So, the process here is a problem. You see what I'm talking about that you pay independent of the local government. Under the Babangida administration, they practice it. Local government function at its best. The military administrator does not interfere with local government, um, uh, uh, civilian local government. They will develop. <laughs> and they perform very well. They, really? In Lagos, let, let me uh, quickly. Ajale yeah. Gogo. Yeah. Yes, I the question. So during military era, they didn't dissolve the local government. No, no, no. they didn't. They had it going on, but they, just, they were not monitoring. They just left it alone for the people. That's no, why there were so many political assassinations in local government during that, and that's one of the reason why they cancelled it. Because they were so and that's another reason I'm pointing it out. Because back then, during the time, they left it to the local government and the money goes down and everything. But a lot of violence, political assassination, they were not even doing anything. Because the military government didn't have time to even be monitoring, they just left it alone. So a lot of political assassination, ah, oh man, it was it was violent, it was crazy. Uh, no, okay. And that's what I'm pointing out. Like, okay, if we have to do it now, we have to make sure the process is okay. You Let know, me tell you what I experienced during the military administrator when they were in control what military did they have civilian administrator in each local government civil servant or anybody I mean they just choose people to run local government 
But when they are trying to um, um, uh, when 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 they now agree for political activity uh, to operate, and um, they allow political political parties to contest for local government chairmanship. You understand what I'm saying? So civilian under the platform of political party contested for the position of uh, local government chairman so during that time we had so many civilian through a political platform uh, what are these party okay okay let, let's let's go let's make example of during the time of fdp and nrc when babangida registered those party they started the election from the local government so fdp won some nrc won some it was civilian political party before the um state election so there was full local government election force. We had local government chairman in place. So then after then, we had the state election. Governors were elected. It was when he got to the federal. What do you call it? Abiola won the election and he now or not the election. But during that time, as I was telling you, during that time, the local government functioned independently from the control of the state. So, were there development? So, and there was development. Really? Oh, In yes. Nigeria. The first time, maybe, you, I don't know how old you were then, so maybe you didn't know. I'm telling you what I, what I'm what I pass function Mike, you see the way Pampas that time now. In the in the Magida time, in the Magida time, Nigeria was functioning. <laughs> Nigeria was functioning on the dream of Magida time. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> I don't know why people always try to convince us that things were so good in the past. And Mike, you are still wearing Pampas that time. <laughs> so Ten years from now, that they will say we're enjoying life during Bali. Life was so sweet. This, the, Nigerians, I don't even understand. I remember during about your time, they used to swear for the everybody was frustrated. Now people will tell me during our about your time, we're enjoying. Okay. Okay. We're enjoying. Let Come me, on. Let me tell uh, you, for the first time, for the first time in the history of Nigeria, in the history of Nigeria, we had local government running transport system, transportation system. Lagos Island local government started it under Adeniji Adele. The then local government chairman, Lagos Island local government chairman. Kilo mm -hmm. other local government in Lagos state started. It is a local government. Before you know it, it is a local government. Before you know it, Mushin local government, Shomodu local government, every local government now had transport system. You see, Lagos and La local government transport system. It is a local government transport system. It was before then, it was only Lagos State, um, Lagos State uh, Transport Corporation that we knew. But you see, but look at what these people brought. And before we knew, then you see, um, um, what do you call it? Um, um, uh, 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 Lagos and local government introduced free health service in Lagos and and it spread. Other local government started. They started free books. Giving to, this is local government. This is not state. Local government. So what we learned in that is that look if our local government were not held on their neck by the state and anchored by the state look nigeria would have been better off for these 23 years that they've been
the practice of the democracy. Because I, I, they, they can can I say we lack, we lack governance and leaders? Yeah, that, that is it now. Can we say we lack governance and we, leaders? We both. Both. Yeah. Both. So, you can't have good governance in Nigeria. If local government does not operate freely from the control of the state government. Another part of the world, progress, come This state government are the worst. It is not federal government. Federal government need little problem. Mm. Interesting. But the state, they are the worst enemy of democracy. They don't allow local government to operate. They improvise local government. Every, every, um, uh, 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 the presence of local, the presence of government is absent in many local government in Nigeria. Many and it is, and they are recognized local government. So the chairman, but is the is the state that that control the chairman. The chairman does not have any power to award contract to fix the road or to build the road or do anything. Back then, under under the military, I, 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 I don't go. When, you, when you're done, I want to see. I want to introduce one uh, idea. Maybe you guys should think it. Will, maybe it, may, it might work you know, in Nigeria. Listen, listen. One can't go to introduce Kenya. Local government were building roads in Lagos and in, across the the the, uh, the western state, Lagos and Ogun, more. Local government were building roads. In Bolotudi, local government don't build the road. You see, I even even small gardens, small drainage, they can't even do. Local government in build the road won't build the. Um, um, street light, one bridge, the drainage, one bridge, the one bridge, they were doing all these things. Look, look. Uh, uh, okay. but no doubt, it in Koto, no, che, Tofi, go, Kedinye, Kate, I want look at Kate. Okay, Simba, guys. I'm Simba. Oh, yeah, sorry, sorry. Yeah, Simba. And Goons, one, okay. Goons, okay. Lulu, who okay. are Simba? Okay. Lulu. Goons, okay. Uh, 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 good I'm one of the young people. Simba is a sorry, <laughs> okay generation. <laughs> Simba, sorry, uh, okay. <laughs> you'll be surprised that uh, today I'm on your side. Because ah, everything that you bravo, bravo, everything, bravo. Everything <laughs> that Baba Angelico said about local government is something that I've experienced in both old or your state and even yes, old or your state. Um during that time, I remember that uh, most of the rules in in in, uh, in, in Thailand, all the rules within the community or have been consulted by, by local government. Not to grade though, they will tar road. Road mm. to farm, to settlements, and all those things. They were doing it. In fact, as he said, the only thing that can bring governance to the people is the local government. And they were functioning very well. That one that you are referring to, Thomas, as Gada, we call it yeah. culvert. That uh, the yes, one that you yeah. call, yes, yeah. culvert. They call cul yeah. a lot of culvert. Because that time my father was also in politics, so and all, they even they used to give them small small contracts to do all those things. Farmers doesn't even have difficulty in bringing their goods, I mean their farm produce from farm because they will grade the farm roads. They will construct they all this culvert on those small small stream along the farms, and they make so the farm farmers they can go to to their farm with vehicle. They have tractors that they, they also supply to, to help farmers to grade their farm. Wow, mechanized their... Yes, yes. Wow. Even fertilizer wow. at that time was subsidized for farmers. And so it, 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 things were working very well during, during, and it was during military. It was during military that I, 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 I was talking about. 
And then it was actually Obasanjo, actually, I'm very sorry to say this, that actually Dabaru changed everything because it was when he came in as president that did not change the rule, that the local government now lost their autonomy. And the, the, what I want to even say is that you remember when he stifled the Lagos state with uh, local government allocations and uh, everything, that was even when Tinobu actually even created the, uh, what is it, they call it now? Um, SDA. To even break it that we all can agree that Abbas Nigeria will have a hand in destroying Nigeria in many ways. It I'm was not. the one, it was the one, it was the one because even we cannot blame because Tinubu even knew that they have to break some lo big local government in Lagos State down to further bring the governance down to the people. Closer to the, closer why, to the people. Oh, yes, so that was why he created all those uh, local government development authority. And so to me, the best thing to do, but we already also discovered that we need to, to give them autonomy. But the only thing that I think we need to be talking about is how can we get the legislatures in the state? Because they are the ones that actually made it difficult for that uh, bill to, I to mean, be to passed. Be, to to be pass. Pass. I remember. Yes. yes. Simba, you are right. Uh -huh. So if the local government legislatures also, if they are not, because they are puppets of the state governors, Whatever the state governors wanted, that those are the ones that those one we agree with. If we is a the, if there is a way we can make them all of them to ascend to that bill, then the local government will have their autonomy. And if they have their autonomy, they will get their allocation directly from the federal government. Then the people can hold their local government chairman responsible for some of these little little things that they needed. Because Chinobu will not be the one that will go and construct the road between my own. The village, another village in Ocean State. I have a question. I have, I have a okay. question. Um, you guys know, like in the southwest, if you look at our uh, structure, our governance structure prior to the uh, colonial time or prior to the modern time, we had all this structure in place, like from the king, and then every local government had, like, uh, you know, sub. King, I want like a council, uh, maybe ballets or things like that. We have we have that governance to the people. That's how it was structured. So, do you guys think if Nigeria like incorporate those traditional institutions, those uh, into the governance, do you think that may um, uh, accelerate development in a sense? You understand? Because one thing is that those chiefs or kings or boss they are there forever they are not people that are, are will be in place where they want to lose money um for four years and move away go and live in england or america you know like Oba of lagos cannot say ah omo uh, let me lose money because next four years i want to go and stay in england they are there so when somebody is going to be living in a place forever it will have a reason to want that place to develop or advance or you understand and we have that vision long-term visions and even those like when uh, Traditional the the ballets, those ones too, they say the traditional ties to where you are holding forever. So those people are not people but, that are... but, but, but Mark, the problem with that one is that that one will not make the people will not have a sense of belonging. Because you know that you our the, traditional the, not, the are you saying the foreigner? Our traditional system is a family it follows a family system. So no, people, uh, okay. it's just got, like what point. is happening in the monarchy, monarchy, monarchy system that yeah, monarchy. you are just trying to. We have something that has worked for us. No, but well, I don't think that will work better. It work better because no, no, I don't think so. That one will cause you quit because even you can see what is even happening the, now. Even when they don't have much, you see some 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 towns now in Nigeria. It will take them years before they can even restore restore their orbas. So, to, and it, we have so many families that will be fighting over this, over this thing. Because it's not only one single family that rules. You, you, you know that. So, no, to but, me, but, but, no, 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 I no. think there's nothing, there's nothing you can use to replace a democratically elected leader. Let us be electing our leaders democratically. What they used to do that time is that whenever they are conducting the state, state governorship and national assembly election, that at the same time that they will conduct the, the local government election. What I think they should do is that they should not they should remove the this say state electoral electoral uh, CEC, they call it CEC, state independent electoral commission. 
they should put everything under INEC so that by the time INEC is conducting state election, the local government election should also be conducted at the same time so that they will have like the three that they used to have at the national level, the, but, uh, the but, but Senate, the are, rep, Simba, and, the, and the, the federal government just trying to give states a sense of belonging so that they can hold the state uh, local government election. Uh, you know, the, re the reason why I'm proposing that is that so it will make it free and fair. It will not be that it is the state governors that are going to be putting their puppet. Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay, so I have a question for you guys. So all our traditional institutions, what is their relevance now? So they're just there for, for what? They are not relevant again. Believe me, they are not relevant. Uh, yeah, okay, they want to <laughs> Uh, hello, be relegated. So our culture is dying. Our, our and that's why Nigeria is dying because you have the owners of the land, owners of the. Uh, you guys call yourself I'm a kini, I'm a egba, I'm a kini. Uh, your, your, your every hundred years from now, your egba land will turn to. We all become. I don't even know what we become. All these our ethnic traditional. Um, um, so um, we all be dead. And Mike, I don't know what we, we become. We that's why our, our our youth. Uh, we are all. We, I don't even know where Nigeria is becoming. Like we're just becoming identity less people. We are becoming whether we are becoming British, I don't know, Americans, I don't even know. Because we have abandoned who, who we are. Most of our children don't even speak our language anymore. Because we abandon our you know, and that's why now you're having ethnic clashes in territory where some people will come to your territory and tell you that it's no man's land anymore. Because what happened to our tradition traditional institution? I mean, and the reason why Simba told you that if you maybe if, uh, incorporate it into the governors. Because these people, they are the owners of the land. So they will wish their land to develop, to look like London. And they, they know their people. They, they know, know their, their people. people, exactly. And they can yeah. put in and the culture, this thing, they can restore, they, they can, uh, uh, cost, they are the custodian of the culture and tradition and everything. They can keep it alive. And yes, also... Uh, no. Okay, how do you... Ma sorry, Mike. How do you want I, 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 a number? How do you want a number to become a local government chairman? To work as a local yeah. government chairman? No, no, no. Yeah. I didn't say local government chairman system. I'm saying they will be the local... The, 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 the same system of governance we have. Where we have the Oba, we have the ballast, we have the... Because there's no inch of your land that doesn't have a leadership. Uh, that doesn't have a form of leadership. Time, there's nothing no. like there's nothing like president. Everybody no, they no. are in just their, their micro mm -hmm. environment and they are just surviving. No, 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 no. We still have president, we still have governor. But then within the state, the locality, the Asian local the old locality system, that leadership system we have. I'm not saying the mm -hmm. whole country has to be the same way. The way they do the Igbo land, let them do their own way. The way Yorubas do it, the way it was before the colonial time, we should still have those system in place and should be part of the governor but we'll see our president and don't governor. you think you are we are more civilized than that now what do you mean are you saying that wasn't a civilized are you saying that was not a civilized that was not a civilized i don't no, know what okay, you guys always think everything in africa is not civilized wait 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 what i'm saying now okay are you can you give us an idea how you think because you just make example made example of the Oba of lagos Oba of Lagos, if you are talking about Oba of Lagos, that means it will be the governor of Lagos. No, no no, the, 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 no, no, the, no, no, the role of Oba is the, the, yeah. the, the local, uh, or the local leadership in Lagos, Lagos, they are under the Oba, you understand, the process of, mm. you understand, they are Oba, so, they are under the Oba. The Oba will not choose. The ballet, but no, 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 the Oba won't really have, uh, I don't think the Oba uh, involvement uh, in, uh, in, 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 Probably you have little role in the governance to be honest, but he, I think this traditional institution we all, we all know the role of Obas. Like, okay, he the ballots have to go through the Obas uh, system, uh, through the Oba palace to become ballots and things like that. They do their rituals and but, everything. But, but Mike, but, let me ask you this what is the role of Oba now? What, what are they doing? They, they are, are not doing anything, they are just sleeping. celebrated now. That's all it is. They don't even they just they don't give their power, they just give their staff of office. Yeah, and they, they, they don't they don't they're not they in the, the they're not in the constitution, they're not in the governance. And that's why everything they are, about they, us they are the custodian of the of our tradition. So that's what it is. That they're just people to keep <laughs> exactly, and that's very terrible. That's very, very terrible. So a whole about a whole about Bini about Bini doesn't even have any role in governance in Edo State. Can you imagine? Emperor, that's an emperor. <laughs> I cannot finish, man. <laughs> I don't take power from there. The British just turned. I mean, what the British did. Let me. You guys need to understand the big picture. What the Europeans did when they came to Africa, they want Africa to be part of their empire, the British Empire. So now what they did is train some Africans to understand what the, the interest of the British, right? And then get, put them in charge and take away the power from the actual owners of the Africa, which are the emperors, the kings, the traditional people. 
So they want the people to, they want us to be British and be doing system for British where everything will be extracted and we're going straight to Hello, England. That's, that's, that was all the intention. And we How keep it you? going. We keep it going because our politicians, when they come in, they just want to be lose money and go to England. And, uh, you know, that's what it is. They are, everybody that you have dreams to go and live in England and America. So at the end of the day, politicians, they lose. And the first thing the governor wants to do is leave, look at me, the first thing he wants to do is jackpot. Look at them. They, they, where are they going? They're going straight to England. They look their money, they're transferring everything to England and America. So that's how it is designed. Right. But, if, but our traditional right. ruler, right. Wait, wait, let me let me tell you last statement. Like Opa Bini, for example, is he going to loot his people's money and go and live in England? No, <laughs> he can't leave that place now. Go ahead, go ahead. Mike, the thing is, uh, what's, what's, what's the solution to this problem? What's the solution? I think the solution is this. To my own, to, that's my own personal opinion. I feel the solution should be let's sit down, draft a constitution that has our traditional, our cultural input exactly. in it. Exactly, everything involved, yes. yeah. So that well, that's when, who, we yeah. Do it, when we do it that way, everybody will have its own role. Like, I quite agree with what Simbad said. If the if the INEC if the INEC can conduct elections for local government chairmen and councillors, it will be very very good for us too. Because from what uh, Janley Koko and um, Simba narrated, uh, what the functions of local government and what they've done in the past, then if, if I know why they they have not been able to do anything now because of the state governor, the state governor has attacked their allocation too. If since Buhari has, there is a law that says. The local government can have their own separate uh, location now. Then, if they can conduct an election where the INEC will conduct while they are we're having like state governor election and all this, they can conduct the state election on that particular day. So now the, they are now independent from the state governors. So it's, it's going to be helpful to us too. Hello? Yeah, we can hear you now. We can, we hear, can you. hear you, God. We can hear you. So uh, I, I feel that, 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 that like that is going to be a very, very perfect solution to our problems. Because if the local governments are functioning, it, the, the dividends of democracy is going to cripple down to the, to the, trickle down to the, to the people. And, you know, you know and, my brother, you know, you know my biggest fear of the local government thing? When election season comes, you know, this, you know Nigeria, governorship election alone is violence. Imagine once your local government in Nigeria doing like, the kind of violence that will be taking place then. Ah, and that's what I'm thinking. Like, almost, I think it's the ballot system, the urban and other system is better because that one we know that hey, uh, it's the ballot that's in charge of this community, this local government, or, or this, you know, or the we already had that system in place where there's no need for election, you know, that kind Mike, of thing. Mike, and then the governor, Mike, 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 they still conduct local government election now, but it's just, just Simba, that, Simba. Uh, it's, yes, yes, Joe. the Simba, ballot they don't do it, no, the urban is not appoint the ballot, Simba. the ballot crosses line. The upper will remove him and put another ballot there. You understand? Simba, Let me leave this to what they want to say. Simba, okay. I have this question for you. Because, uh, Simba, from what you've narrated, you know, about the local government and all those stuff, I want to ask you a question if it's going to really work in the Nigerian uh, concept. If we allow local, uh, like what I was saying, if we allow all these people, like the governors, to, to, to like, give them a little autonomy on their, on their resources, like for example, like River State now, River State Governor. Okay, you have your oil, you have this, you have that. Okay, you are going to give, you are going to. We are locating forty percent of your resources. You um, take care of your resources forty percent and get um, this, the center, which is the federal government, gets sixty percent. Same thing with the local go um, local government chairmen too. Don't you think it's going to reduce corruption in governance? Don't you think so? Okay, and the way I will answer the question is that, you know, if so, if somebody that cannot manage a small resources that he, he has, this is by the time he gets a bigger one, we'll be able to manage it. Because the, what we need, months. what we need, Joe, yes, I've been listening to your arguments before, before this time. Uh, you, are talk, you, you are talking along the resource control. But my own, I, I, I agree with you totally that we need some form of a resource control. But what now, if you cannot hold them accountable now with what they have now, because it's like nobody is focusing on them. That is the problem. Do you think that as at the time we give them more resources, they will be able to perform? I think, when? I think, the only, okay, okay. Uh, no, I, I want to listen to your answer. Okay, what I feel, you see, 
to my own um my like from my own point of view is this if they source for their like if they are given the power to 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 um, to control their resources and go look for investors to drill them if it's natural resources baba uh, let me let me, let me give you this let me give you this baba jale kuku is there to testify to what i'm saying even during Shagayi regime, I don't know what happened in the Southeast. But in the Southwest, people still, even with, the, with under this kind of dispensation, people still enjoy the state go go government. Because I remember in 1879, when Bolaik they became the governor for your state that time. He, in my village that time, we had only one secondary school. He established additional two and he made Post primary and secondary education free. And I remember at that time, most of the people that were not going to school before, they are not, they are not young, people that are maybe 18, 19 years old, they came back to secondary school to come and start all over again. Because they were abandoned school before, maybe they could not afford the little money that they are paying that time, but immediately they made it free. It was not a small money. What are you talking about? No, I'm, I just Almost use that one as an analogy. Uh, 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 school fee. But most oh, of them, fact, most of them who have, who have gone to learn carpentry, bricklaying, and all those things, they came back, and with that, some of them came back, joined the secondary school, and they were able to finish secondary school. And I remember that time, we don't buy anything in school. Everything is given. The only thing they don't give us is food and uniform. Everything that you needed as a student, ruler, pencil, um, 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 crayon, everything Simba. they were, Simba. We were being given free. And if the same resources, Simba, me... you understand? Okay. Simba, I see, go ahead, you go ahead. this thing now. I, I, I was, I, I enjoyed that, I, I enjoyed that uh, benefits from Lagos State because I schooled in, I was born and bred in Lagos. I schooled in Lagos at that time when um, Jack Conde was Jack giving Andy. us pencils, rulers, this. Free. Jack Conde uh -huh. gave us uh, the only thing Jack Conde did not give us was school uniform and school bag. Jack Conde gave us every other thing: books, textbooks, notebooks, pen, pencil. So I'm asking, why was these people with that little resources they had there could be able to do this thing, free education? Jaconde built schools all over the place. Jaconde built housing estates all over the place. For these people, when you talk to these people now, they say the resources. This, as of today, the Lagos State is getting more allocation, more money than what Jaconde had those days. And Jaconde was able to accomplish all these things. What was the reason? That's, that's what don't I think. Mind, I think. Don't so, mind. We, we, you want them to say, no, no, the reason. Which reason? <laughs> I've been waiting in the talk. When we talk, you will see some of their people, their supporters, will come after us. They will defend them. Oh, uh, the, sources, uh, the population has increased. There are too much pressure and Lagos. Uh, they are this, they are that. They be, they be lying and telling lies to defend them. It is corruption. Corruption, my brother, is corruption. Corruption at the highest absolute corruption uh corrupt how, how do they say it absolute corruption corrupt absolutely or something like that that <laughs> is that is power the, absolute power absolute corrupt, power absolutely yes. absolute power corrupt absolutely imagine people in the position of governorship have what do you call it um um, hey, what do they call this thing that you cannot try them? You can't sue them to court. What 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 is um this is it immunity. immunity? Immunity. Immunity. Where have you seen that? That they will have immunity for eight years, they can loot the whole of the state dry. And they but but you know why we know why they gave, they give them that it's just to avoid distraction in governance. No, it because is, it is it is part of the corruption. It is no the, me, I think is, because the way TB people are behaving, somebody can just go, you know, the way people are abusing the judicial process now in Nigeria. 
people can take governor to to court for all those frivolities and, and it's to cause distraction to governor. America, if your governor is going to I do not agree with you. I do not agree with you. I do not agree with you. Before you take somebody to court, the judge themselves should be able to see what you are presenting before them to know to 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 to, to to, to, they should be able to see the veracity of what you are bringing before them before they can go ahead. You can't. Yeah, but you know, if you are in a kind of our uh, own society where corruption prevails, you cannot, you, you know, there are so many things. We cannot actually look at what is happening in America and the then uh, let uh, let it on, let on our during, own. During, like the, that, yeah. during the Second Republic, there was no immunity for the governors. Although Jakarta and the rest, there was no immunity for them. Yeah, and but people are more mature. People no, are more mature. mature. It is a packaging of corruption so that they can, everything can favor them. Only them and their family alone. It is, it is part of the car packaging in that constitution, that fraudulent constitution. It is that fraudulent constitution itself that give the state that control over the local government. It's a way to bribe them so that, you know, they can submit totally to that system that empower them with that to, 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 uh, to 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 loot and be so corrupt. Eh, but Baba Jeroko, this same constitution that we are talking about was drafted by the military. That is what I'm. That is what I'm saying. Look, you see that constitution was nineteen ninety nine constitution. The, yes, that constitution was drafted by the military. It was, it it, it was actually Abacha that drafted that constitution in anticipation that. Well, when it is transformation to, to uh, is transformation to civilian government. Uh -huh. When it transition to civilian government, all others that are going to work with him are the governors and we enjoy we enjoy they such will, things. Uh, they will enjoy corruption too, and they will be loyal to him. So when Obasanjo came in, I see you guys blame me on Obasanjo. When Obasanjo came in, you know the system that the military were operating then where the local government have autonomy from the state. That was the system that Obasanjo people started. They were giving the money direct to the local government. But that's not what Simba just told us. Simba, eh? Eh? that's contrary to what you told us. And I'm, I'm the listing. Listing. Simba said the local government. He was there. Obasanjo just wanted to hand the local government in his place. Can you, can you listen now? You don't want to when you listen, let me learn, then you can then you can kick against me if you want to. What I'm telling you is that when Obasanjo regime started, they were giving money directly to local government. Local government was autonomous from the state control. It was later that the state governors discovered that the new Constitution gave them power to control the local government. And then they went to Atiku that you people cannot send money to local government except, except through us. So they went to Atiku, they didn't go to Obasanjo. <laughs> Atiku was the one, hold on, Atiku was the one in charge of the, um, you know, Obasanjo, when he started, he gave so much power to Atiku when he started. You mm, eh, eh, know why he gave so much he, power? He because so much of his power. own ambition. It's because yeah. of his own ambition. Let us say the way it was. It was because of his own ambition. You remember that this same Obasanjo prostrated for Atiku because of second time. Hold on. Because that, of his that, own agenda, that was why he gave him a lot of power, and that was what made them to fail out at the at the end of the day. No, no. The, so the, we the, cannot say it's the fault of Atiku. Obasanjo was the president, 
And so you should you should take the blame. Don't exonerate him from this. No, 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 no. Not, I'm not exonerating. Hold on, hold on. I'm not exonerating our passenger. What I'm saying is that look, Atiku's office handles the local government affairs and everything. So then the governors, I mean, I mean, um, Atiku normally have this meeting uh, with the governors and the, the local government affairs. So the governors now went to Atiku and said, ha, oh, you can't, you can't keep sending money to these people now. This money must come to us. They fought over it, they disagreed, they said no, they brought out some portion, uh, provision of the constitution that clearly stated that. And then that was how the governors... No, the constitution, they actually did it through the National Assembly, Babajayekoko. That was when they now created this joint, they call it JAC, Joint Accounts, uh, the state and local government joint accounts. So okay, even up to now... I think, uh, I think, I think, yeah, yeah, I think we are right. I think we are right. Uh -huh. so, so even up to now, we know how much each of the local government is getting. The only problem is that the money doesn't get to them because it they will get put to it them. in they the same right. account. Yes. So we, we right. know how much they allocate to each local government up to now, but it doesn't get to them. That's the problem because them. it's yes. the states that will now disburse whatever it likes to, to whoever they want to do. Yeah. So the, 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 that is how the, um, what do you call it? The state governors were able to corner the federal government and they have the local government under their control. And that is why the democracy never works. Democracy do, cannot deliver good governance in Nigeria if local government does not function. And local government today in Nigeria does not function. So we will continue to parabolate there won't be good government. But we should look at you should look at it. The only way now is there a way we can get the local the legislatures, the local government, and um, the state legislatures to actually assent to this bill. No, no, no. Let me tell you, if the president mm. develop a very I mean political will to do it mm. and push for it. It will be done. How? Because what it was, it was not another Buhari now. Buhari pushed the something. It got to state, and uh, some state assented to it. The majority did not. So how would how can president influence the legislatures in the states? The, 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 if the if the if the president can have the control of his own party now, the president party control majority of the state, right? They have they control more state than uh, than um, they control more state than the other parties. So, if majority of the state, if it can rally around all this party to um, back him in that effort for local government to how many states is the PC controlling now? I it's think not, that it's just about just let's say just above half. Yeah, I think they are controlling twenty something states. And I because I don't, we don't even know how many states need to assent to it before it, it can be, be actually now. signed. It has to be two third. So they have. To, they don't have two third now. You think so? You think they don't have to turn? I, I don't think they, 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 they don't. They don't. Simba, 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 I feel. I feel what we sh what the president should do is this: or uh, force the national assembly to remove this this immunity. If immunity is removed, you understand the the president can now EFCC can go after all these governors who has refused <laughs> to give their money to the exactly. Those thieves, they refuse to remove the national assembly. They will, the state governors go carry money, go spoil their head. They're you have forgotten that majority of them are former governors, also. A former governor. <laughs> Look, Nigeria, they don't corner also. Those politicians don't corner also. <laughs> ah, those people don't corner also. Hey, maybe no, not laugh. No, Look, no, but the, if the president, if the president is not corrupt, if the president really want to work, president can use his political capital to push for so many things that will be that will make you that, I mean if the I, president I think, can I, think honestly, I, I agree with you. Ever. I agree with you, Adele. If there's political will, 
-hmm. If he is interested, he can call all of them for meeting. And let's yes. say, and ask them that this is one of the things that we have to achieve. Let us give this autonomy. And I'm very sure the government can go back and ask their legislators to assent to it, if they, are, if they also wish. You see those governors, they are, they are not as powerful as you are. Look, we just need to, if the president, you know the president's statement, carry a lot of weight. So when presidents speak, Nigerian listen, and Nigerian can raise a loud noise after it, if Nigerian knows that, oh, this thing is good for us. Nigerians all over the internet will make noise. Nigeria, where, where, Which make Nigerian? Noise. The obedient Nigerians or the, the Batifara? Mm -hmm. Nigerians are they're never on the same page, man. Forget that thing. It will no matter. See, Nigeria. No, no, we are talking. Look, I just, if, if, if the president is pushing for um, local government uh, autonomy, a lot of Nigeria will jump into it and make a loud noise about it. If, uh, if the president, if you're telling me if uh, Tinubu start pushing for that, the if, obedience is like, oh, yeah, we support Tinubu. They will still go against you, man. They will still go against him. So the thing in Nigeria will never be on the same page. And I keep telling you guys, no, the best way, the listen, okay, Mike, 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 what, is the so, what is the solution? That's what I'm trying to tell you. The, the solution, we need, we need to, we need to put our back in the hands a lot of political oh, actors in the East, we jump into it. Forget about the obedient. Who are those? Those ones are just... Uh, political nursing. actors. Yeah. Whose voice is louder? The political actor or the or the people? The, but anyway, people let me tell you. Once they are not, they can't win any local government. They can't win any governorship. They just make noise and carry tribal decision into presidential. Those ones are the ones that you say... They yeah, undermine the obedience. Uh, obedience like give uh, will be six million votes. Uh, anyway... Uh, to me, honestly, I know Simba will call it uh, uncivilized, primitive. This is your so-called civilized system today. Well, it's not working. Go back, give power back to the hands of the traditional rulers and the local chiefs. Give power back, put back, back in their hands, and their society will de advance, will develop. That's my own, to me, the best way to go, to be honest. Give back, back to the traditional institution. Give Governance. Put and them involved them in governance. If you give power back to the traditional rulers, what will be their function in the in in the in the in the like for example a state governor? They'll, how how will how will a traditional um traditional like upper of Lagos operate where governor of Lagos is? How will uh, all these ballots uh, operate where all these um councillors is? So you have to be specific. No, no, the governor will be the governor, right? The governor. Uh, like so every state is different, you understand. Like some states, they have one king that's the king of the entire state. Like I, I mean, in fact, I don't think there's any state that has one king. They are usually traditional ruler in different states. The governor will be the governor, the head of the state, right? In terms of a political head. Now the locality, the traditional governors. You know, every society is different. Every court, like in the east, where you guys do your own. Traditional way is different. But you always have traditional leadership uh, way of uh, leading in the past. We all had a structure. Because every inch of Nigeria has it. So the way it was, the air, the leadership, how it was back then, the governor just had to administer it and put them in charge of their own development, what they want, the vision, and, you know, just work with them. So to me, that's the way to go, to be honest. Because now this idea of politicians coming in and going, everybody just want to ride on this Nigerian thing and just steal money and go and take care of themselves, go to England, go and enjoy that. Everybody that going to governors in Nigeria today, in these political, uh, they are all just going to steal and run away. So the governor will share power with the traditional rulers. They will share power. The same way the president share power with the Senate and the House. So there will be check and balances. Check and balances. Look, look uh, Mike. I think that one is impossible now. And why I say it is impossible? Do you know how many traditional leaders we have now? Do you know mm -hmm. there are thousands? Look. But if you're going to have local the, government chairman, wouldn't it be there are thousands too? Let, 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 no, hold on now. Local government chairman, they, they, they are, I mean, their own role is well specified. 
and yeah, the constitution is clear under the constitution. No, the, the constitution what you're saying not, is hold on now, okay, hold on, yeah. let us this thing. The constitution does not give any role for the traditional rulers to play. There's That's no what I'm saying. We need to change the constitution. That's my argument. Hold, now. Hold, hold, hold on, hold on. What I'm saying now is that. No, to my own argument, passion. I understand your passion, and I, at the same time, I want some constitutional role for them as well. But you know what these politicians have done in terms of, you know, destabilization and destruction of the um, traditional institution. Do you know what these politicians have done to destroy our traditional institution, to render them useless? It's unfortunate. It, it's unfortunate, man. It's, and the British, it's, it's the, the British, the British they, deliberately they, did that. No, 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 no. Even under the British, the British recognize the role of the uh, they recognize uh, and about they, when they, they were transiting they started putting people like remember when body this body told me that we're sourcing a laughing for you they started putting those guys in charge and then when they were doing independent they called Zikwe all of all these politicians to hand the country over to them when they, they have when the country has yeah. traditional rulers you know so i mean why would you come to a country where they had kings you work with the kings traditional line anyway, where you were living you handed the country over to some politicians it does just didn't make sense you didn't hand it back to the people that you you met. You hand it to, to people. What, what what do you think that was about? They hand it over to people that know that would do their their bidding for them. Why they, why they are gone? So this, this, we only to politi this politician have destroyed the traditional institution. The, yeah. Do you know Do you know how many Do you know how many thugs they have as over today? Just for political. Do you know how many? Don't let me even say that. Let me just say. Do you know how many political kings that we have in place today all over that Yoruba land? Just because to expand their political empire. Political king. People. Uh, Angelico, you are even going too far. You know that a state governor can remove a king. Can you imagine? Just one like minute. One was, minute. Um, the, one the, minute. The governors are so powerful, they can remove a king. In a second, in a second, and nothing will happen. So you have them putting their political talks in position of over in so many places. Many that should not be called over that are that we used to know as Bale. Bale. They have promoted them to Oba just because they are, you know, in effort to expand their political empire. That is where they, they look, there are so many things that we used to do freely easily with the palaces back in the day it's not free today it's not free to even see Oba when we were growing up that we enter palace and we will see Oba it's not the way it used to be today where are you coming from is it easy Except in some, but some look, these politicians have they have they, they corrupt have, everything. They oh, don't corrupt, they corrupt. The, that is the, the right the girls to all those the tons, the boys, the yow, yow. they corrupt I, I, the society. I feel, I feel, and this was the British, this, this was the British envision. That was their plan just to destroy our society. Morally, no, no, Mike, 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 no, we Mike, can't blame I will, British. I will, I will, we, you can't blame them. You but can't blame the totality. But they decided to create our system. Now. Put, oh, uh, I mean, we are owners of the land. Parliamentary system of government. Parliamentary system of government respects the traditional rulers. 
But this one we are practicing now, this democracy we are practicing from, the one we got from the U.S. U.S. don't have anything like monarch, monarch, monarch system of anything. They don't have any monarch in their place. So everybody, it's a free-for-all game, you know. But if in parliamentary system of government, the, the others we are carried along, the, the traditional laws we are carried along. But now I don't think, because of the system we are practicing, the, 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 the traditional rulers are irrelevant now. That's, that's how I see it. Communities have turned to, bandits have taken over communities because, I mean, traditional rulers, they have um, control of who comes into their environment and what and what. How will the president know the movement? I mean, you know, the, you put the uh, uh, security of society in the hands of police. When, you know, the traditional ruler have no say. Like, someone can just walk into a town. People can just populate a town. Traditional ruler doesn't know who's coming to his town, who's going out, because he has no political role. He has nothing. So now you have bandits all over the place. The king don't even know. They have to now call the government. Like, come on, bandits are here. Or they, we don't know what's going on. Mike, you Mike, know, so Mike. You, it, it's terrible. Mike, even uh, to support what you're saying, Mike, even right now we are ravaged with all manner of uh, insecurity in in in, uh, in 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 nigeria still these people have not deemed it fit to say okay let's have a, 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 um, a state police let's have this let's have even if it's the traditional rulers are going to come up with those um traditional whatever let's have people to protect the society they've not come that's up what i'm them. saying because so think, about them, they, think, think about it think about it if you traditional if rulers they know they say the politicians will use it the governors will use it to fight it it is Man, these people are just so see. Horrible. See, yeah, back in the day, traditional rulers know every inch of their domain, and they have their community people report their literally everything that happened within community is reported to the traditional rulers. Like, okay, all about this was going on in our town. We have strangers coming in, you know, we have this happening here, this family, this thing's going on. So they always get that information of what's going on in their uh locality, their king in their kingdom. You understand? But today. They are no longer relevant. They can't even say anything. They don't, it's like they are no longer governing the environment. What we have is we just have a guy just doesn't, he may not even grow up there. Maybe he spent most of his time in Europe, America, or maybe grew up in another state. Doesn't really know his the entire, doesn't get information of what's going on. He's a governor. And then you have president. And then you have a country. So Because they've taken now, over the, the role of the Oba. Yeah, they've taken over the role of the Oba. So now in that Oba's uh, domain now, if something criminals start migrating there, or some foreigners, people, some bandits can start coming in, he can't say anything or do anything. He can't even challenge those bandits. If those bandits start coming in with a suspicious activity before they become bandits, maybe they, they're beginning to uh, develop their activity slowly, slowly. The king cannot do anything. He cannot even engage them. He cannot even approach them and say, excuse me, who are you? He can't question them. Because what we tell the king is, who are you? Like you now, let's say you come from, you move from one state, now you're going to another place in Nigeria to go and set up banditry business. And the kings, they realize that, okay, this stranger here, what, what, he's having suspicious activity. If we approach you, say, young man, you are going to look at him like, who are you? Are you the governor? Are you the, who are you? What's all the king is nobody to you, you understand? Yeah, in Nigeria, you have the right to be anywhere you like, right? So... You, you can't quite the king cannot question you because he doesn't have any political power any kind of you know uh, power to say anything to you so the bandits will just be setting up their camp there doing whatever they like you know and the police so-called uh it's just a terrible thing man so that, that's why everything has been taking over the, the and then when the bandit become a problem the president was asking saying okay i'll send a hammy there what the hell is that we going to come on man it's just stupid man it's bad, it's bad. I mean, our cultural values are dying because the people that used to keep the everything, you know, the traditional institution where they promote the cultural value, they are they no longer have power. Even you know, yeah, the youth not can tell you who the hell are you? Like you don't want to talk to anybody anymore. So I don't know where we are going, Sha. I just feel sorry. The next 50 years, hey. <laughs> with this generation has grown up now they don't even know anything again they, they, they don't know their cultural, cultural value anymore everybody's becoming Americanized and Western individual, individual individualistic mindset hey and that's what I see in America here you know
thank God. Lucky they lock the lucky thing of America is they have a sophisticated police system, they have high technology. It comes to this society, the way people are individually thinking. Hmm. Go to all these poor communities, gangsterism, criminality, drug. <laughs> now I hear drug is coming to Nigeria now, so I don't know how far we are going now. Um, hmm. I don't know. We are, we are in deep shit in our country. We are in deep shit. If, if drug addiction begins to flood all over the place, now is it police that will stop it? Let's say communities now start flooding the place. All these kind of, I don't know what kind of drug they have in Europe. I don't, I don't know if you live in, in America here. Yeah, the kind of drugs that the drug addiction is growing among youth. Luckily, it's a very rich country. They're able to do rehabilitation, do all kinds of things. Our police. Now, if, now if people start to flood Nigerian communities with drugs now, who will challenge them? Is it governor that will be going to communities to be challenging it? But we have traditional institutions. Traditional people know whatever is happening within their environment. They know they can quickly, you know, tackle it. You know? So, I don't know where we are going, man. Do, do we don't, like, they created Nigeria, and uh, we don't know. We just said, oh, Nigeria, 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 Nigeria. But nothing has been working, man. Forget it. It's not working. You know, people are saying, but we are saying, but we need to take a step back. We don't know what this thing, the British came to create for us. We don't even know where we are going. As a people, we don't even know what identity is anymore. Now, the children born now, they all, you know, at least when we were growing up, we know ourselves as okay. I'm a the Casey you Yoruba man, you are a job man, you know the job culture, you know your what what and what your norms and tradition, whatever, and what to do, what not to do, how to be. But these children growing up as Nigerians today, they don't what, what is Nigerian norms? There's no norm now. What is Nigerian tradition? What is Nigerian uh, moral behavior? It doesn't exist. They are just a Nigerian. What our Nigerians want to be is, and they want to emulate the Americans and the Europeans. And you know, next 200 years, the I mean, the next but two generations now, the children are be born by these ones. Those ones won't even know anything about traditional norms and tradition. Now, if you look at Nigeria, the growing uh, single mother motherhood ah, it's out of control. Like every time I go to Nigeria, I'm like, well, was, this is not the way it was when I was growing up. <laughs> when I interact with you these days, I, I, I'm like, oh, well, what's it, what's it not happen to this Nigerian YouTube? Hmm. Yeah, Thomas, yeah, Thomas on Jack, you try to come up here.
I'm going to be president of this country, whether you like it or not, and I will preside over the affairs of this country, including presiding over you. I think you must start adjusting to that reality. The sooner you do that, the less chest pains you'll have when that reality comes. Country people, make una call yet for you. Say Dino, carry money, give talk. Say make you go buy gun to Piawa. They say Dino, carry money, give talk, carry gun, give talk. Say me they go to prepare for 2019. Allah they send me, meet them for airport road, and like here, yeah, eh? My brothers, the venom of a viper cannot do anything to the back of a tortoise. I'm a man of I don't work out. But make I tell you now, Yaya Bello, do you know? Yaya Bello, ma se won le yi joba, I know. Yaya Bello, ma se won le yi joba, do you know? GYB mache won le ni joba, we know. GYB mache won le ni joba, you won ya ya. You you ya ya. Kilo tu ku ti o son. Kilo tu ku ti o son. E mi ti mo pe lori, to se nu u ye. Kilo tu ku ti o son. A te e kou ya ni o te. Ya ya pelo. A te e kou ya ni o te. Mm hmm. Oh, 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 oh